Live, PKA, episode 322 with our guest Hutch. Kyle? Yeah, several ads tonight. Uh, texture, Squarespace, Movement Watches, Blue Apron, Wink again, W-I-N-C. And uh, we're going to talk more about Creature Quest uh, later on in the show. There are links to all those down in the description below, of course, if you want to check now. But yeah, let's get into it. Got uh, Hutch on again for the show. Lots of cool stuff in the news. <sighs> so Trump much. having Trump up there having a uh, a real unhinged sort of uh, media encounter. Taylor and I have, been, have gotten re obsessed with Magic the Gathering in his part, and me sort of wow. been affected by him. Yeah, I've got so many cards upstairs. Been playing a bunch. Oh, I it, um, with Magic, it always happens where I only get into it like every two years because. You, you, it's like a Skyrim character building a deck where you spend so much time building a deck until it's so powerful, it's unbeatable, and everybody's like, I don't want to play against you. This isn't fun. You're like, well, fuck, I'm not doing that anymore. But yeah. it spreads like a virus to all your friends every time you, at least my friends, every time I introduce it to them because it's so addictive. Hutch, I know I, you're yeah. into it. I know you've played anymore. online Magic. Have you played the card version as well? Fuck yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we. Uh, it was a big deal at the Machinima offices. We would multiple times a week stay after at the office until eight or nine. And I got so obsessed with trying to build the most annoying deck that I spent like, I think 500 to a thousand dollars, just yeah. like bu buying super <laughs> rare land cards that you can tap to turn into like five, five flying creatures. And yep. like, it, I, yeah, yeah I, I pissed off a lot of coworkers, man. It's a, it's a, it's a really fun, <laughs> super addicting game. Really fun. Yeah, we uh, me and thanks for uh, thanks for having me on again. By the way, I didn't. Oh yeah, that. we love having oh, you on always. Uh, me and Taylor and, uh, and and Chiz and a couple other people went to uh, Colorado recently on a little trip, and Taylor brought his magic cards, and and he really infected us all, and uh, and and so now we're all here. I bought, uh, I went on eBay and bought. Um, I think six thousand cards or something like that. So I've been go <laughs> I've been like going through those all day, like like sorting yeah. them and building uh, playing... building a building a deck is really great, man. And you know who's good at it is Sark. He was a fucking genius when it came to building decks. Anyways, yeah. I cut off your story. All right, we've been playing the Xbox game now. I think the Xbox game is free. It's <laughs> called Magic Duels, and uh, Magic Duels has a really really uh, nice like tool tip thing to like build your decks it lets you like categorize by color and keyword yeah. and, and everything but yeah. but yeah we've been playing a bunch um, the xbox like, version like, has always been awesome for teaching new people because oh, yeah. it basically makes it so you can't play at an incorrect time yeah you know it's annoying that you don't have the same level of editing that you can and you know your own cards but i still remember years ago this was probably like 2010 where it was me and you, Hutch, and then Dunkus and someone else playing four-player. Onslaught. And it was like Onslaught. And it was one of the last games of the Onslaught. night. And I hadn't won a, one of the four-player games. And I had done some combo where I was getting like 10 more 1-1 one, one creatures every single turn. And we were having connection problems. You'd always be like, oh, man, is the attacking struggling? Like, I, Are you yeah. struggling to attack? And I'm like, yeah, dude, I can't select people and attack. And then really at, one point, <laughs> at one point, you're like, oh, oh man, that, that's it. I'm gone. Get, guess that's like, a draw, boys. Guess that's <laughs> a draw. I was so upset when I realized that Hutch had just quit the game. And I, did, I didn't win the argument, yeah. of course, because Onslaught and Dunkus were laughing at me as well. But, uh, that, oh, was, that, was, that, was that was so and annoying. That was the worst. And it happens a lot. I play a lot of Monopoly now, too, on console because it's a lot of fun. And that happens constantly with Monopoly. It's the Wait. worst. You'll spend literally two hours, two or three hours <laughs> playing the same game and then... There's no solution because it just freezes. It, yeah, it definitely. We, me and Kyle were playing Two-Headed Giant on Xbox just the other day, and it was a long game where, you know, we were chiseling down the other two guys, and we were finally about to get that, like, aha, we win, finally, fuck you, we're better. And with one life left, or two, they just quit. And then AI comes in, and of course the yeah. AI doesn't work. And so we're like, all right, I guess we concede the duel now. Fuck us, right? Like, uh oh. And I care. Oh, well, they, uh, it's almost as bad as when they milled you uh, to death that, that that other game. So. Oh yeah, yeah I didn't realize that just milling one person to death in Two Headed Giant was enough to win. I oh, thought yeah. you had to mill both people to death, and so I was just you know easy street with like two cards left. I'm like, dude, they're down to two. Kyle, you just take it after this. You got it. Like, and then, <clears throat> and then no. So well, that was so. A, wait, Magic yeah. Duels is on Xbox now. Are you talking about Xbox One? Yeah. Xbox One. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know they had it on Xbox now. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was it's the exact same thing. Previous ones, it's just free. Yeah, it's it's free unless you want cards. Uh, I, I'm sure it's it's one of those Candy Crush type games where there's some guy out there. He's like, oh, I own all the cards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Five hundred dollars, you know, no big deal. 
Oh. You guys, did you guys get into Hearthstone? I'm guessing you guys got into Hearthstone. No, no? I, I had multiple people tweet at me and be like, dude, you've mentioned magic before. You've got to get into Hearthstone. And I'm like, now I will absolutely never download Hearthstone because if it's anything like magic, I'll get addicted and be some and idiot. And those and cards like, will get mixed when, in with my magic cards. It's $20 of rubies that I need to buy in order to really improve my Hearthstone. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it's an investment, you know? <laughs> I think it's way more addicting than than um, Magic Online. In in person, there's no, I mean, it doesn't have an in-person game, so obviously Magic wins in that department, but as far as online play goes, I'm, I'm, I would say the Hearthstone is is more addicting because it's easier to get into. It's it's really easy to learn the game. You can learn it in, I think, five minutes. And then um, the competitive aspect, aspect to it with the ranking system makes it that much more addicting, especially if you have that com- competitive spirit, which I know all you guys have too. Is it um, as deep game as Magic? Or? Super deep. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's as deep because Magic has literally like thousands, yeah, so thousands of cards, but uh, it's it's really deep. Yeah. The meta, you, you, like when you watch the pros play, you can tell that they're thinking in terms of um, they're calculating all these different variables at the same time, yeah. and it's just way over my head. There, uh, uh, we had but before uh, yesterday, last night, I guess, we were uh, we were all discussing like what we're gonna do tonight, and uh, we we're like, oh, magic will be a good tar- uh, topic, and Woody was like, oh, all right, uh, maybe maybe sometime we could play a magic game on the show, and it's like, oh man, it's so much math, yeah, and, like, and and there's so many like there's so many like in poker, there's like really established sets. It's like bet, check, bet, check, raise. And yeah. it just happens. But in Magic, there's like instant cards that can like jump in at any time. And so yeah. I can just see with like a, a delay in the feeds, it, Boogie, whoever we're playing with Boogie or whatever, is like, no, 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 I wanted to play this. That's horse shit. Take it back. But go back. And then right in the middle of the yeah. conversation. It's and there's so many exceptions game. to the rule. Like with Magic, it's almost like everything is so broken oh, yeah. that nothing is broken. Exactly. So if you're explaining yeah, yeah. to a bunch of people yeah. like, all right, so you know how we establish the attack phase happens now, and then we, we're going to wrap that up, go to the next main phase, and then turns over? Well, actually, I'm going to play this card, which means that everything's different, and we have two attack phases, and then it goes yeah. back to the beginning of my upkeep. And it's like, like I wanted to, when Woody was bringing that up, I wanted to be like, if you give me an excuse, if you give me a pass to play Magic on the show, <laughs> I'm taking it. I'm taking that pass. But honestly, like, I just, I know that if I didn't know anything about Magic, if I tried to watch two people, especially not professionals, like Oh, me yeah, and, I'd be lost. Like, They'd be like, what the fuck's going on? I can't read these cards. They're, those are all red, and then he has some blue. Like, what? What's happening? Yeah. But also, what the fuck is an Eldrazi? With, yeah. with poker... <laughs> oh, that, that literally happened. Yeah, I, I feel like... Play. Well, while I couldn't play my best poker half paying attention, I can play poker half paying attention. Apparently, Magic's not like that, and you have to really sort of not enjoy the conversation and give it your full attention. Yeah, it would, that's, yeah it's, it's like, almost like scoring playing, a fight. It's, it's it, like you can't be eating Cheetos and, like, fucking around. You've got to be paying attention to right. every move that they make because... You know, if you if you if you look away for a second, then the numbers on the board might not mean what they meant a second ago. Now maybe every number on the board is plus one plus one, and you didn't catch that. And you, if you, the only way you're gonna is if you reach across the table and like, yeah. oh yeah, so now everything. Oh, it's oh oh or, oh or, no. if so, or if someone wants to cast a sorcery that would defeat some other opponent, but it but you know that it would put you in a really shitty spot, then. If you're not paying attention, then you wouldn't know to counter that or... You know the old uh, cliche where you play strip poker with these hot girls and they don't know the rules, so you just keep inventing them as they go along? That's really how strip, it feels to listen to you guys strip, talk about strip magic. Strip magic would be compelling. Yeah, yeah, that's, you know, that's strip rape that you're playing. Those are, those are lies that you're doing. I've you're never really played girls. strip poker with anybody, <laughs> did legit or not. But but that's the thing. Like, oh, no, no. In this situation, a pair of nines beats tens because mine are red and, and yours are black which somehow seems would be racist like if, if poker was more like magic it would be like oh i'm gonna play this two of hearts to destroy your king of diamonds and take control of your jack of spades be like what what's happened did you, did you yeah. win this hand now like, no you couldn't do that but uh, yeah you never need to ask them like what does the jack of hearts do well the same thing that they all all the other ones do <laughs> just yeah. a jack you know? but <laughs> they, no they, I, I i think this is what what this has done now that we've all got this weird little passion and common or addiction whatever it is i want to go to some like 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 chiz keeps talking about the friday night magic um you know at, at the local stores and stuff at comic book stores i i really don't want to do that i don't think i want to play against random people i would like to go to you're looking at me like that's the best the, the, the most fun you part might be, you might you might be fun man or, or you yeah, might have fun with it uh, i like the idea of us all of us going like together to like a magic tournament somewhere and like like going to some big open tournament and what i'm hearing that. is they, fight they me at pax group. magic style <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, I, was just, I was just about to i was just about to say i know that pax has a a room that they designate for um 
what do you call it? Uh, tabletop games. And a lot yeah, of the times, people people will be downstairs at PAX playing uh, Magic with each other and doing tournaments the whole time. So that's yeah, that'd be really fun. I, I and and uh, Kitty, because Kitty was talking about like playing uh, tournaments back in the day, and like I guess when she would win, you'd win all these booster boxes. And of course, like right now, booster yeah. boxes sound better to me than money. So it's like, oh, really? How many cards did they give you? <laughs> Dude, the booster yeah. box thing. Like, if you don't know what a booster box is, it's thirty-six booster packs with random cards where you're guaranteed at least one rare. Like most trading card games, we all know what booster it boxes is the are. Exact. <laughs> talking to people who do this thing where they're like, I just get booster boxes from tournaments and then I sell all the cards I don't want online and I end up turning a profit every time works guaranteed those are the exact same people who are always up when gambling yeah it's like no yeah. you're not you either uh, don't have a or job stocks and you're taking huge amounts of time to list individual cards from every fucking thing and shipping them all out like you're a FedEx office or you're just fibbing and you just wanted to buy extra cards like that uh, nobody makes money doing that unless you buy like I don't know 100 boxes and you have a couple people working for you the easiest way, the easiest way to to figure out if someone's a, a phony when it comes to gambling is just to ask them like, how what what's your hourly rate? Like, how much do you make per hour? Because the good gamblers will do those calculations and tell you this is I make twenty, thirty, forty dollars an hour, whatever. Uh, but the people that always say that they're they're mostly up or they're a profitable player, they don't keep records. So how the fuck would they know? Hmm. If you're That's not actually, keeping if you're not keeping records, you chances are you're not a dedicated player and you don't really know what you're doing. If you're, if you're selling Magic <laughs> the Gathering cards for a living, maybe you're the most, mo, not the most organized individual to begin with, right? Like, <laughs> if you've not. taken up this mantle as your... You uh, have to be selling a lot of cards to turn a profit, have, I feel like. Yeah. You have to be running a store. Because I look online as I sift through my like thousands of cards, I'll be like, ah, oh, this... Let's Google this and see what this is. Two cents. Two cents. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I'm never going to turn a profit buying these one at a time. Like, that's never going to happen. Have you and it's seen not the, like nobody's um, trying to. Oh. No, have you, have, you, have, you seen, have you seen the video where, where the guy was on, uh, unboxing a random booster pack and he found the most rare card in Magic? It was yeah, like the Black yeah. Black Lotus or something like yeah, that. Yeah. What's it called? Yeah, Black I've Lotus. seen the video. And it's, it's worth like 20 grand or some stupid shit. Like, some of oh, those yeah. cards are worth a lot of money. If you've but, got. Yeah. The Power Nine, which is like Black Lotus, and then all four of the Moxes, or five of the Mox uh, gems, or whatever the fuck. Like, all nine of those cards together are like 30 grand, like something bananas. And if you go to those like Gen Con or PAX, there's always at least a few people out with like binders from 1994, and they just invite people to look through <laughs> it. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, you see that page? That's forty thousand dollars in that page, and it's yeah. not like bullshit where it's like they just you can slide the cards out. It's like you they take these binders out of the back of a fucking Brinks truck out front, <laughs> and then they wheel them in in a safe, and then do it and bring it out. This like reminds me of those rappers who show up with a club with like two hundred grand worth of necklaces, and some guy <laughs> finally goes yank and just runs. Like, like isn't that what's coming? Like, like if you're bringing out forty thousand dollars worth of paper at a ma at, at like a at a random thing, like isn't somebody like tempted to just take your cards? Most people at those events aren't very quick, so they're not gonna. Ah, ah. <laughs> you'd be like, somebody stole my magic cards. <clears throat> oh, aren't you worried? Well, he's he's still running. That's him. That's him. <laughs> he's, he's, he hasn't made it to the door yet. <laughs> we'll smell him if he hides. Oh, right, it's like a trail. Like he's a snail running away. Right, both in yeah, speed in terms slime. of the ability to to it's waggling out the door. Him. Yes, no, I, that's I, 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 I used to. Shit. I used to go to this uh, casino in Sonoma County, and there were they they had a high roller game in poker, and so you you'd routinely see people walking in with little duffel bags with just bricks of cash. Like so, they would walk in there sometimes with seventy-five thousand dollars in cash. And so there, there was this old guy too that won a jackpot for like twenty grand at one of the, um, the slot machines. He got it, goes out to his car, and someone beat the fuck out of him. He ended up in intensive care unit, um, in the oh. parking lot of of the, the casino, which is stupid as fuck because there's cameras everywhere. They got caught in like two days or something. But I wonder, do you know if they yeah, got the money are, back? I don't know who's liable in that. Is is, is, the the casino, is, the, is the casino liable? I, I would hope that? the the mugger still had it. Like that'd be nice. Oftentimes, least... when people steal that much money, though, they're gonna burn through like twenty five percent of it that night or something. Okay, it's a hell of a drop. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wouldn't expect wise investment decisions from too many muggers. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, oh, we, we follow the paper trail. He invested the in index funds. <laughs> Uh, do, are, are we but still yeah. on magic talk? I'm confused. I'm <laughs> always on magic talk. <laughs> yes, I think someone's going to have to pull the e from magic to hockey, back to magic to hockey. No hockey. Just people nope. love it. Nope. 
fucking hockey. The Blues are slipping anyway. Let's talk about They're Trump. on a five-game win streak. Ah, that's pathetic. It, uh, it's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> you, you assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kyle. Go ahead with, with your non-hockey I thought talk about Trump, and maybe you guys could educate me, because I took a little nap. I woke up about 45 minutes ago or so, so I'd be nice and energized. And so I think I missed the doings of the day, the happenings of the day with Trump, apparently. Just uh, to talk- Phil Hutchin, I have been fighting these guys 1v2 for a year now, and I'm glad you're here. There's no, but there's no way. I, I'm so curious. Like, okay, Merka, you're not an enthusiastic Trump supporter, from what I surmise, but you still found him to be a better alternative than Hillary. And then yeah. Kyle, I don't get the impression that you're all that enthusiastic. You went either, to a right? rally. I wanted to see what the deal was. I almost went to a rally. I didn't go to the was... rally dressed up, like, screaming, like, build the wall. <laughs> like, that, yeah. like, I wasn't dressed as Uncle Sam with a hood yeah. on or anything. I, I, I almost went to a rally. There was one really close to me. I almost went like, to a rally, too. You want to see I wanted to see about. it, too, for the same reason. Yeah. I, it, was, it, it seems like it would be a spectacle. I never considered it. I'm not ever going to a political <laughs> rally. Fuck that. It's Sounds free. Like it's free it's and free. quite the show. It's like I've the never, only one you want to go this. to are the ones that are pain to get into. Like That's my I've issue went, with it. I, I've paid my way into like many things, <laughs> sort of like comedy shows or improv or whatever. Actually, but yeah, improv, it costs money, too, yeah. I've never went to something that was free and yet this entertaining. This was better than a lot of movies that I've seen. I, I'm happy I went to that that rally. But yeah, I, I'm kind of in the same boat as Taylor. Um, I, I it's it's been really entertaining to watch the Trump show, and I did find him to be the better option. I still do than, than Clinton. Um, I think you, you uh, still do. There's, well, there's no way to know, right? Like maybe maybe if Hillary got <laughs> of our sort of war, we'd have actually bombed some Russian commandos or something, and or who knows? There's no way to know. I mean, I, I, I find that argument pretty weak to say that... She had hashed vote, out positions of, that you could of, see of, on her of, website. You know, Trump vote, didn't. I'm, yeah, sorry. I'm just... I find, I find it kind of odd to say that a vote for Trump is a vote for peace, which is literally a line that was spoon-fed to the media from an official in the Kremlin. But um, I find that a bit disingenuous when in the first month of the term, we have major conflicts with Iran, China... Mexico, Australia. I mean, not major, obviously, with Me- Mexico and Australia, but he's he's alienating our allies that are on this side of the world, and then he's also provoking some pretty big powers over there too. So, uh, and and his diplomatic relations right now are just like not great at all. So, if the whole argument was that she was going to start World War Three, I find where we're at now to be a much more an unstable and and volatile political geopolitical sphere than we were before, and I really I, doubt that Hillary Clinton would be. On I don't know who we're going to go to war I, with. I see it right almost now, like like it depends on what side you were on because it's like like what you're seeing right now. Because if you were like one of those rah rah shish boom ba Trump people and you're watching what he's doing, for the most part, he's doing what he said he was going to do. Even if you don't like the rollout and all that shit, you know, he said he was going to enact a restriction on immigration from some countries. He's going to try and push the wall stuff through. He's going to uh, apparently backpedal and allow a Republican Congress to do fucking nothing about Obamacare, which is annoying that they're just completely dropping the ball and not doing anything there. But then obviously well, what, if you don't well, what, like those what can things, they do? what can they do? The Republican Congress? Yeah, I mean, they, what can they do? What can they do about Obamacare? You can't. They, they you... fought it like six or seven times when Obama was in office and then they haven't done shit about That's it right. since Trump got in. Like, I, I, I'm blaming them, not giving them credit for something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, like, if they had a better alternative, you've heard it a thousand times. If they had a better mm-hmm. alternative, we would have seen it by now. Yeah, sure. I just see with, like, with all, like, the, the foreign policy stuff and the immigration stuff, it just, it seems like people who really were against that prior to it, they see this now as like, oh my God, this is the the end of days. It's finally come. And the people who saw that and were like, yeah, we do want more immigration control. We do want the borders secure. They see this and they go, okay, we may not like the way he rolled it out, but at least he's doing or trying to do what he said. He seems to have a, a habit of, you know, I mean, he did write a book about it, about negotiating and starting with like a really ridiculous thing. So this whole, like the full seven country ban, it seems like, He's going to back off of that. And then all the people who were like, well, yeah, we, we love Trump. We want no more immigration. They'll be like, well, he tried to do that for us. But, you know, the rest of the government had to pull him back. And then the people who hated that whole idea of the, the temporary ban from those seven nations will be like, well, at least we got him to back off that. At least it's more moderate. Well, that's now. a very positive view towards. I don't see it like that at all. What I see is all Trump has done since he's take office is lose. 
lose, 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 he must be tired of losing, right? And the immigration ban is just one of those issues. That people give him credit for like building the wall because he signed an executive order. Building the wall, either Mexico's going to pay for it, which we all know is bullshit, or Congress is going to pay for it. And an executive which order doesn't have any... Which they've expressed their intention to do. The thing they've is, all their... Trump has done thus far is add a wall to his Christmas wish list, right? That, that's all that executive order is. I wish I had a wall. And yeah, that's what I'm saying, though, is that he's making that step, and it's showing his supporters who are into that, like, okay, he didn't immediately abandon it. Like a, I, th- I, th- I feel like it's a symbolic gesture just to appease his face right now <laughs> without right. With, without actually doing anything. And it's kind of like the same. He did an execu- he enacted an executive order a couple weeks ago that was like a tough-on-crime executive Another order that, that didn't nothing. do anything. It was just like, we're going to be tough-on-crime. The only thing he's actually yeah. done is make it legal for coal-fired energy plants to dump their waste in rivers. That's the only executive order Which rivers? Signed. Yeah. Yeah, and for All corporations rivers? to not have to disclose, and to, for corporations not <laughs> not to one. have to disclose, uh, um, bribing, what is it? Uh, bribing bri- foreign basically officials, bri- or foreign officials giving them money, like basically, I think either way, but yeah, they don't have to declare income from from outside governments now, which is, I mean, right, finally. <laughs> we've been asking uh, honestly, for that for so long my gosh if there were two wait. things i was hoping he'd get done it's more bribes and poison in the water yeah, you know? You know, about that's re- why i about voted re- for him <laughs> more, dirtier water in those uh, areas you know <laughs> well course, i think how, the, how do you defend that though as a supporter do, it, no do you, I, do you defend I, that i thought or do he you... was a lesser of two evils option i don't think that hillary would have been better in this way i think she's shown that she's sold herself out to capitalists and like, crony capitalists and those big co- companies oil whatever the fuck it just seems you. silly to take all of this shit that is bad with trump obviously i'm not going to wholly defend him because he's not great but the whole turning it up to 11 thing and everything is catastrophized. Everything is the end of the world. Like it, it's just, it's turning people off. I think well, and making people who are in the middle feel more like, well, God damn, like I don't trust these media people anyway from the right and the left. And the fact that at every opportunity they go, Hey, what's this? You know, well, well, there's still actually no evidence whatsoever. Of the Russia hacking the election, but let's just, you know, play it up, turn it up to 11. But that's not, that's not NBC, true. You, you, NBC you have it yesterday. That there's rep- still no no evidence that he hacked that there's Russian involvement in the election. Mathis said today that he's pretty sure there is, but and and those 17 oh, intelligence that, agencies, that, that whole thing, they just agreed that if Russia were to do it, the way that it was done was consistent with ways that they would assume Russia would have done. That's it. no, that's so not. It was I think specious. I think I think you're mistaken. NBC reported yesterday that there was no evidence, specific evidence, that people on Trump's team colluded with Russia. That's the, but they did not report that there's no evidence that Russia in, involved themselves with this election. That, I think, is pretty much out there in the open at this point. As yes. you said, Rex, Rex Tillerson and General Mattis are both uh, de- departing from him and saying it's pretty clear, it's pretty obvious. And these are people that are getting the highest of classified briefings. So they're seeing stuff that some people in Congress aren't seeing, and they have access to information that obviously civilians don't have. But None if, of that if stuff you, bothers oh, me. NBC said... Uh, that investigations have found no collusion between Trump campaign and contacts in Russia. Yeah, right, so that's they, not they, the same what, thing as but, saying but, that Russia didn't do it. But wait, no, I, 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 I want to get this in. The point that, that Hutch was saying was like, hey, the Russians did it without any like provocation. We don't know that his campaign was working with them. But we do know that Trump literally said this. I will tell you this, Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. I think you'll be re- rewarded by our press mightily by our press right so like yes trump literally asked the russians to do it and the russians did it and we're all here saying well there's no evidence well the russians Russians didn't do that they hacked they hacked podesta and they didn't they didn't hack her emails if i could just be a little picky there okay okay that's fair yeah they were confused. But, but 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 them saying that there's no evidence that there are there was collusion between Trump's team and Russian officials is not saying that 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 there isn't possible evidence out there. And what they're reporting is that you had you had three high level members of Trump's team consistently in contact with Russian officials throughout the entire campaign. Like at what point do you point to that and say, well, that there might be a fire over there? And the, implication, the implications of that are pretty fucking stunning because that's never happened in our history before. So I, this whole talk about catastrophizing things, yes, the end of the world might be a little hyper or hyperbolic, but 
to suggest that this might undermine the very fabric of our democracy, I don't think is an overstatement. I heard some senator or to yeah, say yeah, yeah, that, yeah. like, he's um, like, we don't have proof proof, but we have is smoke. There's smoke everywhere. And we'll see if there's fire. Kyle? Yeah, this sounds like what happens to every president. There's this like conspiracy, like, hey, if these pieces fall together, this all looks really bad. Like, like we just don't know. I don't think we're ever going to know like what was going on there. What really bothered me that actually that is real, a hundred percent, because we saw it with our eyes, is how he handled that press conference today. You know, he he he, he calls on this one reporter, he's, and and before he even calls him, he's like, ah, oh, this ought to be a good question, right, folks? Oh, it'd be a real hump dinger. All right, let's go to you. Let's go to you. You're always he fair. A, he did that a few. He did that a few, he did that a and, few with a few reporters there. And it's a Jewish guy with a yarmulke. He is. He's like, yes, Mr. President, I'm always very fair to you. I I just wanted to ask because. Some of your supporters were committed anti-Semitic acts in, in your name. And oh, 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 here we go. He said he was going to ask a good question. Here this bullshit is. All right, you just sit down. I, I know what you I know where you're headed with this. I'll finish up your question. I liked it when I'll the, finish asking your question and then answer it for you. I, like, I liked it when the black reporter asked if they had met with like the black <laughs> caucus or something. Oh, and and he's, like, he's like, oh, yeah, what? I, well, you set it up then. Do you know them? Why don't you set up the black I, I'm caucus? I'm sure that you have a good friend over there. You, what, you oh, people are. People to just work other. together. I don't, I don't know. It, it, he's yep. and and to act like what like I, I feel like Kyle was like, well, this is normal. All presidents go through this. No, it, it, Flynn has resigned in scandal. The total number of like high-ranking officials that have resigned in scandal across the Trump and Obama combined is one. No, no, no. Three. Well. Uh, Donna Brazil, Eric Holder. Holder. Eric Holder. <laughs> there's Attorney there's General. two right there. Both. I was just reading this. Uh, Obama's they four attorney wait, general. Wait, wait, wait. You know what? You, did Donna there was Brazil Donna Brazil, and Obama? then also Deb Debbie Wilshman Schultz. She had to resign too. So no, 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 like, no. Well, I'll talk about senior Donna people in Obama's it, thing. Eric didn't, Holder, Donna Brazil. Wilshman Schultz did not work for him. Did Donna Brazil maybe previously did? I'm talking about resigning. She didn't. She didn't. She didn't, she didn't oh. work for the campaign. No, they, they work for the DNC. But, yeah, yeah but, no, no. You but, can't but, just grab all Democrats across history because there's plenty of dirty. Eric Holder across the last three years. Eric Holder, Holder across the last three years. Neither of those work. Obama had no one as high ranking as Flynn. I said Eric Holder because that's the only one that I Eric know Holder of. That's the, that's the one that did some bad stuff. Uh, it was Loretta it did Lynch. Not resign, I don't think, in disgrace. Loretta, Loretta Lynch didn't resign. I, I, I don't think, I'm trying to think of the name. And is this I don't wrong? Because I just read about this today. She's the Attorney General and stepped in when Holder resigned. Is what it was. Well, from Trump's campaign, you have Carter Page, Paul Manafort, and now. Michael Flynn, all either being fired or resigning because of close ties to Russia. And we, you know, I, I experienced a lot of pushback on social media and my ads from people saying like, oh, your excuse is just blah, 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 the Russians. At what point do you say like, this seems kind of fucking shady? Like that, that at what point when you have, th I mean, and these aren't just people like an intern or someone kind of, these are top level members of his, of his, um, not cabinet, but his, uh, his campaign, his campaign team, and now three of them are, are being ousted because of close ties to Russia. I think, and uh, if his, that his doesn't like, concern you, at the very least, I'm not saying it has to convince you that they're criminals or that. It, yeah, if that course. doesn't if that doesn't yeah. concern you, then well, then I think that everybody should be advocating for free free and open press, a bipartisan or or maybe even a nonpartisan uh, investigation into this, not something that's behind closed doors mm -hmm. like what's happening or what might happen on the Senate Intelligence um, Committee, but something that is like public, out in the open, transparent. I think Americans have a right to know, and I think American voters had a right to know what was going on before the fucking election. And I'm yeah. just dumbfounded that Comey thought it was relevant to talk about Anthony Weiner's laptop when he also had access to all this fucking sh verifiably shady shit that was going on. I mean, that's just nuts. That I bothers think me way, too. That's a strong to point. Like this guy... Literally, like, was it a week or two before the election was like, yeah, we're going to reinvestigate. We've got a bunch of stuff we need to talk about with Hillary Clinton when he literally two had weeks. Two, weeks, two weeks before, two weeks the, before election. the elections. And, and then, like, it was too late when he said, ah, everything is cool. But he had the same sort of Trump campaign officials are working with the Russians. Don't know what they're saying. Uh, just yeah. that they're contacting back and forth with the Russians. And he doesn't say a word until after Trump's elected. That's that makes a person nervous. You know, that that. That look, this election was so close, right? One got the electoral votes, one got the popular vote. A lot of those states were just razor thin, you know, decided days later in, in some cases as to who actually oh. took them. Uh, you could point to a dozen things that would have tipped it the other way, and that was easily one of them. 
Yeah, I, well, I think one thing to keep in mind, though, is that like if you're <laughs> if you're Russia, if you're Vladimir Putin, let's set aside the fact that he seems to be a, a pretty brutal guy that murders his like competition and news and media, oh. and you know has you know made these incursions into Ukraine and and basically conquered another part of a, another country. You can say what you want about those people. Maybe were felt more Russian than Ukrainian in the in that region, but still, it's not yeah. right what he did. Well, but 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 I I think if you look at like what what's he benefiting? I want to know what what his benefit, what Russia benefit uh, is from the Trump presidency. I think what it is is that Hillary had clearly outlined a lot of steps that made it things really hard on the Russians, from the sanctions the that no would have fly con- zone. Well, from the Obama sanctions that would have continued on to the no fly zone that they wanted to impose in Syria, which is uh, which is just a red line in Syria, that if it's crossed, it's like do we let. Two red lines get crossed now because Obama had the whole thing in Syria. Oh, if you use chemical weapons, we're coming in. Then they use chemical weapons that kills hundred, kill hundreds of uh, civilians. I think that she was basically kind of threatening a, an air war with Russia if they didn't stop bombing. I think it, it, they felt that it behooved them to have a Donald Trump presidency. That's what it appears like on the outside. What I'm afraid of, and I think what, what like people to the far to the left want to say, oh, it's got to be this is that like the Russians have something on him or they own him or he's their boy like Saturday Night Live would would uh, would would, would yeah. make it seem SNL's and, and been hilarious by the way that's the to best Kyle, thing about to the add Trump to what presidency. you were saying like they, they there's also too much effort to be like the whole reason it was lost was because of the Hillary email thing or the Comey reinvestigation. You have to remember the biggest, most, oh, like you were saying, yeah. buddy, the razor thin thing. Yeah, I totally disagree with that because the reason <coughs> that he won was because of those Rust Belt states. And you keep in mind all of those Rust Belt states, those counties voted Obama. 08 and 2012. These are people yeah, who probably it, it, felt distant. You can say, you can speculate and say, oh, it was that that caused it. But I think it's more likely that they felt, hey, fuck, I thought we were going to start getting a lot better. I thought manufacturing was coming back and I feel a little betrayed by the last eight years. And so screw this. I'm going to the other side. So you can't Clinton, say that it, you can the same at, people who voted can, for you, Obama. I understand. Yeah, there, there are people that voted two years or two, ter- two terms in a row mm-hmm. for Obama that did switch to Donald Trump. The math yeah. just it, that has to be the case. Yeah. But um, but, uh, if you look at her poll numbers before Comey made that announcement, she had like an average of, I think, like an 11 point lead on uh, what is it? Real clear politics, which is like an aggregate of of all the the super uh, like, well, oh, real clear politics. I thought you're talking about a different one. Go ahead. No, no, no. Yeah. Real clear clear politics. They're not like. When it comes to aggregation, they're they don't like only pick liberal leaning. They have like Fox News in there and they have everybody. They had like the LA Times, which is like the only. Did you do you remember them? They were like yeah, the, only the only poll that had him up got it right. the whole yeah. time. And <laughs> yeah. it was because if you actually looked into that, it's because they had a, a a black guy in their small. That was based on like a small group, and they had a a black guy in there that was that was voting for Trump, and they weighted his. Well, I'm not actually describing this properly, but it was a really strange explanation for why they had him up the entire time. <laughs> That's but, her, but her but her, her, margin in the polls was like, she had him like, really crushed. Really crushed. And then Comey came out and announced this totally inconsequential uh, investigation that led to nothing. That he knew nothing about. He didn't, he didn't even, he hadn't even seen those emails yet. Or he hadn't even reviewed the contents of it yet. He felt it incumbent upon him to announce that. And all of a sudden, it became razor thin. It was like it neck didn't, and though. neck. The polls right before the election were everybody was sure Hillary was going to win. I by, was, by all like, the media was. By like two points, though. It's not like everybody said it was going to be this massive blowout. Of yeah, the they polls, did. Most no, people thought did. it was going to be a big Hillary win. Okay, on the state level, like obviously there needs to be some tweaking as far as how they collect and interpret their data. But when you look at on the whole nationally, Almost all the big uh, um, outlets got it right. Like it was within the margin of error. It wasn't. They were not predicting. Um, like they gave her incredibly high odds, right? Like I think a lot of places were giving her a ninety percent chance or a ninety-five chan- I percent saw chance. I eighty-five of a lot. 90, yeah. 98, The evening five, of the New York Times, I think. But a five or two percent or a ten percent chance is still a chance, and that's gonna happen. A good, like obviously, ten percent of the time. And so when it does, mm-hmm. people treat it like it's this statistical anomaly no it was always a possibility and um yeah the polls were not as wrong as everybody makes them out no if you just look at their math then it's pretty evident that's it. well, it's just it, it seems not well, everyone on television to... seemed to be very fucking shocked that night there was no one who, who was like who was saying what you're saying well you know hey you flip a coin 10 times one of those but, times but, trump's but, gonna win they were all like 
We're mm. not sure what to say, ladies and gentlemen. It's possible I'm being duped. Yeah. Uh, Every <laughs> poll was wrong. We're so Every poll but L.A. Times, apparently, with the one weighted black guy. Uh, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did they ever interview that, the guy? that guy? Because that guy should have gotten That's on so TV. Funny. Like, the guy who uh, ran the L.A. Times show, he should have been interviewed everywhere to, like, st you know, yeah. sit in the sun for his day. In, yeah. in, fa in, fa in fairness, though, him winning Pennsylvania, Michigan, uh, Ohio... Fucking what? Florida. What was it? What was it? Fl uh, Florida. Like him winning all of those states was Wisconsin. the same. Was the same as drawing to like an inside straight. Yeah, draw. He shot the like, moon. It, right. That's gonna. <laughs> it's gonna fucking happen. Like I. I. I understand that it's shocking and it, it shouldn't be a source of disparagement towards the press to say that. that I mean, I. It's shocking, but it could have happened and it did happen. So here we are now. I. I. I I, I really don't think that the polls got it as wrong as you're saying. It's bothering me a lot that the Trump administration is lying so much. And, and that goes from the top to pretty much anyone that gets in front of a camera. Kellyanne Conway now is just not getting booked like she used to. Because what you're supposed to do is get like a senior official and have them explain like what's going on. In, in she's the, so sneaky. It, she's Morning a, Joe said they dude, wouldn't book her anymore. Yeah. They, she well, is, they did. She, CNN did. Then they backtracked on it. But it, so there's been at least two. I don't know who else is on board with that. But I, I, I'll do another tangent on her. But she's just a, like a dedicated liar. And Trump is a liar. And it seems like that. Who's the bald Igor looking guy? Like Steve Sean Miller. Steven, Stephen Miller. Stephen Miller's the one oh, I'm going yeah. for. He will <clears throat> not be questioned. Fuck <laughs> like that. Yeah. Okay, I get. That, I get that. We can laugh about that, and it's we. Can, Right. I, that, there's something. That's a little frightening. Pretty you know? scary. I didn't get that quote. I never saw, I never oh, yeah, saw that. Oh, yeah, he did. He's like, his power will not be questioned. And uh, Stephen Colbert like nailed it. It was like Daniel Day Lewis in Lincoln, where he goes, I am a man cloaked in great power. Like, <laughs> like, it was like, he, he spoke very authoritatively, and I've never heard a White House official speak like that. Yeah. Not in my it, lifetime. It, it, never. The, the thing is, I feel like we're almost normalizing how fucked up this is, and it's not normal. Right? It's not normal for people at Flynn's level to get to resign in scandal. This isn't typical. It's not no. normal for foreign, like Russia, to have this level of interference. It's not normal for the FBI to come out and announce shit. I mean, they have got shit on both candidates like that happened. It's not normal for Trump to, like the president, to get up and lie like. Obama did State of the Union addresses, and he would tell his speechwriters, look, when they do fact-checking the next day, I want to nail it. I want them to come up with nothing when, when they do all the fact-checking on my State of the Union. And it happened repeatedly. He'd do his State of the Union address. It'd all be true. Trump can't talk for five minutes without lying. And I've got a list did here. You see, did you see he actually got called out in the press conference today in yeah. a really brilliant way well, about, that, about, that. About, about the Electoral College? The, As if the... he's not responsible for what he says, right? He's like, yeah. look. I w so we had the biggest <laughs> Electoral College blowout since Reagan. Someone yeah. stands up and goes, uh, George W. Bush, Clinton, and Obama both beat your margins. You're and he close. goes, well, that's it's just Bush Sr. Bush Sr., Clinton, and Obama did I say, all did beat. Did I say W. Bush? Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't. And I, I went H.W., sorry. Um, <laughs> but, um, uh, but yeah, as if people don't have just access to this number, you yeah, can just pull out a line. That's it, such yeah. an easy thing to check. Dude, just that, like that's like him that's being one like, of my issues I've actually, with the way I should have brought this up before. I'm half Mexican. I'm, I'm half Mexican, <laughs> so I'm banking on that boat. It's like, no, you're not. I googled it. You're a white. He guy. lies constantly <laughs> about everything. He, he, the circuit is in chaos. The, you know that that circuit is. So he's saying the ninth court, the ninth circuit, all these people are in chaos and turmoil. Totally untrue. Our administration inherited many problems across the government and across the economy. I inherited a mess. Total bullshit, right? The, the, the economy has been growing for like seven years in a row. Our unemployment rate is as low as it's ever been. I, I think we can find better lies than that, though, because that's really subjective, Our right? Workforce participation rate is down from 2009. Okay, I don't think you know. Is like I, the workforce participation rate is a bullshit number. And the thing is, this we've been measuring unemployment by the unemployment rate since 1940. By the same metric. Yeah. So this is the same metric here. We're so not... what they do is the Republicans unhappy it, 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 about. The you can't unemployment the rate. Unemployment. You can't change it to say, oh, there's a new category of people that's no longer seeking work, and they're not unemployed. They're just no longer seeking work. And so when you change the metric and the methodology, that's not a change. Then that becomes useless. That, that, so when someone stops looking for a job for several years, then they stop saying that that person is unemployed. That, that, that it's been that way since 1940. No, this is. I don't think they have changed their methodology, Mark. No, they, I, I think, I think this, it's just, they've been measuring it the same way.
Yeah. yeah. And we've had what we've had like seven years of sustained growth or something like that. The people who are we doing have... it in a different way are the people who start including like women and children and retirees in their, you know, they, when they come up with a 42% unemployment rate, they're counting my son Colin in that's, numbers that's like insane. that. That's insane. That's yeah. that is insane to say there's a 42 and he would say that at his rallies. I, I still he's probably still saying it now. I, I don't I don't even know anymore, but he would r- routinely use that statistic like 42, 50%, six, it could be as high as 60, 70% insane stuff and yeah and and for one thing they're not including children (coughs) in the workforce participation there are different ways to measure the workforce participation rate and when you get to numbers like 40 and 60 percent you have to be including kids because it's not as if 42 percent of adults part of this (laughs) it's not as if 42 percent of adults are are not working what i don't have my calculator here to defend these arguments god damn it let's talk about the funny part let's talk about sean spicer and Melissa, Melissa, McCarthy. McCarthy. Melissa, Melissa McCarthy on the set when when her um, podium turned into a segue. Yeah. Oh my God, man, I fucking died. <laughs> She's chasing like, him around. Oh, spicy's you, coming did, for you. Did you hear? <laughs> spicy, man. If did I you hear the reports? That, did you hear the reports that he was really upset that a woman played him, like specifically? I mean, <laughs> I didn't who, either. Knows, who knows? Not who knows? Not though. I think it was an onion article. Publicly he handled well, it this... well. Publicly he's like, you know, she needs to cut down on the amount of gum she's chewing or something. Like it, mm. yeah, I, I thought he handled it fine. Did Spicer say that or yeah. did Trump no, say that? No, literally Spicer was like, I thought it was funny, yeah, but she ate too I much gum. Think Trump, uh, and on. then her second oh. time out, she pulls out the largest piece of gum a human being's literally this big yeah, piece yeah. of gum. And she like rolls it up and takes a the biggest bite that she's capable of taking out of it. She's like, Yeah, I'm, I'm cutting down on the gum. <laughs> they're they're doing God's work over there. They really are. And they're they're. It's, it's funny. Think. The people that Trump hates are really succeeding. CNN's ratings are going up. The entire. I, I just read an article today. About New York how, Times. How invigorated their, their stuff is. Serving. New York Times is doing great. CNN is doing great. New York. Um, I'm sorry. I meant to say Saturday Night Live is doing better than they have in I don't know how long, but some very long period of time. They were all, sure all, all, all of them. Wait. All of them. Just like Infowars is probably doing really good right now. Just like Breitbart's probably like print Russell, media or news. Yeah. News media right now, like, is is the I think probably like the most popular it's been and yeah since when like Monica Lewinsky this probably happens like, during wars too. Uh, like, to do what, one if, more bitch thing about Trump hmm. that I didn't like. I didn't watch the whole thing today, but I saw clips when he blamed the media for Flynn yeah. getting fired. It yeah. was like, I dude, wasn't gonna you, fire him, all that all that you had to do was not fire Flynn and then say. See, the, the deep state wants me to fire up to try to dredge up all this stuff. I'm not going to let it happen. And people and his supporters would be like, yeah, we're not going to let the deep state do it. But then he fires Flynn and then says, oh, the media made me fire Flynn. It's ridiculous. And it's like, no, are you? do you think everybody here is retarded? You're the only one who could have uh, fired him. You he fired had, him. He, he had to fire him. Though. Oh, yeah, lot, you they, fired they, him. Stop it, saying it, the media it, did. The New York <laughs> Times just reported today, or it might have been Washington Post. I'm pretty sure it was the New York mm-hmm. Times. They just reported today that he did, in fact, fucking lie to the FBI, which is what he was chanting, lock her up yeah. at Trump's rallies. He was saying the same shit to Hillary for for allegedly lying to the FBI. Oh. And now now like he might be in some deep shit, man. And he's going to he's going to be summoned pro- or subpoenaed probably to speak in front yeah. of some kind of an oversight committee. Like, I just read the opposite. Yeah. I don't know what will happen. The, with it. the um the other thing I, I Trump is blasting this whole leak thing. And I find that to be very bitchy, too. There's two things about Trump that the hypocrisy is frustrating me. He loved leaks during the election campaign, right? During the election cycle, Hillary's leaks were fucking fabulous. He loved them. He's telling Russia to do it, right? And now that he's having leaks against him, it's it's not okay. It's it's treason. It's whatever. Well, there is a difference, right? Well, hang on a second. Let's think about the difference, at at least the perceived difference from his side. He's the president of the United States, and they're leaking stuff from within his White House about him and and other leaders. Whereas we were talking about Hillary Clinton, like private individual Hillary Clinton with her private server and the private organization of the DNC. That is a a, a glaring difference. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can't do to the president and the White House that that you know I, I could tell a secret from this household, right? But if you tell a secret from the White House, I think it's a little bit different. Well, so, he was asking well, for that's leaks definitely a big Secretary of State, though, side, right? right? They were Secretary of State emails that he specifically told Russia to hack, right? You know, there's 30,000 emails. They were to find. Well, there is, she, she lost she bleached, them. She, I yeah, mean, she bleached bit the fuck out of those. Yeah, so that's she, true. She, the but ones I'm, he wanted him to find were ones that she was like, ah, I've lost him. If I had look, him, you guys could she's look. She's no angel. I, I agree with you on that. But uh, 
He loved leaks against the Secretary of State. He hates leaks against himself. President. He did, but before, he also hated links. Uh, when, he hated the leaks when he talked about um, what Snowden, right? Like he's, he said very bad things about Snowden yeah, in the yeah, past. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. he's definitely been left, right, and then back. <laughs> yeah, he specific, someone, a reporter at the press conference specifically made that point today. Why did you love the leaks then? You don't love them now. And he said, well, the difference is they're leaking classified info. So now people are. That's on, not now you, now yeah. You, yeah, that wasn't different. That was classified <laughs> shit for Hillary, too. That's why she was in trouble. <laughs> and by the way, I, I just know, uh, I real, real quick. I don't know emails are classified. I'm real saying quick, like classified. Um, uh, real quick, I did check. Hillary's work. So they changed the unemployment rate. In 2010, uh, it used to be that after two years, they would make it so you were no longer seeking work and they'd take you out of that. Uh, they changed it to what is it, five years. Oh, so they, I mean, it's almost I would, the opposite I would have of to, your I would, argument. I would, I would have to understand, uh, explain that. What do you mean? Well, he so was, it says, it seems calling like now you have unprecedented, to be... Here, I'll just read it. It's a 2010 article. Like, I just found it, so who I'm knows? Listening. I just thought it was interesting. Uh, citing what it calls an unprecedented rise in long-term unemployment, the Federal Bureau of Labor Statistics, beginning Saturday, will raise from two years to five years the upper limit on how long somebody can be listed as having been jobless. Oh, well, wouldn't that hurt uh, your argument? Yeah, that would destroy con- your argument. Mm-hmm. I- I'm just looking into it. Like, I wasn't yeah. trying to fuck you over or anything. The move could be better, could help economists better measure the severity of the nation's prolonged economic downturn. The change is a sign that to bureau officials, quote, are afraid that a cap of two years may be understating the true average duration, but they won't know by how much until they raise the upper limit. So basically what they're saying is that they won't know how long people are truly unemployed if they take it down to two years. So they have to extend it to five years because there's such a huge number of people who have been under, unemployed for over two years that it's no longer useful data to stop well, say, reporting well, it at that say- point. Well, you say huge number, but it, like the rate is at five point two percent now, or something 4. like that. 3, like, so this is keep in mind, this is a two thousand ten article. So okay. they're right. talking. Yeah, so, so back then the unemployment rate was higher. They, just, they still do record it that way. So basically, the, the economy was so bad that so many people were jobless for over two years that they had to make that bigger so that they could garner more valuable information. Yeah, so in, still, it, it, it the economy somewhere. bottomed out somewhere around two thousand nine. Uh, you know, so the first year Obama came in, two thousand eight. What right? Didn't it start it in two thousand eight? Yeah, as it ended two thousand eight, because okay. as soon as he came into office, he was dealing with that crash. Yeah, yeah, but what, I don't think he turned and, it around. I mean, there were job losses in his first couple of months, if I recall correctly. I don't know. I don't have it in front of me. But um, uh, so in my head, somewhere around two thousand nine, the economy started picking up and getting better. That doesn't mean unemployment was down at like four percent back in two thousand nine. They just started adding like one hundred and fifty thousand, two hundred and twenty thousand jobs a month all that time until unemployment now, which is actually quite low. And uh, you know, the, the notion that Trump inherited something that's messed up is just totally wrong. As a matter of fact, the, the so because I mean, unemployment was so low, the way supply and demand works is wages weren't ra- rising. Um, unemployment was dropping, but rage- wages weren't. Ra- and that now it is. Wages are going up, too, uh, because it's harder to find people if I recall, to pay more. Like, like I, I don't know, it's just not fair to pretend that Obama recovered from this huge and now we're just surging again. I think, and I could be wrong on this, but I think he's the only president in history to not have at least 2% GDP growth. He, the foreign policy has been a disaster. The entire Middle East is burning and in shit. Because everything he touched over there was went badly. Iran doesn't give a fuck about the deal they signed. With us. <laughs> hey, here, take this money. Don't spend it on anything over there. Oh, all right. Fuck you. We're gonna do whatever we want. We don't. We didn't. We didn't, we didn't give them money. We were paying an old debt. We bought weapons from them. It was like 1.5 billion dollars, and we just never paid them. So he agreed to pay our debt. That was money that we owed to them. We and didn't I don't just see give the them world money. burning quite the same way you do. And, and again, you know, sometimes I talk about this, like the, the lens that we look through. I know Kyle doesn't like to hear it, but to me, the world is more or less at peace. You know, is the Middle East fighting? Yes. I like George Carlin's bit. The Middle East fights. They always fight. They fought from the beginning of time, a trillion years from now when the sun is hurtling towards the earth and there's nothing left but amoeba. The amoebas in the Middle East will be fighting one another. So to blame that on, like pin that on Obama doesn't seem fair to me. I, I, I feel like, yeah. It's also ignoring like a, like a what, like a century's worth of... That's what I'm saying. For, for, yeah. Like foreign inter, foreign intervention and p- like other countries coming in and practicing and, and like the fight in like Iraq and and uh, Afghanistan. Fault. Like those things really like that was a yeah. W Bush now, wars. Now, here, don't misinterpret what I'm saying. I'm not saying that the Middle East is a pile of shit and struggling right now because of Obama. There have been huge problems there for a long time. I'm just saying that it's a bit silly to be like, oh. 
you know, well, first of all, <coughs> Trump should not be pretending that he inherited a more a worse America, quote unquote, than Obama did, because I don't think that's true. I think Obama had a lot more hurdles to jump over because it was at the very beginning of a recession, borderline depression, you know. But also, we can't pretend that Obama fixed everything and that it's all hunky dory from here. You know, just don't fuck up, Donald. Like, no, there's a lot of foreign policy issues. Uh, our economy is not booming at all. We're improving, I guess, didn't, marginally. Didn't the, didn't, the, didn't the Dow just close at like a record high again today it, or yeah. something like but that? I don't, like, want to, I don't want to give Donald Trump credit for that just because he's president. Like a lot I'm of not either. Think. That's a result oh, yeah, of, of a sustained economic growth for over the last seven, I'm eight years. I'm a little years. biased about calling the it's Obama era the like a, terrible because I had a really good eight years. You know, in the last eight years, I got on YouTube. I opened a business, two businesses, got kind of rich. Like, it's been a real good fucking run for me. And, and to hear, like, oh, my God, everything is terrible. The world is on fire, et cetera. I'm like, really? Like, I, I, I get it. Well, the your, lens your I look through it is a little your, rose-tinted, yeah, right? Your circumstances are a little bit different, I think. I'll get my – I didn't have the typical eight years that everyone else did under the Obama term. Like, I, I follow that. That's a slight understatement. <laughs> I, did, I didn't make any money off of my Minecraft server. It was a, it was a complete failure. <laughs> but, um, but you know, Minecraft look, the, the Minecraft server did well. It wouldn't have done as well if the world was on fire. You know, that, that's, that's just the how it is, you know? Well, video games are – have proven to be pretty recession proof because people they? end up cause, well because people end up the logic goes that people end up spending more on things that they can entertain themselves with at home instead of you know if i spend 50 hours mm. playing skyrim and i only paid 60 bucks for it that sure beats 60 hours worth of going mm. to the movies or going to a restaurant or something like that so even during the even during that big crash of 2009 call of duty was like doing great you know like that, yeah, was, that was that this was, year that was yeah, like that prostitution was, always does well. Are we talking about recession-proof industries and businesses by any chance? As I step yeah, back in, is this our yeah. cue to talk about prostitution and our drugs and prostitution? Ah, yes. This sounds like much a lot of fun. Let's let's go in this direction. Uh, are you? Uh, uh, do you guys think fine. it should be legal? Oh, absolutely. Dr like, like, I'm, just, yeah. I'm just guessing everybody here. Thinks what are we yeah, talking I, about? I, drugs I, or prostitution or both? I think that both. All drugs except for like uh, I, I don't know. There, there's some that just seem so horrible that that even meth seems so scary to me. I I always talk about the scariest anti meth commercial. It's literally like an underage boy like in a hotel room and like an, like with his shirt off and at the end like a 45 year old man puts his hand on his shoulder and he goes, "Are you ready?" <laughs> like like it's like oh shit. He's like prostituting himself for meth uh, and I'm like it, and then he goes meth not even once and I'm like you're goddamn right. No one sticks up for pedophiles ever. I was behind a house one time. We were smoking <laughs> cigarettes with the, with these guys, and I, and I didn't know these guys I was hanging out with. Just had met them, and I but but it seemed like we were kind of, you know, we, we were getting along. We weren't hitting it off per se. We were, but but we were getting along. There were there, there were no like rough feelings. I wasn't like I didn't think these guys were shady. We're all smoking our cigarettes together, and uh, and talking about stuff. And meth came up, and I I said, hey, meth, not even once, am I right? And the one guy to my left goes, oh, you know, every now and then, got to ride that blue crystal, you know? And I'm, and, and, and I'm like, no, nah, I, I don't know. I don't think it's blue either. And then the other guy's like, hey, if, if every now and then, you know, every now and then, sure, sure, it's good stuff. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to get the <laughs> fuck up out of here because I'm hanging out with two meth heads and I had no goddamn idea. So, so everything but meth. meth. Yeah, you nobody dabbled nobody in meth. dabbles in meth. Mm -mm. No, no, it's not a casual drug, no. But uh, did you, do you guys, do you guys, do you guys think that Trump is going to uh, – Trump and Sessions are going to hold to the, the promise of respecting state laws when it comes to the here's why I recreational do. marijuana? I do, and here's why. I, I, I think that tr all of Trump's like fake um, religiousness when he appeals to Christians and stuff is just that. It's very fake. I don't think he has some moral reason to hate marijuana he does have this moral high ground of oh i don't smoke cigarettes i don't drink alcohol never had no never drugs no alcohol yeah he's big he on that, that bit of high ground but it seems like the thing that he worships trump's real god is the dollar and like uh i just can't see him saying oh that one billion dollar business you've got going on colorado we're shutting that down um you know we're gonna replace it with better what like like like, like no I, I just can't see him how saying much of that. the how much of a cut do the feds take like um i think they did a billion dollars worth of, of, of business in Colorado last year, and there's no reason to think that this year probably won't be 
Actually it, it beat out alcohol this year. Yeah. More taxes for weed than alcohol in Colorado. That's bananas. Yeah. Like it's, it's so much there. money to be made. Like if he knows anything about business, I can't imagine being against legalizing marijuana. It's like you're just allowing a black market to exist for no reason, missing out on tax dollars. If you want to throw a sin tax on it, like alcohol and tobacco, fuck it, do it. People will be happy because they'll be buying it legally and safely. They like need to figure, they need to figure out. They need to figure out. They need to. Invest some money and do some scientific <clears throat> research and figure out a way to um, deal with driving under the influence. Because if you smoke pot regularly, like let's say you smoke pot every single day, you're not high, but you get in a car accident, they take your blood and they find um, a decent amount of marijuana yeah. in your system. You could be charged in some states for a DUI, even though, even if you haven't smoked that morning. Like that's another. How another are they going to yeah. do that? Like measure it in real time. It doesn't. It doesn't work that way scientifically. It doesn't. There, there, there's get, nothing like, now. on your breath or something. Um, they, they, they have a breath test, but they also have a blood test, and neither one of them work because who knows about tolerance levels, right? You look at somebody no. like uh, Coco Diaz, right? Like that guy could sit down and and smoke, you know, a, a quarter ounce or something, and then probably go for a drive, and it, it would just it just wouldn't affect him. Whereas if you got some little <laughs> high, high school girl who just hit her first joint, she gets in her car, she's not even. She, She's oh. going to be seeing it at, at, at like 15 frames per second as she turns out <laughs> yeah. into the road. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be it, like. It, it affects you very differently, especially when you're young. That's why I yeah. don't like, like, uh, like, I like that marijuana is starting to become more accepted in, in mainstream culture. But I do worry about kids because I, that, like, I, I think that's something that you should wait until you're like 25. Got to protect these start. kids. Yep. It's, yeah, you don't I'm want not, it. I, I'm, no, I'm no, I'm the I end of the world you. if you caught your kid smoking a joint or something like that. But if you have a kid who's regularly smoking kid. pot when they're like yeah, 15 years probably. old, I don't, th I don't think that's good for your. It's not. It's not good for your brain yeah. chemistry. There's, there, been there's an, about that. Like if you're a kid, yeah, there, there's a difference between like yeah. you know we all say like, hey, look at Willie Nelson, look at Snoop Dogg. These guys are like still writing songs and they've smoked pounds and pounds of weed over decades. But I don't know. I don't think there's yeah, much. I wouldn't want them as like my accountant though. Or Perhaps not. Um, especially Willie. He he struggles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he has a history of struggling with that. Um, yeah, especially not Nelson. But yeah, I think prostitution should be legal. Getting back to what we were saying, for sure, 100. It, it 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 everything gets better when prostitution becomes legal. There's less, fewer STDs, fewer pimps abusing women, fewer like um, uh, forced prostitution, less yeah, forced prostitution, sex less trafficking is a big fucking deal. Yeah. Yeah, to less disease. Let's no, not forget about the disease because I don't know. We I'm sure we've all got an STD or few or a couple from a, a dirty prostitute. It happens. It's an unregulated it's just uh, part of life. Like just spending a thousand dollars on a magic deal. deck, you do it every couple of years. As and Ricky from Lester Park Boys would say, "No big deal." <laughs> okay, no big deal. It just it just <laughs> happens. Um, so yeah, all of those things would be better. And these are things that not only make the situation better. Notice everything I said; it's better for the prostitute, right? Like the only thing that's better for the John, if you will, is a you don't have to risk, you know, your picture being in the paper next week and Mama yeah. seeing it. And B, you know, you're probably much less likely to get an STD because there's like a regulate regulation going on or some sort of testing going on, like they're like oh, in the porn. Yeah, you're going to be system. infinitely less likely to get an STD because you're not going to be going to CD guy on the corner getting a prostitute. You're going to be going to, uh, you know, Samson and Sons Sex Corporation, and they're going to have an incentive to be like, all right, we got to make sure all our girls are clean. We don't want to get sued. We need to make sure that we're paying people fair wages because this is now a competitive market where we need to make sure we have the best people. Like they don't want to look at us and go, why go to, uh, you know, this company where I can go to sexy Susans and get the same thing for half price. Like it, it introduces competitiveness, competition. So you're able to they get a three titted safer. woman over there. Like, God damn. Black markets just never make anything safer for the people at the end. Yeah. Like I, that's why I don't get about people who are like, I don't want to legalize prostitution. It's like, they well, make... if you care about the vic like quote victims of it, who would be the women in the current circumstance in the current archetype? Like those would be some of the biggest people who are winning from it if it were legalized. They'd be able to go to work and feel safe, you know? Like yeah. I think the big I think the biggest victim when it comes to prostitution is like uh, the wife or the husband. I mean, some some women use sex workers too, so I'll speak in, in terms of both, but the wife or the husband or the kids, you know, like that I think those are like the actual I think we have to turn the focus on that true. wife or that husband who's not giving their partner what they need at home, not only <laughs> physically and sexually, but perhaps emotionally, because many of these men who reach out to sex workers are just are reaching out emotionally as much as physically. These these cold Dirty spouse is back at home who sit there not paying their 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 husbands the attention that they deserve. That's where the 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 focus should be. You, you joke, but I think there's some truth to that. It's 50-50, right? Some, like, like, yeah, I don't know about 50-50, but in, ah. in, 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 in some cases, but still, I think it's a mistake to like blame them for someone else's decision. But I mean, yeah, it could be an indication that something else is 
missing. Yeah, like there's there's this big misconception that guys only that that they only seek out physical comfort, and I think the that the case is um, that uh, you're exactly right. I think it's I think uh, I think a lot of times men don't know how to reach out when they have some kind of emotional need that needs to be fixed, and the only thing that they know how to do in that moment is to seek out a an anonymous sexual encounter because it it's might be the only accepted lot. way of reaching out in their sort of macho machismo kind of lifestyle or world that they live in. There's no in within their friend group or maybe the the little mini universe they live in. It, it'd be really weird if you reached out to a counselor or to uh, you know uh, a therapist or some kind. But if you reach out to a prostitute and then and then after sex you lay there with her for 30 minutes going, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I got this problem and that problem and you know you just. I think that that happens a lot. And I, I'm I not see, a frequenter like, of prostitutes or anything. I'm starting to really sound like it over here. <laughs> I, I can see the family thing of it. Like like we were saying, Hutch, where it could be damaging to the family. But I almost see it like the same as like Jose Cuervo or something. Like if some dad or mom out there wants to be a total horrible drunk and buy a handle of tequila every day, like you don't, you wouldn't blame the the ability to purchase tequila. You know, you'd be like, that person has no self-control. And yeah, it was made more difficult by the, facilitating effect of having that available and ready at the store but it's still like it's not that business's yeah. fault yeah it's like, like getting it's like it's like the um the, like a codependent spouse of an alcoholic getting mad at the liquor store for selling liquor it's like exactly kinda, yeah. that's the temperance movement right and that and that what all those ladies were saying yeah. they were they were going Lips to that touch liquor shall never touch mine excellent recall very nice that was that was that was in large part motivated by re religious purposes right like kind of living in a puritanical yeah. Yeah, yeah um, that was definitely at the core of it. That was that was that was a big. Part what if of it Trump well. breaks that out like as his next big thing, where he's like, as I've mentioned hundreds of times, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I do do any of those things, and I think it's going to be best for you guys if none of you do either. So I'm productivity gonna will this. skyrocket. <laughs> well, uh, the, the reason why I the reason why Board I asked you guys skyrocket. the reason why I asked you guys why if 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 um if you thought that sessions. Uh, Sessions and Trump would stick to the letting state societies because it's like right out of Nixon's playbook when the when the when the anti-war movement was really ramping up in the early early 70s he used marijuana as a tool to imprison political opponents basically he saw this entire movement springing up and he was threatened by it he even at the time he was saying these protesters don't affect me whatsoever but then privately in his memoirs he recalled that they did have a profound effect on him, so much so that he allocated a certain amount of National Guard to stay at home in case he needed to um, quell a, a local insurrection. Um, and so I, I wonder if if he manages to, because like I don't know about you guys, but I personally think his, the chances are greater that he will not finish a full four term or a four year term. But should he manage to hold on to power for a while, and this really turns into like what we're seeing right now with the women's march and stuff like in the airports uh, protests and stuff like that, that's that can that it's possible that that's a precursor to something much much bigger and perhaps more volatile and violent. So I do see it as totally possible, given his track record on never smoke, never drink, never do drugs. That combined with the fact that if he sees an opportunity to use uh, laws uh, um, when it comes to this stuff as a way to put down any kind of protest, I think he might explore that he's the type of person i think he would go all is like a losing issue at this point in a way like it seems the like modern thing to attack everybody's terrorism. on board with it no the modern thing to attack is terrorism he, he he would label you as a domestic terrorist and then the punishments are a little stiffer he can take he can take you in and do all kinds of awful things to you then some enhanced interrogation uh, techniques perhaps i don't think that, that i don't think that's possible especially when you see like how his travel his what travel you, ban you're in the streets fomenting resurre uh, uh, insurrection Fucking domestic terrorists. Let's lock that person up. Let's have a military tribunal. Ah, they're gonna have to send you to Gitmo. Well, so, some, some, some of them are fucking terrorists. Like some of the, some of the protesters. Not all of them. Not even close. But some of the, the protesters. The ones with masks. At Ber yeah, Berkeley. At yeah, I, I went to one of the airport, uh, airport protests in San Francisco, and a couple of people showed up with masks. I was like. Yeah, fuck. These guys start pulling some shit, man. This is gonna they suck. Have, like bats it's and Molotov cocktails, like those aren't protesters, and that's not at all reminiscent of the rest of those people there. Like, when the Punisher shows up, you know that maybe this isn't the movement you want to be part of, or at least you're in the wrong building. When the <laughs> Punisher shows up, is that what you said? I, the Punisher. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> I think I was supposed to be in building one A. This, this yeah. is one B for sure. Yeah, that you guys have the riot gear. Yeah. Wow. Just tell me. Watch just tell own. me. Just tell me that you guys aren't aren't the guys that are saying that's the left. Oh, look at what the left is doing. Tell me that you guys recognize that those are fucking anarcho-communists that are yeah, specifically. 
Those, I, of course, yeah, those are not like if you talk to an average liberal or someone on the left, they're going to look at that and be like, that's yeah, of course, I don't want that on my team. Like, deplorable. I don't think any normal deplorable. liberal person deplorable. is going to look at that and yeah. be like, yeah, yeah, we sh- we're going to show them by breaking Starbucks, I suppose. Like, no, that's not remnant. That doesn't represent remember, the left. Remember they destroyed that limo during the uh, inauguration and it was what was it? Was it either a Muslim man's limo or it, it was it uh, was a Muslim it, man owned the business that the limo belonged to, I yeah, think. OK, all right. So. So, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. We know that that's not we've seen liberals. They don't usually like wear like masks and like yeah. carry, bring weapons into the street and, and start screaming uh, with big A's with circles on their chest and stuff. Those guys like, bring like, gas masks. I feel like the media in a lot of ways is trying to play it up and make it seem like on the left. There's a huge number of these people. And when I say media, I'm including right, left, center, all of it. And like they're trying to play it up. There's a ton of rioters and you know domestic terrorists on the left just like the media is trying to pretend like there's a huge number of real nazis out there who are like oh sig heiling and everything when really both of those groups are not representing the core constituency of either party like an average republican looks at an actual skinhead and is like Ugh, that's really uncomfortable i don't like I, that I, and then I, the average I, liberal looks at someone the rioting. Media- the media and our politicians and everyone blow so many things that are such small issues in our actual life out of proportion that it makes me wonder, like, what's actually going on? Because the whole terrorism thing, look at how many Americans have died from terrorist, uh, from t- via terrorists since, like, 9-11. And, like, there are so many things that are much more deadly, but, you know, by... Uh, uh, yeah, but, yeah, you have a greater lives, chance like, of being shot by a toddler. Toddler! Yeah, Toddlers with not, guns! That's, the, yeah. like, like, okay. And, and, I don't and like that. Maybe it says something about guns, but it probably says something about terrorism. It, it says that we're not in that much danger, but, God, we hear it constantly. I, I, like, is vetting, it and our, and our vetting, scarier? and our and our current method of vetting, or before this whole thing, was good. It was really fucking good. We didn't have a single... We didn't have a single fucking attack from a from a refugee uh, on American soil since like what, 1975 I read or something like that or like one or two, but none of them that actually resulted in a loss something of life. Like that, uh. but but my first thought, of course, is like it, you know like would they really attack the second they got here? Like if if my if I'm some sort of terrorist organization who's trying to plant agents in the United States via an, Im- an immigration program, this is a long-term goal. We're not just trying to get Ahmed in there to next week and maybe he can set a school on fire. We want to get like 30 guys in there, right? 50 guys so that we could do something big and, and you know, globally newsworthy or something. So, also, so maybe it's a you, long yeah. con. I, you, you I have I, to know that it's preventative as well. Like you, like... It's not a good argument to be like, well, this hasn't happened like this before, so there's no sense in preventing it. You know, times change. Like, ISIS did say, we're going to send people over if you welcome refugees. And so you can't really say that it's not it's totally the same. And, well, global warming's never destroyed the world before. It's never destroyed humanity. It's never made it so we've never been able to come back from it. So I guess just fuck all the green stuff we're doing. Like, it hasn't happened yet. We'll be fine. Well, like, it's global not- warming, you can actually measure the increase and the effect that it's had, that you can actually see the real world effects that's I'm happening just, right now every day. That's, I, I understand what you're saying too, but that, that doesn't that seem kind of reminiscent of preventative war with Iraq attacking them before they can attack us? Like it no, sounds like it's, attack, it's, it's making it more difficult from people from certain areas of the world to come over areas that we really think difficult are, to get into this country though, especially for 90 from, days though, right? Like his immigration thing days, is for 90 days, it's either 90 or 120. Yeah, like, like, I, mean, like I didn't. But, to be honest, it sounded it, it, the the whole immigration thing was like it poorly rolled out, poorly written, poorly crafted. What it it, it doesn't accomplish its goal. It, it everything about it is bad. But it, but the idea of just making things safer, making immigration tougher, being a thousand percent sure that there's safety. I like that. I just hate. I just hate everything that he's done to accomplish it. Like, like it, it was like shit. There's people getting stuck in the airport. He like, rolled it out in the stupidest possible way ever. To where that day that it rolled out, there were like actual people in customs trying to call their supervisors. Like, I have no idea what to do. Like, what the fuck? Do, do I let this person in? Do I not let him in? And yeah. they had to wait for hours. And like, so yeah, of course, the way he rolled it out and the actual plan itself, I don't see it being that helpful. That's why I assume he's gonna step back and be like, oh, actually, we're just doing extreme vetting. We're stepping back, and that's our thing. He and then said, everybody. He announced, like he announced today that he was he's gonna. I, I, well, I don't know if he was specifically saying that he was gonna replace. He did announce in the press conference today that he was basically backing off the original ban and that he would draft something new. I really doubt that he's gonna really back away from it because number one, it 
had a surprising amount of support. I think it was like 40, 48 percent or something like that of, of Americans supported it. I don't know what that number is now. It might be lower. It might even, be higher or something. I, but I'm not Trump's biggest fan. But even I sometimes think like, well, like, why is it that, you know, some people in America feel like everyone has a right to be an American? Like most countries feel like they get to pick and choose who gets to be Canadian, who gets to be Russian, who gets to be whatever. You know, like it, I, I talked on the show before, I was like, what if we replaced, give me your tired, your poor, your et cetera, with give me your overachievers, your well-educated, give us your, you know, hardworking entrepreneurs. You know, what if we were selective on who we brought in, in that regard? Like, I don't know why we have to have like this. Why don't we use the same policy. recruitment process the Yankees use? I think it's what you're saying. A instead of like the uh, who's a bad team, the St. Louis, whoever. Yeah, Cardinals are always fit. That's the wrong. That's the I wrong was, one. I was waiting to see which one of you would jump in first. Yeah. <laughs> but, but wait to see who would jump in first. That was fascinating. Is, is it? Is it? Isn't there a humanitarian dilemma at the core of this though? Because when you have 11 million displaced people in in Syria, <laughs> at some point, I think, as a as a species. Uh huh. The decent thing to do is to try to find these people a home. You know, like I can't imagine me in my well, life. I I can't I can't imagine not having us a, a home. Like I can't. That that to me is so. That concept is so foreign. And when I try to imagine what that would be like, it's terrifying. And when you have like, there's a reason why Germany and Sweden are letting in like a million fucking refugees, because the United States let in like ten thousand. Which is nothing. Well, Trump, also they could had, practically drive there, right? I mean, you can take a. It's closer. That's part I mean, of the reason yeah, people are going it's, there. It's not, it yeah, is. But I, I feel it, like if the refugee like, crisis was like in Mexico, the, but, the refugee crisis was in Mexico, we'd be taking more than Germany. If, if the argument you, was that, really the, that, if the argument I is do. the homelessness well, of it, if it was in Mexico, we'd take way more than Germany for fucking sure. If it was Obama. Yeah, if it, I don't know about now. Obama. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, I hear the, you. With the, Trump, like, the rules may have the, changed. The homeless thing, like, I totally understand and I empathize what you're saying there. We can help them a lot more if we built things there. That money goes a lot further if we build camps, if we build things to help them there. God forbid we pressure any of those surrounding countries uh, in fucking Saudi Arabia to use their enormous tent cities to help these people. Uh, well, where, just, where are you going to build them? In Syria? You have Assad using like literal chemical weapons on his fucking population there. So it's like, I don't think it's a really safe well, area to start building tent cities. Taylor like, was referring to an already built tent city in yeah, there, Saudi Arabia. There, there's already built tent cities in Saudi Arabia, in Qatar, I think. Not in Yemen, because they've been getting bombed a bit for years, but there are places over there where they can be helped, where the money will go further, and it doesn't make as much sense to bring, hey, we can bring 10,000 people over here for the cost that it would take to set up a giant camp over there for 150,000. Should I, we do that? Yeah, just do that. We've talked about this before, but I want to say it now. I wish instead of the argument that Hutch used, be a good guy, bring him in, there was a better argument. One like, hey, Historically, you, know, you bring in these refugees, it grows the economy, they become grocery store owners, they become this, they become that. It's good for America. You know, Clinton, uh, this is Bill Clinton, once said, you know, imagine if we took these refugees and repopulated Detroit, right? And then suddenly that city was booming and vibrant again. Um, in my head, I picture Detroit like Baghdad, like this is not a positive image in my head. Um, Maybe Baghdad's better than I'm giving you credit for. But, you know, they, I, I picture bombings and death and all the bad <laughs> shit that, that I think of with a wrecked city. I love that. I yeah. love which direction it went. Hey, maybe I'm giving Baghdad too much credit, though. Because it'd be rough in Detroit, I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> but, Nothing but, like Baghdad. But, 20 Bill, dead a day. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so Bill Clinton is saying, you know, bring these refugees in, repopulate Detroit. Won't that make Detroit, Detroit great? If that's true, if, if there was some sort of like history or facts to back up this argument that bringing in refugees was good for America, that would go so much farther than, we already, hey, we, we already, should we already, suffer we already, and bring them, because we have so much, we should bring them in and give them some of what we have. But, that, but that's already evident, though. That's it, already it, evident. It, I haven't seen anyone use that argument. It's always be a good guy. I, I don't know. I, I've, I've heard people use the argument that refugees and immigrants and rich and... 
bolster our strength in this country. I hear I, that a lot. I, I, I just, the over argument over that I get from that is more like diversity in the workplace is good. Oh, we have a goal of getting more women or people no, of color or what have you. No, I don't think it comes from that. I think, I, I think it comes from, and, I, and like <laughs> Sam Harris, I'm sure you guys probably know who Sam Harris is. He's got a really great podcast. I think he's written a few books, but he made a, he made a point recently that really made sense to me, and he's not the biggest fan of Islam, but he says um, our biggest ally right now should be moderate Muslims, like what better way to um, uh, build build bridges or form uh, a, a deeper understanding of each other culturally than bringing moderate Muslims into the mix, and then those people have family back at home, and then perhaps we can start. Like I'm not, I'm not the biggest like apologist for Islam or for Me a lot either. of religions for religions for that matter, but at at the same time I do see a value in um, bringing in. Moderate Muslim. It's a. I. I think that that could pay off huge for us in the I, long run. I wish that it, they but started that, but that outlining require, that value. You know, instead that, of you should just be now, good. I, I well, you know, I well, watch. I mean, I, I'm. I watch a lot of news more than you might guess. Like it, it's. It's one of my passions. Just keep following all this shit. And which, I don't see. What channels it, do you watch? It, okay, it's mostly the internet. So my, my sources are like, like this is CNN, Washington Post, like from the left, Fox News from the right. Mostly what they write. And, um, and then the video clips that are like noteworthy enough to get like replayed on YouTube. You know? yeah. So, um, what do, you, what do you guys think about Milo? I'm, oh, let me oh. no, no, no. <laughs> we talk about Milo. Um, he got booked on Bill Maher and I he's think he's been on the show one or one or two of the, yeah, no, I, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, one of them, one of them wouldn't come on cause of Milo. <laughs> I think that's, that's terrible cool that he got on Bill Maher. That's like, that's oh. a big show. I think it's well, great he that he's Carlson on Bill Maher. Last week. Yeah, he gets on all sorts of things. Before this show, he was on CNN and Fox constantly. You but, know why um, he's getting these shows? Because people are shutting him down. That's why he's yeah. getting these shows. Yeah. What does this guy work? have to say? What does he have to say that's upsetting so many people? I've got to know now. You know, it's like yeah. the Barbra Streisand effect. I am. Um, but like, I don't know, man. He he does he does shit though that like really is out of line though. He's man. a He'll provocateur. Do, he, but he'll yeah. go to these colleges and name people by name. Call them, call them out as transgender or undocumented, and then encourage people to fucking harass them. At mm -hmm. what point do you cross that line? Like I, and on top of that, like I, I think he just uh, says some shit sometimes where like he says that he's gay. He's he's I think gay. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gay. He's gay. But then he also, but then he, seems quite gay. But then he also says that he, wishes, <laughs> he also says that he wishes he wasn't gay because it's wrong. And I I, well, he, that. he's a self-hating Catholic. We've all met one of those. <laughs> <laughs> That's every single one, right? He yeah. busts sucking he cock busts, instead right, of liquor. He busts out the whole I'm a, I'm a gay Jew thing, but his grandma was Jewish. He wasn't raised in the faith, and he's an outspoken Catholic. I found so, that. But by Jewish he, law, he's he, Jewish. By by Jewish law, he's Jew yeah. Your mother. You better respect their, 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 their views, goddammit. You, you, you missed that, what I figure a third of it. Are Jewish, but the way the thing I think about him is like what he said. He is a provocateur. Um, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't watch his stuff anymore, and so I don't know what he's doing in his speeches. But I guarantee it's not turning more people off him when there are huge riots you know that are like, "Don't, don't listen to this guy. He's a bigot. He's a horrible person." It's like, does he ever burn down campuses or uh, try to light girls' hair on fire or mace people for no reason for wearing the, the wrong hat? You're right. The height, You're right. It's the height of hypocrisy. Like I, I oh. do I do recognize and respect people's right to 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 protest him speaking, and I do think that students have a right. To to organize and um, express their uh, discontent with with a decision from uh, to let them speak, but as soon as you start flipping cars over and lighting fires, you're no better than or even like blocking your... roads, right? Like if you so much as prevent his entrance to the to the spe lecture hall, then I have a problem with you. You know, you can speak you too, there, yeah. you know, but it, like it doesn't even have to be destructive. It could just be, you. you know, locking a door. I don't I don't approve of that. that that's if I were it him, stops. anytime anytime someone started rolled that thing at, well, like you know, you're only one quarter Jewish. I would like roll out a montage of like Holocaust victims. This mm. is this is David. Morris, he was one eighth Jewish. He died in Auschwitz, 1944, and it'd just be a fucking montage of those. Like, like, don't you question my heritage? Like, like, I would, I would definitely take that ground. I, with that. Always, he's got a nice, he's got a nice little ground to stand on as a a, a gay Jewish man. It makes I, I a lot of the you guys skip out a key piece. Bounce I mean, off of him, a gay Jewish man who piece. likes black cock, right? So now he can't be racist. Loves like, it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. So at all. it doesn't, it doesn't make him immune to. 
criticism. Uh, like, like, well, I, just, he play, he I hear that, you, Hutch, play, but it's an effective card. card. Because it's advantageous the criticism needs six mana or more to have an effect on him. That's how <laughs> good this is. It, it, almost it, everything what, what, I don't like, green too. What, I, what I don't like about him is like what you're saying, Hutch, the identity politics thing. Like I don't like how he was like, oh, a bunch of people I disagree with are, have been playing the identity politics game for years or whatever. Oh, we're all women and you're yeah. sexist or racist because of this. And so but instead of attacking you? that, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm going to adopt identity politics because I hate your identity politics so much. And it's like, that's that's not good. We shouldn't be focusing at all on identity politics. It shouldn't be like, hey, you said something racist. And then he's like, actually, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of black people. So... You know, I mean, look at my boyfriend over there. So, you know, clearly I'm not racist. It's like, no, well, that doesn't solve anything. My criticism like, is deeper. It, it's this. It, it's like I, I've had this knock against, say, Sean Hannity, for example, or Glenn Beck. I don't believe like, I'd rather use Glenn Beck. I don't believe that yeah. Glenn Beck believes everything he says. Right. I, I think that sometimes he's just pushed, throwing fireballs on things because it's very profitable for him. Mm-hmm. And I think that Milo might be I don't know what's in his head but I think that sometimes he's taking positions because it's a successful business platform for him making him I I would guess his book is doing very well right now he's Mm -hmm. getting booked all over the place his social media uh plug uh plug um quote is probably going way up um you know he has a scholarship fund for white males Right. Yeah, he, he did that. We were a little wondering. We were wondering, like, because he got called out for word not. We gave him. You know, it's it. like we and donated then, money to this guy, and by we, I mean his supporters. They right. got him a hundred grand for the scholarship, and he's just hanging <laughs> on to this money. And and of course, his his critics were like, "Where's the money, Milo? Where's the money?" And I suppose setting up a fucking scholarship is just a something that takes a little while. But he did it, so it's it's nice yeah. to see that that he well, wasn't going to pocket that up, money. He ended up doing that. Yeah. He did end up doing it, yeah, yeah. And now I don't know when? if he had. When? Because I. The it's last for, it's in the last had... month or two. Yeah. It, oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually. It made a. It got a lot of attention. In, in I got the feeling, like to what you're saying, Woody, about him, like kind of faking some of it, like. Maybe it was just the conversation we had with them on PKA, but I felt like when we were talking with them about like feminism stuff and, you know, liberal slash conservative stuff, I felt like he believed what he was saying. And then when we got to like religion more, I felt like it was almost like, oh, you wouldn't expect the guy that's gay and Jewish to also be and he likes black guys to also be Catholic. It was almost like a face Boom! You didn't expect that. Look how unique I am. Like I don't want to say that he's the not whole really tone Catholic. of the show changed at that is. point. It just didn't make sense. Like yeah, because yeah, I was his, on board with him so much. I was, I was like, what an interesting guy you are. And I, and I, and, and we'd been going back and forth for a while. And then he's like, oh oh yes, and I'm Catholic. And I'm like, horseshit! That doesn't fucking that doesn't fit together. You're using the European connector and the American like like no, that doesn't work. You can't be Catholic I, and. Uh, but like, in his defense, I know there's a huge number of Catholics in St. Louis, and so I know a lot of them. Most of them don't take it seriously at all. And they so, seem to take it seriously. It's it's like putting guilt on him. He is like the Irish Catholic. He's drinking and beating his wife, and then like bemoaning it. Er, er, you know, in in uh, in, uh, in a confessional, he's that guy. He like like, or at least he he poses as that guy. Because what I honestly believe is he's probably straight and uh, probably you know doesn't hold many of the beliefs that he touts, why, and he's just why, becoming very rich. So, that's why he's so frustrating. Is because straight? he does. <laughs> He does, unfortunately. Yeah, well, why know. not? I don't know why I'm saying unfortunately. Why would he be so he, overt about like hitting on me on the show? Like he's just bleeding gay he, for he, no reason. I don't know if you saw the show. He hit on Kyle very obviously. He's just bleeding gay, and it didn't make me uncomfortable or anything. I took mm-hmm. I took it as very complimentary. Even but, gay but, people but, have but, good but, eyesight. He's the game. Yeah. 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 He, he plays the identity politics game instead of but instead of people on the left playing the Muslim, female, transgender, whatever. He plays the you know oh I'm really conservative or really right wing, but I'm also gay. How surprising! But I'm also this and, and that's that. the like, thing. I like I'm okay with almost anyone's personal belief system, but when they start. Like faking it for money, and I suppose on PKA we play shit up sometimes, you know, for the show. Yeah, but, but we don't create a persona and then like go on book tours, nothing like, 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 like the level that he I'm does. Not like, and it also, I don't think PKA does anything to hurt the country. Whereas I think Milo, if you, if you were like, hey, why don't you push <laughs> this opinion, and then you know it'll hurt the country, but you'll make fifty grand. He does it every time. That's what's so frustrating about him for me personally is because he does make some very valid points that are just impossible to ignore. Pointing pointing out some of the hypocrisy on, I'll call it the left because I'm just using it, mm-hmm. using his terminology. But then he goes on these other tangents that I find to be just like so vitriolic and awful. And like I imagine being someone that he's talking about, listening to that, and then feeling like 
fuck. Like there are people that fucking hate me in this country. You know, like there are people that like I can't be me in this country without living in fear that someone's gonna come up and basically try and I feel like he's playing, ma- he's, he's playing magic cards with his words, the identity politics cards sometimes it feels like, where he will say something that is objectively offensive, not politically incorrect. Politically incorrect is saying, you know, illegal immigrants are a drain on our tax dollars. That's politically incorrect. Saying you're a dirty Jew and I hate you or whatever is is just rude. You're just being an asshole. And so he yeah. will be needlessly mean and then hide behind the, oh, you know, I called you a faggot, but actually I'm gay. And so no damage from gay card, no <laughs> damage from gay cards and skip right to my next turn or whatever the fuck. This, it's it, like it, who said that? just so you could back it up with your own little identity thing policy. he does when you debate with him. He has uh, sources that he'll just, you know, oh, Rasmussen, 1994, whatever. He'll just whip it out. But we did it on this show, but I've got Google right here. And at least on one instance, I was like, what's your source for that? Oh, Washington Post it. I look it up. It's the opposite of what he said it was. Like, sometimes when he's quoting sources, at least on our show, they were completely from the department of Milo's ass. And um, it's very difficult to argue with a guy who pulls a source out of his ass because you don't That's know. That's Tyrone's department. Yeah, you look don't at know. Tr- look, at Trump, look at Trump during the debates. You could just make stuff up now. It's fine. Yeah, I'm surprised. No one's going to get mad at you. You uh, just make stuff up. He won. During this election cycle, I felt like fact-checking played a big role in it, right? And the next day when they determined who won the d- uh, debate, a lot of it had to do with how the fact-checking went down. But in the end, what is probably the biggest bullshitter in the history of modern politics actually won more electoral votes. So fact checking is not as important as I thought it was. Well, that, uh, that, that, that's a result of, um, a sustained coordinated, uh, specific attack on the media. He's been planting the seeds of all media is fake and Mm -hmm. uh all media is fake news he's been planting these seeds for the last year because he got the press was giving him all this attention but they were treating him like a clown and then when his numbers and his political clout started to gain momentum all of a sudden he used all that clout and and directed it like a fucking spear at the media and and his and a lot of his followers take him on his word for it and go he today in the press conference conference he literally said the words russia is fake news Mm mm-hmm what the fuck does that mean? That's not a real Russia news. is fake news. <laughs> the sources like, are real, but the Russia? story is fake. No, yeah. no. When, ha, so, when, so, when he news. said, when he said, all negative polls are fake news. Did he really? He said that. He literally <laughs> he said that. He tweeted it. Yeah, and and it's fucking and like and he has a lot of followers that um aren't very political. They don't necessarily read a lot of the news, and they'll just take his word for it. And I I think a lot of people use that as a justification. To be lazy, you know, I, I, I think that you do have, I think that every citizen here has a responsibility, uh, uh, however small or however big you want to argue it is, have, has a responsibility to keep themselves informed. And, Everybody, um, including when, us, though, sometimes falls to confirmation bias, you know. I, I know I see Fox News yeah, say sure. something I disagree with sometimes, and I think, oh, this is Fox, you know, like. You can, you can recognize it, inherent bias. You can recognize inherent bias, and you can, <laughs> you can still find a hundred percent credible stories from CNN, from Fox News, from Wall Street Journal, from Boston Globe. You can find credible news. You can find some stuff that's kind of salacious or maybe a bit exaggerated. But very rarely do you find an article in CNN that would qualify as fake news. Touch. Like sometimes they have misleading headlines. But give me, find me a story that's fabricated in are CNN. You, you are, just, are you finding CNN to slip into the? So here, let me. Like, set this up more properly in my opinion cnn may have been slightly left but by and large their mission was to be accurate this is for like the last decade the last three months two months um i feel like their mission has almost been to be the other fox you know on on the other side now they just flat out call trump like i don't know if the other news agencies really calling him a liar you know and every day one of the big stories coming out of cnn daily is he lied about this he lied about that this is factually yeah. untrue demonstrably untrue now cnn is invigorated and enthusiastic yeah, that's uh, making him a lot of money to be the to be the counterweight yeah. to him you yeah, know, to yeah be but like i, I the find their position changing facilitators because you know, you like, won't, if you're, you're not gonna find the equivalent <clears throat> you're not gonna find the equivalent of sean hannity on cnn you're not gonna find the equivalent of bill o'reilly on cnn 
like Megan Kelly before. I'd she argue could... Sally Wait, Cohen. Is I was one. gonna say Tapper seems to be doing that on on the daily basis. Well, Tapper, Sally ba- Sally Cohen is a gay lesbian. <laughs> or that's that's redundant. She's a lesbian <laughs> Jew who it defends Sharia law on Twitter all the time. She's a really funny follow, and it's like, you know, that's that is I think that that far left of CNN. Like even on CNN, she's not the norm. But to your point about like the articles and the fake news shit, it is really difficult to like make sure to try in your own head to stay unbiased because it's so easy to be like, oh, I found this fake article on, I don't know, BBC or something. And then if I see an article in the future that confirms my BBC uh, or that confirms my opinion from the BBC, I'll be like, oh, look at that. You know, they, they even, you know, they're even a broken clock's right twice a day. And if I see something from them that I totally hate, I'll be like, oh, well, I don't even have to read that as much because I already know that they posted that fake shit about Trump uh, being a virgin and none of his kids were actually his or whatever. You know, yeah, yeah. Bill thing. O'Reilly is to the right. But when I look at his talking points and watch his stuff, I don't find him to be factually wrong very often. And, and, and I feel like Tapper is the left version of that. He's not wrong. When he's saying that Trump is a liar, like, he has literal lies, you know, I'm like pretty sure Trump you, will pretty say sure it stopped could... raining when I started talking, right? It literally started raining when he started talking, right? He said God cleared the skies for him. Trump said that. And, uh, and they're like, that's actually, it started raining, you know, right when you started going. The opposite happened. Tapper points nuts, this stuff man. out, but I feel like he's doing it in a way that Bill O'Reilly would do if it was opposite world. I hope Bill O'Reilly would call out anybody who was lying. You know what I mean? Like, I if, 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 if Jake Tapper, if Jake, if Jake, I've yet to see Jake Tapper uh, just, just outright lie. I've, I've yet to see that once. I, and I would argue, that's I, why I, I compared it to Bill Riley and not like Glenn Beck or something, you know? I think you can find some pretty sensational nonsense coming out of Bill O'Reilly's camp. I don't think it would be too hard for me to, yeah, Merck, Merck, I don't know, are you looking something up there or are you doing something else? Uh, no, no, no I, I really don't. Fake news from Bill O'Reilly. I really don't think it would be too hard to find something like really incredibly stupid coming. But he's not comp- comparable to to a Glenn Beck who who can really get out there, put his face in Cheetos. And no, I would say he's supplies. slightly hmm. better than like Hannity. Hannity is just a propaganda piece. Like he's just a propaganda machine. Nobody but, loves it, Trump as much as Hannity loves Trump. I was a no, lot of there's Hannity. No, there's no there's no attempt to hide it. There's no subterfuge. I feel like he's Hannity's just, making business decisions though. You know, because for all my criticism of Hannity, being stupid is not one of them. Uh, instead, I think he's like hitched onto the Trump train and, you know, now he's getting popularity. He's riding that out. It makes like 20 million a year. Yeah. Do you guys want 10 speak? tips from Glenn Beck on how to identify <laughs> fake news? Thank you. I <laughs> needed oh this. Yeah, I do. Go. Actually, I want to hear this. So number one, okay. gauge your emotional reaction. Is it strong? Are you angry? Are you intensely hoping that the information turns out to be true or false? Now he's just begging the question. That was all that number one had. <laughs> no actual. Uh, <laughs> this is how you know. Just the fuck do you, does that do have to do with this? Do you have emotions like a human when you read things? <laughs> you know, uh, on very touchy subjects. So what the fuck does that have to do with fake news? I don't <laughs> think Glenn Beck just lie on his website like this. Hutch, let's go to number two. <laughs> to uh, yeah, number Hutch. Two. Reflect, reflect on how you encountered this. Was it promoted on the website? Did it show up on the social media feed? Was it sent to you by someone you know? This is a whole list of questions. <laughs> There's not a single. Okay, sorry. Fuck, this is stupid. <laughs> These are all. We gotta just, just check check the sources. Oh, like if you I have want, a thing. If you want to figure out, like, if someone's fake news, just check the fucking <laughs> sources and see what other publications are saying I, about it. Can I jump Church in? Because this, is, to me, is tremendously interesting. <laughs> I mean, it's related. Like three weeks ago, maybe five weeks ago, Schumer said, "Do not get into a battle with the intelligence community. They have ways to get at you that you don't even know about." Right? And then shortly later, Golden Showergate came out. Side note about that. Everything except the peeing has been confirmed. That's not true. Well, wait, wait, wait. No, they, they, it, it, I, oh, I read it recently. So does that mean that like she squatted uh, over? They only, they only, they no, only verified the whole, the whole prostitute night part. They verified where he was. They verified the people that he met with. They verified a lot of parts of that. But the whole prostitute peeing Obama's room, that is not verified. The, sto- the story that I read about about U.S. investigators verifying some of the contents of the dossier was that it was like a few points that they verified. They, in no way, there was like 35 pages on that report. Uh, that maybe, uh, the, the big dossier. Maybe you must, guys should trust Hutch on this. I, 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 
Yeah, I'll look it up right it, now. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, recently, the FBI released Trump's apartment race discrimination probe from the 70s. Yeah, I read, I read it, too. This I read a few feels parts. political to me. Right? The FBI is not supposed to be a political organization, but I feel like they're like, oh, Trump, did you have another tweet about us? You know, are you fussing about leaks? We just so decided they, the timing was right for a 1970s race discrimination probe to get opened up and released. Yeah, fuck them. Yeah. People have a right to know about that. Uh, so the Daily, Daily Mail said uh, parts of Trump dirty dossier. I'm just looking at the headline. CNN had the same headline. Oh, maybe I'm uh, wrong. I'm glad that you're here. What, what's the date on yours? Pretty recent? Six, six days ago. Oh. Yeah, this is a story that broke last we'll week. with Hutch. Uh, with PK but, they, but, they did, but you're right that they did, they did verify, um, like, this person was at this location at that time, sit, lining up with what happened here. But they didn't corroborate the, what they called the salacious claims about pissing and prostitutes. <laughs> but yeah, the yeah. guy who put that, a guy named Christopher Steele, I think, he was a former MI6 operative. He has a stellar record with um, providing... Concrete, solid intelligence. That's the thing. He's in too. hiding right now. Yeah, he when it came out, hiding. it was like, you know, anonymous sources, screw that. And then it becomes not anonymous. Well, you know, what is all this fake stuff? Then, like, piece by piece, it's getting verified. Um, I'm not saying the golden shower gate thing is going to come true. Do but, we care? Uh, you know, I. I what people are being raped at no, Pizza Hut across right. this great nation, and we're talking about this? <laughs> Hmm. You're right. No, you are absolutely right. In the grand scheme of things, I don't give a fuck I do. about yeah. about you about care. pissing and prostitutes and stuff like that. I I think it if it, if I really don't give a fuck about that. That's not what's important. His economic ties to Russia are what's important, yeah. and, and me, how it affects, you, and the, how it affects how he crafts policy here. Well, okay. that is truly important and consequential. What really what matters is, a- is how is how he crafts policy and what he does, the actions that he has in office. But I do think that a man's character guides that. You know, I, I do think whether he's able. Do you think to- it's a character flaw to be peed on by a prostitute? No, I do think it's a character flaw to cheat on your wife and to hire multiple prostitutes. She's okay with it, though. Well, I don't know where you're getting that. She practically separated from him after the grab her by the pussy thing. She stopped campaigning for him, and she doesn't live with him now. And I the two wives before bed. her both, get, you know, are gone and because he cheated on them too, right? The, I would the be idea willing that, to bet that Melania and him have an understanding. Yeah, this, I, this, I would this, put good money on that man. I, I, he was making, making forty eight so. grand as a mechanic in South Dakota. This would not be something Melania was okay with. But the fact oh. that he owns an enormous hotel and she gets the nicest room in it, wherever she wants to go, means that I think she's okay with her old ass, not attractive husband fucking another girl. You think she's upset when she's like, oh, you she come home and, and then you don't want any of this? Oh, none of this? Oh, she was, she you was, she was just attracted to me anymore, Donald? Oh, come on, Donnie. And then it's like, no, sorry, turn into Quibble Cop pretty quick. But, <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally gave him an extra two teetotaling, and I got them real high for the fuck of it. You know, <laughs> I, I, re- I reached out to Quibble Cop after I saw because someone said, like, so he was talking about you on PKA. And I, reached, I watched a clip, and I reached out to him, and I'm like, I don't have any memory of that. I really doubt that I would have blown you off. And then he said, oh, I think it was at a party. or He's like, I think you guys, um, or I th- he said, I think it was at like a PAX party or something like that. If that's true, there's a very, if I'm at a PAX party, there's a very decent chance that I'm fucking hammered. Like pretty, <laughs> pretty much right away. Yeah, I figured uh, it was as much, I, I, you know, or, or you just didn't recognize him. Like, like he didn't even really say when it was. Yeah, I figured as uh, much. I, I don't know why I brought if that. If I'm at a PAX party, I'm freshly no, out of the octagon. Up. Just fucking. <laughs> like I understand the character thing, but would it? Like I don't. I wouldn't. If we if we find out that he gets peed on, you know, every other Tuesday, I wouldn't care. Like, no, if you, no, like, it's like, not that. If it's... You, you don't like Trump. Like if, if you if you found out that Obama really likes wearing a gimp suit or something that's like not normal. I bet like, he looked good in a gimp suit. Wouldn't be, well, I mean, he's very lithe. You know, he's he, very athletic. <laughs> he he looked like a superhero. What, what, what would make it what would make it consequential is if they were using that information to blackmail him. Then it would be consequential. Uh, true. I don't know if that's true. I don't even speculate on that. In fact, when that BuzzFeed article dropped, I was really fucking pissed that like even I kind of joked about it, but I said it like I made like a couple jokes on Twitter and that was it. But everybody just focused on that when there was all this other shit over here that it's like actually important and um could potentially really impact everything. I feel like what we're seeing out of the Trump administration, right, chaos, lying, etc., is the predictable outcome for someone who doesn't have a strong moral code. And it's not that I worry... 
it's not that I worry about the fact that he got peed on. Knock yourself out. You know, you can do anything you want in the bedroom between two consenting adults. Allegedly. It's the, allegedly. Thank you. Yeah, I acted like it happened. Um, you know, but he did gimp suit, whatever. Knock yourself out. That's not my problem. My problem is that I don't think this is what Melania signed up for. I don't think it's what uh, Vanna signed up for. And I don't think Ivanka. it's what the... Ivanka's the daughter. Ivanka's right? his daughter. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I think she's on... <clears throat> is it a I know. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I don't think... What was the first one's name? Melania? I think it's no, exactly... It was Ivana, Marla Maples, then Melania. Thank yeah. you, thank you. So, yeah, so I don't think these women are signing up for to get cheated on all the time. And I think that that's a big part be. of the why they they're leaving. They are totally him. signing up for it, right? Like, maybe the yeah. first wife, like, back when he was... But, like, Melania is the definitely third. 100%. And she's the no, third, Melania. Number three, she, yeah. I, I'm with you on that. signing up for an open I'm, relationship I'm, where he, he's like, look, you're going to be my wife, but look, you'll never tell Why the did Donald she disappear after the grab her by the pussy thing, right? She was I, campaigning I like for she, him. No, she disappeared after she got caught um, with the, the, the speech at the RNC, and, and there was the it, it was nope. so much like, like Michelle Obama. She was gone after Great that. Great Straight up yeah. plagiarized. But we all know. Uh, can, can we all agree speech that more was than such a dick? <laughs> she didn't write it. She didn't write that right. speech. Just no fucking yeah. way. But still, and, I mean, and the worst part she, she did. She's like, oh yes, I write most of this. And and, and the truth is that like, no, one of your husband's like employees wrote all of this and then gave it to you. And somewhere along the way, like maybe a Russian hacker sneak snuck in and like put a yeah. bunch of Michelle Obama's. She did not write it at all. If you look at that yeah. piece of paper, it's a copy paste of Michelle Obama's with a couple of adverbs changed. If she had written it, it'd be in her goofy ass language with a bunch of umlauts over all the vowels, <laughs> and like you'd know. Slovenian. You know there would be a lot of problems with it. She'd say America is greatest country to ever be in the world, like odd really? phrasing and stuff like that. Really you know? fucking weird for a first lady not to move into the White House. That She's, is like that right? it sounds. Coming up she is the first the person who have to move into a shittier house when they get elected. To be downgrade. I'm not sure that's even true. Oh, it totally uh, is. The White so House, right? it's yeah. a lot bigger. Yeah. There's staff I think it's a there. You've you got know, a bowling house. alley. you got, got a, a private bowling theater. Alley. There's yeah, helicopters it, it, on staff for you. I mean, it's pretty nice. I had no right, idea there was a He has all that, all that stuff in Mar-a-Lago, but, but it's, it's like a playground. It's a resort compared to an, a government office building where they where they handle work and business all day, and it's full of stuffy people in suits, is right? Is she in Mar-a-Lago like, or is she no, in New York? Well, they're in Mar-a-Lago right now, but she's spending her time in New York. Kid who's in, yeah, who's she's in, in who's Trump Tower. There's no kid. Rose Garden. There's no, and, and yeah. you know, I know about the, the school Not year dope, thing, right? but like every other president in the history of, as far as I know, which is a couple of them, there's one more. They find there's a one school. more, yeah. Oh, was yeah. there one other? They go to school in, in locally, sometimes beautiful, expensive private schools, sometimes not. You know, there's places for presidents to live. Well, he's 11, right? Mid school year. Well, they, they, I mean, they He's all become young. president at the same time, right? They, you know, I'm talking about the kid. I don't. I know. Well, like, Obama like, had kids, and his wife moved in with him. Can you Did imagine they, if if Obama would have left his kids in, um, in whatever school they were in, and uh, taxpayer taxpayers were spending what is it like a, almost a million dollars a day? Can you imagine how much he would have been fucking crucified? Remember, if they that crucified was the case? him for like, his travel. You know, like he would yeah, go visit far dignitaries in him, India. Uh, Donald Trump is outspending him at an incredible rate because mm -hmm. he's it's 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 like someone he's already spent like ten million in, yeah. in, in the first in the, in the in the first month, and Obama spent eighty million over fucking eight years. Obama so he's visited spent like India in and met with he heads did. of state, and they were giving him shit about how much Air Force One costs. He complained about Obama golfing. He's been golfing. He's going again. He's going to Florida. Hey, again he owns his own weekend. golf course, though, right? So he's saving money there. We're I not really doubt to... that. No, he... <laughs> <It's not laughs> Trump no, no, has golfed. So Trump made 11 times he ripped on Obama for golfing. 11 times. Out of the first five weekends, he spent three golfing. But well, was it, how many of the golfing out. trips was just him and how many of them was... So I, I think we have to discount one because he's got the Japanese prime minister there and that seemed pretty important. He's got the Shinzo Abe guy though, or whatever. A lot of those, Abe, like Abe. With, with any president, Abe. a lot of those golfing trips are going to be business related. Like Obama wasn't golfing a lot. I don't care about golfing. I found golfing it just all the anymore. time being like, man, I'm as just going to blow working. off some steam. Like the Japanese prime minister or somebody from wherever the hell showed up and they go golfing. But yeah, you, you also, you can't, can't be, you can't rip on, on Obama for eight years. And be like, he's golfing all the goddamn time while entirely ignoring the fact that that's a lot of business related a lot of the time. And rip on him for spending money being like, oh, fucking he bought Michelle Obama, his wife, a cooking class. And she has to drive to Philly to do it. My God. Like, and then you can't just 
switch to Trump and be like, well, he's used to a different standard of living and he'll he'll get it under control. You know, it's not that much money. He's a billionaire. He knows how to handle like it has to. I don't know. It's, it's just not consistent. I'm glad, I'm glad that you don't defend that, man, because like it's 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 I'm not asking you to become like a Bernie fan or anything like that. But <laughs> I'd like to I'd like to think that if I had if, if my candidate was you could you, you guys would probably say that Hillary Clinton was just as bad or obviously worse. I don't agree, but I'm saying like if if my candidate was doing some of the, it the the, the hypocrisy is just stunning, and you don't it, there's like five examples every day, so you don't even get time to. to it's respond too much to, to internalize. To mm-hmm. It's just it's, it's um too much. I think man. that Donald Trump has a, a, but as far as to, uh, Donald Trump's like marriage though, I think that's clearly a marriage of like convenience or opportunity or whatever you want to call oh, it. Yeah. But not nearly as much as the Clintons' marriage is, because clearly that's not a loving like emotion physically uh loving especially relationship those people don't sleep in the same bed they don't have have sex together they don't sleep in the same bed like i find it very parallel to me that's that's what i'm that's what i'm saying right oh i I misunderstood i thought you were saying that the the difference is that one of them is like a one of them is like a political power relationship and the other one is a i'm a billionaire and it's understood that you know and you're a model lady next to me and you know i'm gonna bang other people because this has happened before this isn't season one of donald trump's marriages and if i get divorced and if i get divorced during the middle of a campaign or a presidential (laughs) term it does not look good i mean someone's going back to slovenia you know (laughs) that's what this whole immigration thing's about it's a threat toward melania it's like go ahead divorce me you're out of here melania was touring with him right she would stand over behind him while he did all the talking and then grab her by the pussy came out and she stopped. That's, that's how I, she and I remember she it being a big, big story. She wasn't a big part of the campaign. She was never really a big part of the campaign. She would show up for a photo op every once in a while. But if, if you look back at the rally, she wasn't going with him from rally to rally. No, she was staying at home. Well, then what I read was wrong. Cause it, like I'm pulling a Trump, you know, that's the information that was fed to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, yeah. I don't think that, that I, I don't and, think she was. She, they never put her in front of camera. She didn't really do a lot of interviews. Not a lot of speeches. I, I promise you. I cross my heart, hope to die. Yeah, I was following that a lot. I, I wanted to see more from her. But then, of course, when the plagiarism claims and everything came out after, after the RNC convention, it was clear that she needed to be pulled out of the lineup. That it, it, there was, there was going to be no way to put her back out there, repair her, make her all shiny again, and then have her get some hits. They from put the her team. back out never, there for. They put her back out there for like a day or two when Grab Her by the Pussy came out. She just said, went like, I just think this is locker room talk. And um, the, 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 ho- the, host was, uh, the host was fucking um, egging him on. And yeah. Anyway. Dude, if you. If that <laughs> the host by was the trapping pussy thing, my poor, poor husband on that yeah. bus. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, yeah. I just don't. Uh, I don't care that much about their spouse thing. Like, I, let I me. Uh, let me yeah. slip in here with an ad read. I feel like it's about time to tell Good everyone call. about Squarespace because this episode of Painkiller Ready is being sponsored by our friends over at Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, a website, or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. With easy-to-use tools, you can create beautiful websites with Squarespace's all-in-one platform. It's nothing, there's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. You can, you can create a beautiful website or online store with an, award, with an award-winning template. Uh, Squarespace's award-winning templates are the most beautiful way to represent your ideas online. Uh, Squarespace also offers a unique domain experience that's fully transparent and simple to set up. Trusted by millions of people and some of the most respected brands in the world, Squarespace is used by a wide range of creatives and people, musicians, designers, artists, restaurants, and more. Everybody needs their own corner of the internet today, so get started. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com slash pka to get 10% off your first purchase. That's squarespace.com slash pka. Begin your next move in the career, in your career, today with Squarespace. Yeah, they definitely are the easiest, cheapest way to, to get yourself off the ground if you need a it. domain for really anything. And, of course, our friends from Texture Return. <clears throat> this time of year, everyone is traveling, but there's no way you're going to cram all those mag- magazines you want to read into a carry-on bag. Now you can with Texture, the new app that gives you unlimited access to over 200 magazines. Texture has gone beyond delivering just the magazine itself. They've made it easy to find and enjoy the articles that you want to read. With daily recommendations, exclusive interactive features, videos, and more. Texture is searchable. You can mark what you like, check out the back issues, view, view bonus content. Uh, bonus video content, and they even curate articles and magazines just for you or whoever you're giving Texture to this year. Texture is normally $9.99 uh, a month, and you get over 200 magazines. But 
If you sign up right now at texture.com slash PKA, you get a 14-day free trial. Why on earth would you subscribe to just a couple of magazines when you could have all of the best ones on your smartphone or tablet all the time for way less? Right now, Texture is offering our listeners a 14-day free trial when you go to texture.com slash PKA. That's 14 days to try Texture for free when you go to texture.com slash PKA. Texture.com slash PKA. Yeah. Dude, uh, we were talking about that grabber by the pussy thing. It is so much worse than people remember, right? They think he said, I grab him by the pussy. It starts like this. They're talking about Trump trying to fuck married women. I moved on her. I failed. I'll admit it. I did try and fuck her. She was married. I moved in on her like a bitch, but I couldn't get there, and she was married. Then all of a sudden, I see her. Now she's got big, phony tits and everything. She totally changed her look. And then the girl in the purple comes around, and Bush goes, your girl's hot as shit in the purple. Trump goes, whoa, whoa. I got to use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. Yeah. Just kiss. I don't even wait. When you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Grab them by the pussy. You can do anything. Like, yeah. People forget the fact that he's like destroying marriages for fun. And then, oh, and then, he's not destroying marriages for fun. I moved in on her Come like on. a bitch. She How was married. Get there? Really? Well, what, I think that's... Well, how can you not get there? Where else would oh, you go? I feel like you're so wrapped up in the sanctity <laughs> of, uh, of marriage and, and that sort of thing that you can't even like look at Trump's situation and, and its own for, for what it is. Like you, you always apply other like moral guidelines to it. I, I, I don't think he ruined anyone's marriage by hitting on a married woman. Like, like how does that, d does she go home and go, a man hit on me and he's like, Bang! Like punches her in the mouth. No, it's, it's, not just, like, it's not just that he hit on these women. He was aggressive and way he fucking he over. Was there? Oh, yeah. Well, what not you, just it, not just. I'm saying 17 fucking women came forward. It was hilarious because right after Pussygate, there was a debate about five days later, and one of the moderators asked him. I think it was Anderson Cooper asked him, "You're bragging about this. Have you ever done it, or were you just lying?" And he said, "No, I've never done it." The very next day. They just one after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. You can't possibly sit here and tell me that you think all of them were making it up. That, that, I mean, that, that, you had that's it. That's, women, that's insane. You had 50 women lying about Dr. Cosby. And, and we all know that their claims are fraudulent. Dr. Cosby. And, and Dr. No Cliff care. Huxtable. Yes, Dr. Cosby. <laughs> he holds many, many doctorates that were I handed to him. I think he does have people. honorary doctorates. Many doctorates. A few people took him back, but he has many. Like, <laughs> like maybe a more dude there's, there's so much like in all seriousness to what you were saying I, i'm jumping back in because i was getting a drink but there is like middle ground between oh obviously uh, all of them are 100 percent right he did that 17 times and also saying none of this is true totally facetious like like you have to it is suspicious that it happens right then perfect time this guy's been in the public eye for decades that doesn't I, come I, doesn't come forward but then at I the same time you can't just say that they're all contrived like, I bet there's some truth in there somewhere. Here's what I'll say. I, do I know that all of them are being truthful? No. Is it possible that some of them are lying? Yeah, but um, a pattern is emerging, or a pattern emerged. And and um, you can't... I had so many people in... Um, actually, hold on. To respond to your point, I don't think it's suspicious, because he has a history of brutally retaliating against anyone who tries to check his power or undermine him in any way, he fucking goes hard, real hard. And, and, and there are like several countless documented tales of him um, basically wrecking people with legal fees just, just because he can afford it and they pissed him off. And so if you're, if you're a woman, you don't, I can understand not wanting to come forward when he did something highly inappropriate like fucking touch a girl's pussy on a plane or... Um, uh, Pin, pin a People magazine in, um, uh, writer up against the wall when Melania went upstairs to take a nap when she was pregnant with fucking Baron. Like, shit, she like was that, out of like... service. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> strong but, point, Kyle. Strong point. So, 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 <laughs> All right. So, There's one in, so if, one in that column. <laughs> so, if you're looking at this man who you feel violated you, and all of a sudden he's being. Um, not only groomed for the president, like he's p being put in a position where he could very well become the leader of the free world. I can totally understand waiting until just then to say, actually, I want to speak up here because I think you all have a right to know what kind of person this guy is. I don't find that far fetched at all. And my complaint has never been like poor Melania because I do kind of come on board with it. 
by the third time, and, and forgive me for generalizing, sometimes European women are more inclined to have open marriages. I, I base this on European women I've known. Um, that, that maybe when he cheats on Melania, it's not really cheating, right? Maybe it's just the way that they've got their thing out. But these other women, you know, this defines Trump's character. And a man with his character is having unsurprising results in his scandalous presidency. How do you, how do you, how do you make that, that like equation fit in with Bill Clinton, though? Because we have a very similar situation. But he was a good president. Scum- <laughs> he was a scumbag. He made good Bill- decisions as a president, though, despite his scumbag. Uh, he made a lot of bad decisions. Of him. Too, and, he, made a, he, he made a lot of bad decisions. But he, yeah, but no World War III, no meltdown. Um, like, like we, you know, his, it, tough it, on, his tough on crime platform was not great. Yeah, the super at all. Yeah. It, Na- Nap- like, Nap- Hutch Nap- is completely not- right, although I don't think that came from a place of corruption. It um, didn't come from a place of corruption. It came from a place of of trying to acquire political capital with with other Republicans. I think he was trying to appease. I think he was be. trying to reach across the aisle, much like Obama did on some stuff like uh, you know. But we talk about immigration now. Obama was real tough on immigration. You know, I don't agree with everything he did either. But Bill, but but yeah, you know, like he was good for the economy or whatever. But I I don't think he was a perfect president at all. He's not. I want to money. Well, I don't. I, I I'm not saying a perfect but president. Kyle brings but up I, a I good point. I, I feel like. Clinton did. Yeah, he's a scumbag. Clinton's, he's really, still capable of being one, though, despite being a scumbag, perhaps in his personal life with women and mm-hmm. with these uh, these. I, I hate to call them minor sexual assaults, but he certainly never raped anyone. It seems, or, or he'd have gotten in trouble for that. According it's, to it, according to well, one of them, he did. I don't believe her. And just going off what Trump said and like kind of feeling the vibe in that Billy Bush video, he said it comes off like a douchebag, but it comes off like two douchebags by themselves alone having a douchebag conversation back and forth, right? He was fucking like, 60 years old or something like that when he did that. You do that when you're like 20, you know what I mean? Like, I had, I mean, we, we probably all had conversations where we talked about sexual exploits with our friends, but. I'd, I never talked quite like that, and yeah. I can't. I can't He's imagine. Really insecure. I can't. Absolutely, absolutely. That's. I, I, I think dude, that's if, you, if you watch that clip again, it is so clear that that is a dude who is trying so hard to be like, I am so awesome. I am so badass that these women love me. I just walk up to him and they're just, you know, moist over the fact that Donald fucking Trump is in the room. You know, they want me all the time. I mean, you know, Billy Bush, you're talking yourself up, but you're in the presence of a real man now, a real big handed guy, you know, or Billy whatever. Bush got, got, <laughs> guy, sub- I love that. I slipped by me almost. He got, a sub- he got a substantial buyout, Billy Bush. He got him like multiple millions of dollars for severing Good. the contract. So. I, yeah, and he, look, I felt look, bad for him because he just I got felt that. bad for him too. Because here's, here's this he, I'm, when I put myself in Billy Bush's shoes, you know, he's the host of, I think he's the host of that crappy daytime like extra? show. Yeah, that extra horse shit that, like, if I saw that in the daytime and, like, that's what I was doing, it would make me feel really, really, I'd feel really guilty. Mm. That, like, is this what I'm doing right now? Is watching Billy Bush talk about J-Lo's, like, ass or something? Like, I, I couldn't do that. But it felt, oh, I lost my train of thought. Was it's it so Billy uncomfortable. Bush? Billy Bush, the buyout, uh, you felt like it oh, was Oh, yeah, I felt like Billy Bush was trying to just fit in with the big star that he has there. Like, like oh, so of, sort, of course, he's going to like, he's going to like go, oh, yeah, I grab him by the pussy too, Big Don. Like, I'm glad you came yeah. on today. This will help the ratings out a lot. I need to get, I need to hit this on the Nielsen and they're going to give me a big uh, boost this year. And I can buy my wife that new car it she wants. It seemed like That's what's in Billy Bush's Trump was head, you know? the brain and Billy Bush was pinky, you know, just bouncing around. Uh, yeah, boss, whatever you yeah. say, boss. The same I mean, thing they do every night, that. pinky. Try to take over yeah, the world. Yeah. If you're Billy Bush that in that situation, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. You go. If you're Billy Bush in that situation, and like you're clearly the lower guy on the totem pole of interest for the company that hired you, like Trump could have been saying whatever he wanted, like anything crazy, like even crazier. And I feel like Billy Bush would have still had to be like, yeah, I mean, like that is so true that all toothpaste is poison, and it's a way for the government to get in your head. Or like, yeah. I feel like he you would amp up and, and agree, agree and amplify well, whatever Donald was saying pussy. because he felt. Well, and because it's his job. Like, well, he, he, he couldn't be like, Donald, you know, that is sexual assault. Fuck you. Not like that. But if I was in the bus with Trump, and I swear to God I believe this, I don't think I would have hit it back quite like Billy Bush did. You know, if Trump says, I can do anything I want, I grab him by the pussy, I'd be like. You would have just nodded or something. Or like a look of disapproval, you know, like. You know, but I, she was key. married. I tried to fuck her. I tried to get with her. Oh, I need Tic Tacs in case I start but, doing this. But, I'd be like, Marka has a Marka has a point here though, because 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 his job is essentially is to keep the talent happy. 
in that yeah. moment. He's th- he's not just being a host in that moment. Like uh, there are people that work in Hollywood and all, in the industry, entertainment industry all over the world, whose job it is just to keep the talent happy, no matter how fucking crazy they're asking. You know what I mean? Like if CeeLo is asking for a brick of cocaine, just get him a brick of cocaine. Whatever, yeah. just get get it done. It's like get him to the Greek. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I, I still think he was a fucking scumbag and that like he probably is sort of a douchebag in real life. But he was reportedly really upset when that leaked. Like he was really, really repentant in um yeah. in pub in all the interviews and publications. I'd be that so I read about upset it. if I were him that that audio was released because it's like his show is isn't it? Like he isn't or or at least he's one of the main guys on uh, on E or whatever that fucking show is. I don't really know, but it seemed like Extra, he was. Extra, I think he was. Well, Extra. I don't know. It seemed like people. That, that, I don't like, know much about him. All I can imagine is like they released that to hurt Donald Trump, right? It, it's not as if that was like someone going, I'm going to take Billy Bush down a peg. Watch this. It was clearly a hit piece on Trump. But the person who like released it or sold it to whoever released it or however that, that went along had to know Billy, had to work on the show with him, right? And be like, uh, this is going to fuck Billy over, but I don't care. Like, it, it's, I, feel I mean, not, necessa- not necessarily. It depends on who has access to those archives. You know. Yeah, I, mean? I wonder. I wonder it could, who's it could, the it guy, could, right? Like, like you know, you all, we always or, see it or a in- woman. It's very plausible that it was a woman. We never questioned that. that, though, right? Like, I want to, I want to know exactly, specifically, like who, who went into a computer somewhere, like found this thing and, and stuck their thumb drive in, took it, edited it, and then gave it to someone. Who was the individual who did that, or is it more? malicious in that is there a bigger conspiracy at hand were there executives sitting around well you know i had this dossier here and yeah we have this recording i noted this eight years ago that we have on trump we could feed that to diana she'll want that yeah be sure she pays us back in turn you know the guy that that owns all those archives is a trump supporter so i really doubt that it came from him like he's even He's even come out and said, I'm not going to release him now. There's but, apparently you know, a lot of private and, stuff from The Apprentice that's never been released. And, oh, and sure maybe, again, is. this is just the Woody Lens. You know, he looks, I believe there is. I bet you get Trump, Trump talking in private when he doesn't think he's recorded. And he says some stuff that wouldn't play well on TV. We all oh, I, guarantee, I guarantee you there's a ton of that shit because if you're a guy who's a billionaire and you're on top of the world and you're not thinking I'm going to have to I'm going to be going for the highest office in mm-hmm. politics in the world, you know, arguably like like, of course, you're going to feel comfortable saying whatever the hell you want, as evidenced by that Billy Bush tape. Like he never thought like I don't think he was ever concerned like this is going to get out and ruin me. Like I don't think mm-hmm. it was even a thought in his mind. I think he had a such an inflated sense of himself that he thought he would be a. Either. I, I just don't think he I thought think about he, that because he th- figured people would just protect him because he's so powerful. You know so what I mean? He, the, he really the, is a vind- vindictive man. Very vindictive man. The president's ability to get stuff done is often hinges on his approval ratings, right? You know, Congress follows presidents with higher approval ratings, more so than ones who people hate. I wonder how effective he'll be. You know, it's hard to tell. It's so early. We're five no, weeks you, in. He'll be would, effective. Would, and here's you why, would, because Congress has has had this do nothing, uh, perceived do nothing. It's not even mm-hmm. perceived. They've done fucking nothing for for years and years and years, log, jag, log jamming Obama up. What right, you're going right. to see, regardless of who the madman is in the White House, you're going to see the, the, the Democrats are going to come to him with their infrastructure bill. They're going to say, oh, you want this trillion dollar infrastructure thing? We have a big list of shit here that we'd love patched up, sir, and we'll sign <laughs> off on all of this. And the Republicans are going to say... We'll sign off on all that, too. Just put our pork here and their pork there, and there's going to be a big infrastructure bill. Mm-hmm. The Republicans have stuff they want. Sad. The Dems have stuff they want. And well, that, <laughs> I, I, think the, I, I think the He's only lap that the, I think the only overlap that he has with the Democrats right now is um, pork. like respect, respecting <laughs> Supreme Court decision on gay marriage and infrastructure. I can't think of like too many, big, though. too many other. Yeah, it is big. And, but, uh, but like but, taxes, but, for example. But, he Republic, agrees with them on trade, I think. Republicans are going to use Donald Trump Ooh. to pass... To, to pass as much as what's on their agenda as possible until he becomes such a liability that they will turn on him. There, I don't think there's, assuming he continues on this. That's path every that president, he's at though, right? right? Like, like I feel like that's it, every president. I, uh, I, I hope that this guy isn't a madman. I mean, we're sitting here talking about him like he's like like our president is Kim Jong Un or something like that. No, I would like, rec- like he's, I would he's doing rec- crazy would- stuff, and, and and he doesn't seem trustworthy often. His morals are definitely questionable. I, I would recommend but- that you watch the entire press conference today because he, um, 
I don't. I don't think that that. I think that man is unhinged. And that's I think what. That, 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 that's what. That's what Tapper said. <laughs> Those are his exact know. words. I don't know. Yeah. And it's so crazy too, because then you go on Twitter and then you see the conservative Twitter sphere, and they're like, "Man, he really stuck it to the media today." Like, they see a totally different outcome. Yeah. Yeah, I like it's, it's that's like it's like you see like what we were talking about at the very beginning of the show where you were saying like man the immigration thing and this and that like it's total like falling apart but it just it's almost like everybody's watching two different versions of reality simultaneously where depending on what your preconceived notions are like if you're like me and you kind of like the you know border security thing you're like oh okay at least he's kind of he went too far and he rolled it out in a really stupid retarded way but at least he's kind of moving towards something that he said page. he was going to do and if you're not you're like oh my god it's even worse than i imagine like it really is like if you go to liberal twitter and you go to conservative twitter it's like we're watching different movies in the same cinema not the same like, one did you like obama on immigration yeah, pretty. Uh, I think that Obama got a bad um, name on that. He was deporting a lot of people. Um, he was he was he was he was doing a lot of things. The thing is that Trump is, is talking about taking the gloves off and just not even being polite about it. He's talking about hunting people down like 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 you could almost make it make a reality show about Trump's immigration policy. I keep yeah, reading that he's deporting yeah. at a at a higher rate. But Trump is Trump is probably, yeah. but he he just he just deported he just um there's a kid who's 23 years old in Seattle in a detention center right <laughs> now who was taken here when he was seven years old and has no criminal history. You had a woman arrested in court. ICE members came into a courtroom and arrested her when she was trying to get a restraining order against an abusive husband. The abusive husband tipped the the um. I uh, actually read uh, that today. That's fake news. Are you sure about that? I'm 100 percent positive. Uh, it so th th when it got reported that the person was uh, the the person who was reporting her was the uh, the person she was accusing of domestic violence. That was hearsay. That was not proven. They came out later and said that. Additionally, they left out of that article the fact that this person who was being taken by ICE has been deported six times. Once she's left back from Mexico on her own, then come back. She's been convicted of. Uh, Domestic violence, uh, holding a minor. Uh, okay, in, that's that's good like, to know. Uh, contempt yeah. or something. A there were bad times that this person had yeah. been. Yeah, this, this was a person right? like that. It, it was. That's, and that's and if you go to the if you go to the Huffington Post article for it, they don't even mention the fact that she's a convicted criminal. And it's it's not that she was being you know deported like fuck this person because they're a victim now. Purportedly, it was more you know you're a felon. You're well, a what, criminal. Do you do you support uh, Guadalupe Garcia being deported? I don't know who that she, is. Can you fill me in? She she was the woman. Uh, I can't remember where she's. She might be in L.A., but she she was deported because um, she she had uh she had showed up to her. Let's say she had to go once a year and report to oh, yeah. uh, INS or or ICE or I think it was INS or something like that. Um, and she was a convicted felon because she had been using a fake social security number to get work. Uh, but. But they had allowed her to stay for the last eight years as long as she checked in. She had no violent criminal history, nothing like that. And then she showed up to her appointment this time, and they fucking hauled her off. And she so has two. Was she, she has still two, she using has, the fake social security, or that had been rectified? I don't believe so. No, because they wouldn't have let her stay if she was. Con I really doubt that that was. I the hope case. not. I, don't have a, no. I, yeah. I, I doubt that that was the case. Know. But no, she. So technically, she yeah, she was a felon. But when I think about, so, but she was taken here into the States when she was, I think, six or seven years old. So, like, I... It, so you, you guys think that, Do you guys think that we should be... Do, do, I think a path of citizenship for... for like, it's got to be case by case, obviously, but I think a path of citizenship is... If they're, if they're here, if they're productive members of society, if they're not violent criminals, if and a lot of them are paying taxes and paying into the system, then why would we target them? Why would we target them and not drug dealers or violent offenders? Yeah, or, I think it's it almost be, like it should abortion be prioritizing the shitty people first. Like there's, well, there's there it sounds be like we are. That sounds good. All right. Yeah, and, so and, and, the, yeah, the person, me. their rap sheet from 2013, the person I was talking about, that fake news thing. They, yeah, she, her rap sheet from 2013 was assault, probation, violation, domestic violence, and false imprisonment of a minor. And that was oh. not mentioned yeah. at all on the Huff. Well, that, article. no, the, that's yeah, that certainly like, paints a different story, huh? It, with abortion. At some point during the term, it changes from, you know, a bundle of cells to a person, right? I don't know when that time is. It's very complicated. Uh, some might say around six months-ish because people can get born and survive at that time. That's um, opinion. It, it, right. I don't, I don't know exactly when it happens, but in my mind, it's somewhere in that ballpark. They're changing from a bundle of cells to a person. 
with this immigration thing, it's like, ah, uh, you know, at what point, if they're brought in when they're seven, then, you know, do they get to become citizens? Because really at seven, you're not making your own decisions. If they're brought in when they're 17, you know, that's somewhat of a different thing. Maybe, I don't know. At 18, it is, I think. Or maybe at 18, you're still living with your parents and you're just a well, old we'll see, kid. Well, An interesting I, I, thing we're, is we're discussing this, but Trump hasn't officially taken a stance on it, really, because we're talking about non-felons right now. We're like, hey, what about these mm -hmm. children who came in, these dreamers that Obama was giving this this little uh, break right. to, like, like hey, oh, we'll get you in here. But this lady specifically was a felon. Now, we just outlined yeah. that the Guadalupe lady, and, and, and you know. Yeah, yeah. We, we, she was a felon, you know. Yeah. It, so, so, like, it, you have to find me an example every of some immigrant is a felon. It's a felony. Okay, so so that's that, that's that's definitely one way to look at it, and I agree, it definitely is a crime. But I think that as far as the policy for what to do with the dreamer specifically, we should look to violent crime and uh, specifically and draw and well, gang activity. Well, well, I just told Cartel you that there stuff. there's there's a 23 year old male in a detention center right now with no criminal history whatsoever. I just have any documentation I don't like after that at being all. here. 15 years though 14 right i so would really 20. like this he, could, he was he was he get. was a dreamer he was a he was he, he registered himself or whatever this should really be agreed upon and put into law you know this like don't ask don't tell sort of illegal bullshit that we've been doing for so long uh it, how that's an no obama fault and pre-obama too right like like that's been forever well, Obama had that sort of like, like he'd referred to them as the dreamers, right? He had sort of this policy of like, hey, come out of the shadows, like mm -hmm. come to us, let us know who you are. We'll like, we'll write your name down. Don't worry, we're not going to do anything with it. <laughs> like, like you're the mall, somebody's at a kiosk. Oh yeah, we need your name and information. Don't worry, we won't do anything with it. We'll give it to Trump in four years. <laughs> like, like, that's what's happening though. Well, he, um, he, he, he talked about DACA today in the press conference and he, and he spoke saying, we might have to give them some amnesty. We might have to work something out. But as it's playing out now, you you are seeing cases of people being detained or deported that have no history of criminal violence or anything like that or any kind of criminality besides yeah, I, the fact of being a, an illegal immigrant. But if you're taken here when you're air, seven years water. old, uh, you know we all want clean air, we all want clean uh, clean water. None of us want that hardworking person who came in here when they were too young to even make that decision for themselves, but now over the last several years has become a young adult and is in the workforce or paying their own way through a, a, our no, our. Um, our education their whole, system, and their whole life, education. their whole Maybe. life is here. In the friends, take down. but their we all, is here. or at least we all, should want anyone who, we, it, like, like, if there's a criminal out there, and we have an excuse to just completely remove them from our country because this person isn't even supposed to be here anyway, then yeah, pull the trigger on that immediately. Oh, he, like, like he stepped in gum. That's enough. That he shouldn't be here. He's, he doesn't have a job. He's, uh, he's a drain on society. He's not paying taxes. He's a criminal. He's working in gangs. Like. Send him back to fucking um, Honduras. And, and that's very difficult, too, because like a lot of like that person I was talking about earlier, a lot of these people, you deport them and then they come right back and commit more crimes. Like if they are an actual. Oh, if they come back, shit, oh, that should be the, the hammer should fall hardest when they come back after we've sent them away once. That's because, when we're like, that's when we say, uh oh, you're not leaving this time. Now you stay. Like, well, like, how, like, how does that help yeah. us though? Because you're now, now you're going to end up paying like one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year to put them in a prison or something. Like, like how is that helping? Here's, here's my my answer to what Hutch said. You can't just be against what Kyle's for. You have to be for something better. You know, it, it, we've got a guy who's bad, right? He's in gangs. He's not working, etc. Kyle ships him away, comes back. He's still bad. Kyle puts him in jail. You need a better idea, not just against his idea. Well, I think I already talked about that. I said path, to, path to citizenship. Uh, path to citizenship. Give people a clear path to citizenship. Well, then we, then we, well, then we Kyle, legally bound to prison. Kyle him. specifically said he was in a gang and such. Like, you think a path to citizenship is still there? go? No, I didn't say that. Not for, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying for violent criminal offenders or drug dealers, stuff like that. I, I think, obviously, you need to make exceptions. I'm not for... So what do you do well, when those guys come back? Like, I, I'm, I'm not against... I, I mean, Kyle, I mean, what, what crazy can you do? What can you, you do? You like, you can up, try you and build a wall, but I don't think that's yeah, going to Yeah, if you strengthen like, the actual they southern border, borders? then those deportations... <laughs> if you strengthen the southern border more, <laughs> then those actual deportations are more impactful. Where, it, what, at what the very they, least, if they're going to sneak back in, it's going to be much more difficult and fewer people will do it. But you you're right. It's a really difficult thing. You can strengthen that border wall all you want. People are gonna get in, man. Like you can't stop it. Like I yeah, think that bothers. I mean, one I think time I, I, a wall has worked. Yeah. I think I think I think it bothers people on a, on a on a psychological level. Just the thought of being powerless. 
And so we think of these ideas like a giant wall because in that moment, we feel like it gives us co- a, a, some, some semblance of control. But it do, it's it, it not going to work. They'll either come. They'll either come by plane, or they'll dig a fucking tunnel, or and and you you can't along Trebuchet. that entire border. It, uh, what was that? I didn't hear Trebuchet. that. One. Trebuchet. Trebuchet. What's the fuck is that? Oh, it's like like a is a French seize machine. Oh, God, yeah, catapult. <laughs> yeah, and, and you can't, and you physically can't build a wall that would stretch across the entire border. It's just not possible. It's just sure it is can. possible. We can rise to the no, task. Geographically, it's impossible. You See, you to, don't want to say that what because what Trump says, is... what Trump will say if you come with him with that argument is like they say we can't do this, hmm. we can't do that. The American spirit is strong enough to do anything. Those don't <laughs> listen to them. Like, like you don't attack it like that. You want to say, look, here's why it doesn't work. Most of illegal immigration is coming in on a fucking plane anyway, and that flies right over 40, your wall. I think it's forty percent coming through. A It'll be most plane. after he puts that wall up. Yeah, right? for They'll sure. Stop, yeah, stop uh, digging. I, just, it's just, I don't know. It's not a very compelling argument, though, to be like people will still find a way in. So why bother? You know, I'm not, That's the you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'm saying that necessarily. Cause like, I, I do believe that a nation has a right to have borders and be selective about who they let in. I'm not, I, I, I don't favor open borders. I don't even think Hillary favored open borders. I think that, that quote was taken into, uh, was taken. Oh, the totally globalism of, thing. Yeah. yeah. That's taken totally out of context, but, uh, but, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying just let them all in. I, I, I don't think that, but I'm just saying that it, it's a giant waste of taxpayer money to build a fucking giant wall along the southern border. So. I would think there could be like some sort of uh, an invisible wall like, we do, like, like, like your dog has in the fence. We just need to get all the Mexicans to wear an electric collar, and we could just put these sensors under the... T- t- technology, I think, is really going to fucking like, hold <laughs> off on the wall, and then in like 10 years... You'll have the technological capability to just send a fleet of drones to constantly surveil what's going on. I think we'll have that whole wall built out of solar panels in like <laughs> four years. Think about that. Oh my god. Oh my god. No one could get upset. This is perfect. Call the president. Trump won't do it. The asshole will make it out of coal. I guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, we just pile up mountains of coal wall. <laughs> Someone puts a match fire. on it. Yeah. That's re- <laughs> coal wall has now been burning for eight years. <laughs> that's, that's, reach, that's reaching across the aisle, Merck. I like your, I like your thinking there. But, no one but, 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 seriously, but seriously, we're going to have a lot of technology. I mean, the, the, the world is changing technologically so fast right now, man. It's so fast. It's making my mind spin. They have drones now, that passenger drones. Mm-hmm. They're, they're going to be introducing, introducing them in China. You just get in a drone, and it flies you somewhere. Someone just did that, that, except they're not crazy. flying. They're, um, they're like 285-pound, one-man, I think three-wheeled like little cars. And, uh, one they, American, they, they Chinese. Hold, yeah. <laughs> they hold you and your luggage, and I want to say they're in the Middle East, like Saudi Arabia, but I, I could be off. And uh, they just legalized them. They're compl- like, there's no driver or anything. You just sit in it, and they take you to where you want to go. Have you guys that's been that's in a right. self-driving car yet? No. You have? Yeah. No, I haven't. What is it? Like an what Uber was the experience or like? No, we we rented a te- my my girlfriend rented me a Tesla. It was really sweet of her. It's like I'm I'm like really fascinated with Teslas and self driving uh-huh, cars. Uh-huh. And one day one day she just showed up. And there was a Tesla outside, and I was like, "You're fucking joking me." So yeah, I took it around, and it drove me. It just drove me around. It was Were you nervous a little bit? Like a little to bit, touch dude. It, take control. Like, um, it, they tell you to keep your hands close to the wheel, and if you leave them away from the wheel, it'll give you like an audio alert to get them closer but uh yeah you're driving on the freeway i remember i clicked it on and it was just like wow and then we come around a corner on the freeway or not a corner um a, a turn a little bit a curve and there was a little bit of traffic build up and as he's like hit the brake hit the brake i'm like i'm not doing it i'm gonna trust i'm gonna put my trust in this car and sure enough like it i'll tell you what though it does wait like r- until you're really close <laughs> to a to apply the brake but it's incredible like if a car gets too close to you on the left it'll give you an audio alert it'll automatically move out of the way it can it uses i think um sound waves like s- something like sonar not sonar is that under underwater radar, no, radar. Sonar just means sound it, it could be above water okay yeah yeah. they use they use sonar technology so it can actually see right. what the car in front of the car that you're um following so if they stop it'll stop before the car in front of you even stops and so it brings up all these interesting um, philosophical discussions about how safe is it going to be for human beings to be allowed to drive a car when 
computers can do it so much better than we will. Yeah. I'm, and um, I'm all for it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm like, let Skynet take over. I don't think humans should be driving. They do it way better than we do. That's what the data tells us right now. I, I, yeah. So I'm all for it too, but I'm surprised everybody else is. I, I, I thought there'd be a real resistance. Like I ain't like Not no computer do no in my universe. You know, the, the people in that I universe, see and talk yes. to. I, um, the people that like classic cars and stuff like that. They, well, okay, yeah, I, I think classic gonna, cars are gonna stick people around. People who like driving. You know, the people who like driving. But I feel like in general, no one is saying, I don't wanna be on the road with those cotton picking automatic cars. They're gonna kill me. No, everyone is like, that texting girl is gonna kill me. The automatic car stops all the time. Yep, that, yep. And, and, and it's apparently they do a good job with um. Uh, pedestrians, you know, motorcycles, uh, like all those like corner cases that you might think they could we, mess uh, up on. And and I just it, like GMO, Europe is not down with like modified fruit and shit like that. And yeah. and to me, I'm like, are they right or are they just kind of anti-future? But yeah, cars, anti-future. it seems like everyone is okay with driverless cars. Everyone can't. We wait. went to when we were in Denver. We rented a Tahoe, and it's certainly nothing like a Tesla, but it does have <laughs> a few little abilities. So, for one thing, if it senses that you're drifting out of your lane, mm-hmm. it will fight you. It will fight you. And I'm, I'm just like, that. no, I do want to fucking change lanes. I do. If, the ass um, vibrations. <laughs> there are ass vibrations. If 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 there is a problem on your right or your left, it'll vibrate that ass cheek and i'm like oh what is it oh okay don't steer into that guy and then like if it thinks that i'm going to rear in somebody first it starts vibrating and flashing lights and then i think it literally braked me at one point because i was just i was like let's see what will happen it was uh, they they vibrate your ass so hard like if in it if you're a lady with a ass vibrating tahoe take it through a car wash you'll thank (laughs) me later (laughs) <laughs> I, I, um, you, I drove a, guys... a Kia that had a similar thing to Kyle. And uh, it was, you know how it like fights you? If you use your yeah. turn signal, it lets you turn. So, I figured. Yeah. And um, the, the thing about not hitting someone, that, that was active, uh, her cruise control, I think it would just turn off and hit the brakes. You know, the, it wouldn't keep up with them or anything. But yeah. uh, it was really cool. And, and like a hope. I don't know if she drove it or just like experienced it, but she's like, I want that in my car. You know, I could use all these assistance and she didn't get it, but, um, <laughs> we just, we just, we just, but it got a real thick car. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> we just got a car with air with like, it literally Lots has like airbags. 19 airbags or 22 airbags. Honey, we're going to tr- forget about trying to prevent the eventual crash. We're going to deal with the, the crash that's coming. Okay. Yeah. Like you don't need sensors. You need airbags. My daughter but, drives a helmet. Volvo. You got your helmet on? <laughs> like she's, what? She calls you. She's driving. Do you have your helmet on? <laughs> <laughs> What do you guys think of um, a basic universal income? The idea of a basic universal income—it's uh, definitely income. the future, right? Like, it, it, you mm-hmm. know, the core of me as a capitalist says, "Ah, oh, that sounds terrible." But, but with automation and with the population, it's the future. Unless we have a famine or a global war in the next ten or twenty years, right? It just has to yeah. be. It really does, because I mean, how many millions of Americans are going to be out of work in the next twenty years? I mean, it's a scary number when you think that about. That depends how we count they, them. I don't know. They make the uh, industrial <laughs> revolution. <laughs> argument where they're like you know the industrial revolution happened and everyone was saying you know people are going to be out of work there and then just new jobs occurred but that can't just happen ad infinitum or ad infinitum it's, it's or whatever we're like not, eventually we're, we're going to get to a point where there really isn't that much else to do it seems you know we've like, all seen the cpg like, gray video on this all, the, hush the you future too. we added a lever to make work uh-huh. you know oh, no. it, 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 so originally we were all lifting one big rock together with <laughs> brute force start adding pulleys and levers and the manpower goes down because yeah, the expertise yeah. This time around, it's different. No, We're Moore's not, Law is a son of a bitch. This time, it's no, different. Like, this time, this yeah. time, all of a sudden, the machines can repair themselves, and they don't need operators anymore. It, like pretty soon, having a human interact with your machine that builds cars is going to be the real problem. And see, like what happened down in Bay Three? Ah, a person snuck in there and started <laughs> tinkering with the car making bot, and <laughs> it painted them all silver. Of course, it fixed it right after in thirty seconds. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Only 30 second delay today, 99% optimal per production, you know, and that's Kyle, a robot talking. Of course. Kyle <laughs> up the, question, though. the question is, is this time different, right? Because throughout all of human history, every time automation comes around, you know, it, it, it's always been like, all right, so now we don't need to do, we don't need 30 people in a typing pool anymore because we have a copy machine. And, you know, there's always been new jobs coming up, but now it's, is this time different? Well, we, I think we're finally at that critical mass moment in, in, in our technological history as a species and, and, and how we're progressing where 
um, this idea of Moore's law, how computers uh, basically double every year and a half in efficiency and whatnot. We we have now reached a point where they they're going to have robots delivering our packages for us. They have that like the the biggest priority in in um, China right now is developing or like what I what I read somewhere I think was that uh, uh, developing um, the capability for robots to do just household chores. If they can do a household chore, just imagine um, the countless other jobs. things that they could. Yeah, like That's Burger King. Coming. Bur- Household you're not chores have- sound somewhat not- complicated too, right? Like the, the yeah. robots that do stuff now, or right, I say robots, I can't stop. Anyway, the robots that do things now, um, they do real simple things. Take a screw from this pile, put it in this hole, repeat that all day long. Household chores, like you're going to randomly find where I left my socks and get them, you know, washed. Like you're going to yeah. pick up my dishes around me. That seems like a task that's just so varied that it, it's a tough oh, nut oh. to crack. All, all, I think basically it's not hard to imagine a future where all, basically all retail work will be automated. I don't think that's going to happen in five years, maybe not even 10 years or 15 years, but it's coming. And, and, and only... it's, in, it's in sight now. We used to talk about self-driving cars as if it, as if it was like a, <laughs> wouldn't that be cool? It's literally happening. We're, we're there now. I mean, how, and, how and long? It's ha- happening, but like, didn't you expect when the when the self-driving cars finally came along that we'd be hearing about crashes left and right and like 30 oh. of them would burst into flames and then 20 would like the, the the software wouldn't know that there was a lake there and it would just be driving children into the water mm-hmm. and people would be weaponizing them but yeah. no humanity has done like a good thing here and it seems like that only good people are operating them everyone loves them and every time you hear about an incident it it immediately goes to user error or alcohol but or yes. bullshit you, yeah. yeah, there was, there was a there recent was a guy, one. Maybe yeah, you're about to out. Well, yeah. the one that I'm talking about, I don't know if it, I didn't hear that he was drinking, but the one that I read about was uh, it had the Tesla had a hard time seeing what was in front of it because of uh, the sun glare bouncing off of a white car, and it mm. was just it made it it couldn't see this giant truck that was pulling out in front of it, and so the car just went just like right underneath the truck and basically that sucks. I think really the one Kyle and I are talking about. A guy was saying that. His daughter got into an accident in her Tesla because of its rocket ship like acceleration. Yeah. And then it oh, turns so, so fast. Turns out the she fastest. was drinking. She, it she is was drunk. the fastest production fucking car in acceleration. Don't show the fans this link I'm about to send you, but this is a robot. Oh, dear. <laughs> <You pronounced laughs> <it. laughs> See, that's a robot. <laughs> that's funny. All right, oh let, me do, uh, oh. let me do a, uh, an ad read here. Cyber for skin. Watches. <laughs> Yeah, I, I linked Woody to um, an enormous fuckable vibrating woman's ass. It's like the ass cheeks and the vagina. You know what's back there. You've probably been on the internet before. So that is a robot. Uh, the, fast, the past few months, we've been working a lot with Movement Watches. We love them. You guys love them. So I asked myself, why do I only have one? You see, Movement offers different colored bands, faces, and different styles for each of their watches. Movement Watches start at just $95. So do some quick math. You could have a, a couple of Movement Watches. And it would still be a better deal than having just one of those expensive department store watches that aren't nearly as nice anyway. So you could get a blue one, a white one, maybe sandstone is your thing. Whatever your style, Movement has watches and bands to match for every outfit in your arsenal. There's no hassles. Just order online with free shipping, free returns, and a 24-month warranty. So join their more than 1 million social media followers and get a Movement watch today. That's MVMTwatches.com slash PKA today, and they'll give you 15% off your entire order. That's MVMTwatches.com slash PKA. I just saw Chiz the other day rocking his Movement watch. I was talking to... I'm sorry, I thought there was... And I was talking to Hutch before the show, and he's like, you know, I see people with no watches or one watch, and they look like fucking peasants to me, and I don't like it. Yes. (laughs) No, I didn't say, I have a watch. I, got, I, got a watch. I never wear it, but I got it. <laughs> Hutch didn't say that. but Yeah, they're excellent watches. Um, they, they, Woody always talks about They have a bit of heft to them that, yeah. that, that, that feels nice. You, you don't forget you're wearing that watch, and you'll notice if you don't put it on in the morning. Um, I like their watches. They're, it, they're, they're really thin. They're, they're, they're sleek. They're not, uh, they're not like overstated, which is something I really like. Uh, and they do go well with a lot of different outfits. They're currently fashionable. Like They're, they're what you're looking for now. The, I, I, some... I guess I started wearing watches when I was like a teenager, and uh, sometimes I look at my old watches and I'm like, these things look like shit. They're they're tiny, they're slim, they're not what people like anymore. But movement is uh, is up to date. Yeah, let me tell everyone about Blue Apron, and then Taylor will probably be be back by then. Blue Apron's mission. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start cooking my Blue Apron dish at seven, by the way. So that's in thirty minutes. 
That will be delicious. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, I want to know which one you've got in just a moment. Blue Apron's mission, you see, is to make incredible home cooking accessible to everyone. Blue Apron knows that when you cook with incredible ingredients, you make incredible meals. So they set the highest quality standards for their community of artisanal suppliers, family-run farms, fisheries, and ranchers. It's easy. Each meal comes with a step-by-step, easy-to-follow recipe card, pre-portioned ingredients, and can be prepared in 40 minutes or less. And it's flexible. You can customize your recipes each week based on your preference. Choose delivery options to fit your needs. There's no weekly commitment, so you only get deliveries when you want them. Some of my favorite meals have included, uh, or excuse me, some of the meals available in February include the cashew chicken stir-fry with, with, that's got to be main, that's got to be tangy mandarins and jasmine rice. And uh, udon uh, noodle soup with miso and uh, soft-boiled eggs. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash painkiller. You will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash painkiller. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Um, we've been over it before, but Blue Apron really does make like cooking a really nice, fancy meal that will impress uh, someone like foolproof. You've got like recipe cards that, that that's really step by step, and all the ingredients are pre-portioned. You don't have more or less than you need. It's it's a good it's a good service. So I've learned like how to. They've taught they've taught me how to cook, man. I, they're not paying me to say this on your show, but <laughs> I did not know how to cook before last year, and now, like, if you give me a recipe, I can. I think I could confidently. I was gonna say it's a it neat done. service for our demo, who I think of like as young guys, or maybe like just a little, maybe younger than Hutch, even you know, getting started on living on their own. And uh, yeah, it'll help you build this skill. It'll add Cheap, recipes cheaper to than, your uh, cheaper than repertoire. takeout for the most part. Cheaper, oh, yes. cheaper yes. than takeout for the most part. Yeah, it's but you know, beats going to the Olive Garden or whatever. You'd pay forty bucks for a plate that you pay ten bucks here for. I yeah, saw well, you like you I tweeted have... something recently about a meal that you like were doing like before and after. Yeah. Was that just one that you made? No, no, like, no, that was Blue Apron. That was? I, yeah. I saw it, and I thought it was Blue Apron, because I saw the yeah. chicken breasts, and I was like, that looks like those like almost perfect, like in a lab chicken breasts. That well, I uh, we, from- we, we actually we had to throw the Blue Apron chicken breast out, so we had to get those ones from the... Cause we, cause oh, well, the chicken looked we, great. Yeah, uh, yeah, I got it. I got that, that chicken was from Safeway, but... Um, yeah, they make it fucking super easy, man. It's like the the first few times you do it, if you have no experience, you might it might be kind of rocky, kind of figuring out what they're saying. Like I didn't even know what a zester was. Like the fuck is lemon zest? And then, um, <laughs> like the little things like that that you get kind of hung up on. Um, um, no, it didn't. To answer your no, question, mine always no. did. Can I choose uh, next topic? Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, we should we should talk, we should talk about PewDiePie before I. Take off. Oh, yeah, we should. Okay. So that works. Who, who, but your butt, but you, are, you are the host. So I don't know why. No, I no, that. I like your idea. Um, so, uh, wait, well, Hutch, why don't you take over and lay out the, the storyline for people scenario. who don't know? Paint a picture. Uh, so, yeah, he basically he found this service <laughs> called Fiverr. And I don't know too much about the service, but apparently you can just pay five bucks to get people to do shit. So if anybody if anybody knows more than I do, uh, then feel free to jump in. I've heard but, the same. So yeah, he wanted a- to test the boundaries of how far he could get people to go, <laughs> and he ended up paying these two guys in India, if I believe uh, or if I'm correct, to hold up a sign that said "Death to all Jews" and then uh, <laughs> laugh laugh about it. <laughs> and, and I think there was one that said Hitler did nothing wrong, which is kind of like an <laughs> internet meme. I didn't, see, I, didn't, I didn't see that one. I but, read uh, about it. I didn't see it myself. The Empire but... did nothing wrong, but Hitler did nothing wrong. Okay. And remember, that's so the most Wall... famous person on the history of the internet. <laughs> yeah, so, so, Wall, so Wall Street I could Journal be wrong, runs... I read it. So Wall Street Journal runs a story a few days ago, uh, and I guess they had approached disney and youtube about it before they ran it saying do you want to comment on it before we run it and they saw that they were running a stuff and they they went through his videos so someone watched like thousands of his videos so they went through his videos and they found i think like seven other examples where he nine yeah something like that uh, where he'd used imagery or uh some kind of audio clip uh or just saying the word nazi but then there was also he made a response video today i guess there was one where he was doing that with his hand and they just they that considered was one of that them. as part of yeah. yeah. So yeah. so basically, he comes out today and he he basically acknowledged what uh, he's not. Felix is not a stupid guy, and, and like, I I he, I pretty much thought that he was going to do this as soon as it happened. But he said he understands why YouTube and Disney did what they did. He totally he's, he's not dumb. He understands that they have to they have a brand that they need to protect. Uh, but he also didn't appreciate. Uh, the headlines like if you look on the internet right now and just type 
PewDiePie Nazi, some of the headlines you, you'll see are fucking ridiculous. So I think there's like two sides of this coin where it's like, I don't think, I, don't, I didn't really like that joke. He will profit from I, this. He will profit from this. He's too yeah. big not to profit from this. He's getting, more people are learning about who PewDiePie is today than ever would have otherwise. And all of the people who know who he is, all of them, 100,000% are like, Look how our boy is being mistreated by that lying fake news mainstream media. <laughs> like, like, like they got Trump in one ear telling him the naked is the, the news is fake, and they got Pootie Pie in the other telling him the same thing. Perfect combination. They're gonna the Pootie Pie is gonna is gonna Fox is News on Wall Street this. That's what's that's what's gonna happen oh, here. Do they oh, really? Interesting. One of the uh, the first things because I just googled Pootie Pie Googled Nazi just to see it. See. Uh, is YouTube sensation PewDiePie really a Nazi? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's like a, it's from there's a Salon. Million. It's like, yeah, no, of course he's not. Of there's course a, there's a, there's, he's not. There's a, there's a million headlines like that, and it's fucking stupid. At the same time, I do not think that joke was. I I I can I can appreciate what he was trying to do, but. I didn't like that joke. I, I mean, he's, really he's, free, he's, free, he's free to do it. He's free to say it. He's free to make these jokes, but he's not free from the consequences, and he understands that. Like he, I, he knows. I agree. Like, did it offend is, you? I thought you a lot of these jokes I guess? were in line with like common internet jokes. Like Hitler did nothing wrong is something I've heard over a hundred yeah, times. That was a Mountain Dew flavor. It, mm. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, they asked Hitler people, did nothing wrong blast or whatever it was. It, it, it was so a boat. They held a vote. And the internet was able to make that the top voted flavor. Now, they Do you not know they this, go this story, it. Hutch? Like Bodie McBoatface? Like, that like Bodie thing? McBoatface, mm -hmm. except 4chan took over a Mountain Dew flavor list. <laughs> and it won not by a little bit. Like it was like you had to go through like the top 30 to find that one that wasn't Hitler related. <laughs> so they just, they just, like, they just ruin online contests. And I think that's funny Shoot. because the Shoot. reason that they're picking the Hitler thing is because it's so over the top, so ridiculous that they know that that poor guy who organized it at Mountain Dew is like, oh, God damn it. How did we not see this coming? Fuck, we can't use uh, any of this. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's just fun. Like, yeah, so I think the joke that PewDiePie did was funny because the whole joke is like pushing it to the like the obscene, ridiculous limit of like, obviously you're not trying to start a grassroots Nazi movement in India with these two uh, barely clad gentlemen holding up the sign. Like, you know, like he's doing it because it's like, this is funny. It's two people who probably don't give a fuck about what sign it is. They would hold up any sign just for five bucks. No emotion that, on their face. And I really think that that's, that's like the biggest problem that I had with it because at what, at what point does an obscenely rich man paying two presumably poor people five dollars to hold up a sign that's like as long as it is all right hang on they can't paint them as the victims no hold on as long as it is a consensual transaction they got five bucks if it's consensual five dollars for the sign then they weren't forced into it their arms weren't twisted no 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 i'm not saying that they were forced into it i'm not saying that they're victims i just found it on the whole to be not something that a bit I would, exploitive. The, the thing that I found, my, my takeaway from it that. was yeah. my, my takeaway from it was so much of it was internet meme that I was hardened to that particular stuff, right? Like yeah. like Hitler does nothing wrong. I've heard it a hundred times. Yeah, I feel Hitler. like what's happening is the Wall Street Journal isn't like 4chan savvy. They're not. And they the, don't yeah. know it's a running no. joke. Who is so they 4chan? Take it, <laughs> they take it in a very different <laughs> way. Known as 4chan. <laughs> they, yeah, right, right. Right. So I'm so they take it a different way. If if PewDiePie had read a thing claiming to be a Navy SEAL who had sniped 300 people or whatever the rest of that <laughs> copy pasta is, and you know, Wall Street Journal reports on him doing uh, what are they stolen call valor? It? Thank you, mm -hmm. stolen valor. Then I'm like, ah, oh, Wall Street Journal, you just don't know this joke. Right. That's how I took the Hitler stuff. Like, oh, uh, you just don't I know. I think this that's joke. how you should take it. He's he was probably doing it on a live stream, I would imagine, right? No, no, no. It was for a video. For a video? For that's a video. okay. Yeah. I'm fine with that. So he's like cherry picking his best. That's for, I like this website. What's it called? Fiverr? Fiverr. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. so there so so talk walk me through this just a bit, maybe if you know something about it. So there you're telling me that there are individuals on this website who are like, Hey, <coughs> I'm looking to make five dollars. And there are other other individuals who are like, Hey, I got a little cash on hand and they get together and they like go to the, the payers go the, 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 the takers into doing things for $5. How does it work? Yeah. What's the structure? Yeah, that's, uh, I don't, I don't know, but that from what PewDiePie's video said, Man, today, it sounds that, great. That's kind of the gist of it. Yeah. I want to get in on board with this. Like, like, could it, it we like been... influence random people across the world to do awful things? Because I fucking love that. We absolutely can. 
<laughs> There's and the we website. should. <laughs> yeah, finally, I, a use for this Patreon I, I, money I, we've been I, swimming in. We, you should get <laughs> the, the Jesse if, Ventura copy pasta, which is the 300 oh. kills, you know, yeah. of, you know, I'm a Marine and I have over 300 confirmed kills <laughs> or whatever the fuck it would be. But sorry, I stepped on you, Hutch. No, 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 that's all right. No, I, I, I was just going to say, like, when I watched it, I, I didn't think to myself, or when I heard about it, I didn't think to myself, wow, PewDiePie is a fucking racist, or that's racist. That That's not where my mind went with it. So it wasn't like I was offended on a level of, like, like I watched H3H3's video where he talked about being a Jew and watching a video like that, and him not being offended, and people shouldn't sign up to be offended for other people. Um, so that's certainly not my intention, and that's not how I felt about it when I when I, when I, when I heard about what he did, but it just felt like it, it there's you can joke about anything and anything can be funny and some people found that funny i i didn't think that was funny i think that there are better ways to make that point and um do i think like i don't know if he necessarily deserves having his show canceled which i guess like hundreds of people worked on or something like that or he said like 100. being dropped from his M M mcm but at the same time like he also acknowledged like they were kind of backed into a corner. What else were they going to do but drop me? So I, I, and he expressed regret about the joke, and he said, "I wish I wouldn't have done it, or I wish I would have done something different, or something." Yeah, I, I, I think it's horse shit. I, I, I hope that someone else <laughs> pays him more money, and, and, and this year he makes, you know, twenty three million dollars instead of only seventeen. You know, you th like, I think like, he, he will hmm. come out. I think better off for this in terms of. Oh, he will. Yeah, not, yeah, that but. guy. Pootie, anybody who's feeling sorry for Pootie Pie or, or is outraged at this, just don't worry. He's 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 smart enough to realize that this is horse shit and that he's and there. Are, I'm sure there are people around him being like, ah, don't worry about this. This is gonna oh, blow over. You're I gonna watched gonna, it. This and isn't I, a Mel Gibson situation. You're gonna make. You're gonna be just fine next year. When next I was what, when I was watching Pootie Pie, like my impression of him, his mannerisms, etc. I was like, oh yeah yeah, I've been there now. Not at his level. The Wall Street Journal hasn't, you know, taken shots at me. <laughs> but I have been where it felt like I was the center of YouTube's hate. You know, the, remember the video bumping thing, Hutch? Yeah, I remember, right? oh, I remember how upset right. a, a number of people were about that. Yes. I don't think I really talked about it. It's an animal. I woke up one day and 400,000 people hated me. And like all my videos were, everyone is making videos about it, you know, and, and like I had so much, the guy that made the video bumped all his videos for like a year, decided to stop and then made a video about me, right? Who made the um, video? <clears throat> or are we not you, naming? I don't even know. Eh, I don't think he even does YouTube anymore. His name is oh. Ukrainian Limbs. And, uh, oh, um, wow. Yeah. That's a yeah. name I haven't thought about in a while. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, I do remember yeah, that, that guy name. bumped all his videos for like, I don't know, a year or something like that. And then made an anti-video bumping thing just to like get me right and and he like, showed my video getting bumped and and it was actually me and another guy's video got bumped but everyone just talked about me and uh it was hard it seemed like everywhere i went i couldn't like go on the internet without seeing people talk about me that, that's what i was going to say was that i don't think pewdiepie is too concerned about the lack of or the loss of of revenue i if i i, mm -hmm. I, I do think however if i was in his shoes that would be difficult for anyone it's, i don't it's, care I don't, I don't care what kind of an elevated status you have that's gonna sting when you have that many eyes on you even if you know that i'm not a racist to my core i'm not a hateful person i i don't they're not gonna convince me that i'm a racist and and you're the fucking number one most subscribed person on youtube it's still gonna be like that would make my stomach turn in knots people if forget, something like that happened like, to me sometimes they're like ah yeah. oh, dude what does he care he has $20 million. I made that up, but whatever. Um, and it's like, like 120, no. so he's valued at like over $120 million. Okay. Or so, so what does he care? <laughs> he has awesome. $120 million. No, I promise you, like, even if you're PewDiePie or Mel Gibson or Kramer or whoever it is that you are, when you're the center of a, of a hate tornado, like it sucks more than you might guess. And but people, uh, like what you were saying before, it's going to help them out overall, I think. Like, I had no opinion on PewDiePie at all. I'm not in his demo, so I didn't watch his shit. But just from the little clips of, like, the, the jokes from Fiverr, I laughed at that. I thought that was funny. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this guy isn't as much of a panders to six- and seven-year-olds as I thought, Dude. which is kind of, like, what you so, assume. Uh, and so now people, from the get-go, anytime there's another, you know YouTuber attacked by the mainstream media, they're going to be like, this is just the PewDiePie thing all over again. Like... This has it's happened to PewDiePie like a actually, half a dozen times so or more, so it, it hasn't been the experience. But I got two things. Not, one, not um, on this level though. Okay. Um, one, even though this probably helps PewDiePie, I agree with Taylor. 
I bet if he could like go back in time and make it never happen, he'd pick that 10 times out of 10. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the other, you, you were saying like, oh, he doesn't just tailor to uh, six-year-olds, et cetera. Um, he has done that brilliantly. Uh, PewDiePie's videos were not my cup of tea three years ago, right? Watching uh, scary or playing scary games and overreacting and stuff like that. Like, you know, I'm not saying they're bad videos. I'm saying I'm not as demo. You know, when someone's really popular and I hate their stuff, that just means it's not for me, right? Clearly it's good. The people have voted. Um, but he's transitioned, man. Like his subscriber base has aged and brilliantly, much better than me, he's modified his content to fit them. So you can watch PewDiePie from the time you're like, I'm making up numbers, 12 to 20. And right now he does like insightful, thoughtful stuff. And suddenly I become his demo. And I think that's pretty neat. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've, uh, he's, 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 <coughs> he's turned a corner. The, like I hadn't watched him for a couple of years and then I watched a few videos of his recently and you can tell that he's um, actually putting some thought into what he's doing. And it seems like he has a goal with respect to using his influence. You can make an argument that maybe he doesn't always use it the best way and that really depends on who you talk to. But I do appreciate the fact that he's not, he, he didn't get complacent and he's actually trying to accomplish something, you know? Like that would be really cool if he could transition from the scary game over reactions to something like like George Carlin and ha like his social commentary. And, 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 and the sort of insight that that can provide someone. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I respect the fact that he kind of lays it out there on the line right now, for sure. Yep, yep, yep. He's like, I, I've, I'm just on his vid stats page. Obviously, it's hard to tell the subscriber impact because they do that thing where they randomly get rid of like 100,000 of them and then they come back. Mm -hmm. But even just normal days, he's getting like 9 to 12 million views a day. A day. Wow. That's insane. Like, is there anybody who's even close to that on YouTube? I don't know. I, I think he's number who's one. not one of those like Vivo channels well, or something. Quavo Cop did 130 million last month. So yeah, pretty close. Uh, that's like million. that's, that's not half. 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 Yeah. That's not even half. That's of his best ever. But yeah, I. Um, yeah, but it's, it's close. I, I wonder mean. what motivates him. Like, like so I, I've always found this to be interesting, right? Like, like, at Cisco. Uh, people's stock options did so well. There were like management seminars and stuff on how to motivate people who didn't need money. You know, like how do you get a guy to keep working, especially over time and, and like really hard when, you know, he's got like a couple million in his pocket and like he, he has fuck you money, right? PewDiePie has, F you, PewDiePie can live an amazing lifestyle forever. And why does he keep making daily videos or more? You know, I mean, it, he's just striking while the iron's hot, probably. Like, but why at 120 this million, he could. if I had 120 million, I'll tell you what I'd do: I'd buy a motorcycle and a paramotor and fuck about daily. <laughs> that that would be what I'd. Uh, that's what I would do. But, but if you knew that you could, you only need two million for that. Make, if you knew you could <laughs> video and make another hundred grand or fifty grand, or whatever it is, you would. It would pain you. Like, I know you, it would pain you to sit there and be like, I'm going to go out and ride my motorcycle. You know, well, or you could make two videos today and make mm. enough to buy 10 of those motorcycles if you want you to. You are like, kind of like, right. I, I People get addicted it. to more and their line moves. Their, their line does. moves as, as their income, income I, threshold. I moves, talk like know? I semi-retired voluntarily, but the truth is, you know, Woodycraft was on the decline and Mojang was, you know, not letting servers sell the things they used to sell. And when I changed from YouTube to Woodycraft, Woody, Woody Gamertag was kind of on the decline, you know, and that, that's why I went to Minecraft. So it's not as if I'm doing what I say I would do, which is like, you know what? That's enough. Time to go. Uh, I, I, instead, it was like, all right, time to transition or stop or whatever. I didn't just yeah. leave a lot of cash I think, on the I think table. We, all, we, all t we all tell ourselves or we all told ourselves, you know, when, when we were younger, like, if I had a million dollars, I would just I'd be good. But really, like, you're... you're uh, the line moves. It, 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 it's like a drug, man. It's like it doesn't get you high like it used to. Like the thought of, you know. Right. You get that. I remember. Well, I remember when I when I when I got my first payment. When I got my first payment from Machinima, I was like, "Fucking Daddy Warbucks over here! Are you kidding me? I'm good." And then, you know, now that number doesn't does excite you. No, if that not, came a, in not for at a month all. Of work, I mean, you would be very panicked or upset and be like, "What the fuck." Yeah, I, definitely. Yeah. I, 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 this is I, some comedian said it, but he was like, if Bill Gates woke up tomorrow with Oprah money, he'd jump out a window. 
<laughs> That's really funny. I yeah. never put it in my head like that. That if he woke up and was twice as rich as Oprah, he'd be having like a, a shaky breakfast, like calamitous. <laughs> like, oh my God. Oh my God. Melinda, what the fuck are we going to do? <laughs> Shut down the foundation. Been- Got the <laughs> foundation. Got it. <coughs> fuck. Fuck Valeria. Okay. Fuck it. <laughs> the new, the new tagline for the Bill and Melinda Clinton Foundation, or, or Bill and Melinda Clinton, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, is just you've had your fill. <laughs> <laughs> Donate <laughs> here. Bring it back. They start collecting money instead of giving yes. it away. <laughs> Selling water. <laughs> uh, uh, what do you guys think about? Um, uh, if I could just. Change topics real quick. Uh, Drifter made a video today because uh, I posted something where there was a lawmaker, I think, in Alabama that tried to pass a or that's trying to pass a bill that would essentially decriminalize any um, accidental injury or death that would result from hitting a protester with your car if they're blocking traffic. Did you hear about that? Accidentally hitting a protester, but the challenge is accidentally hitting a Whoops. protester it doesn't mean you can mow a crowd down that's quite obviously well i accidentally there. ran into him and then i accidentally backed up and then i accidentally went forward and i accidentally backed up as you <laughs> can imagine after i impacted mr jones the first time i wanted to see what that big thump was so i oh, put her in reverse and, that well, we, already, oh. you know it. we already we already have criminal liability laws that cover accidental deaths so the the point of the bill oh i'm sorry this was in um South Dakota, I think. Where's this uh, Dakota Access Pipeline? Is that South Dakota ah, or North Dakota? I, I think it's think North. It's, it's one of them. It's it's in that state, and and I think it was done as in 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 response to that. And uh, it it would like the the bill's author even said its intention was to shift the burden of proof to the protester instead of the driver. So the protester has to prove that it was intentional rather than the br- driver as has to. It prove should be. It was, well, <laughs> anyways, so yeah, Drifter made it. So Drifter made a video and like. There, are, I don't know if it's just kids. I have to assume a lot of them are just kids. But like, there were so many people that were like, if they're in the way, fuck them. I'm running them over. And they, I don't know if they're shit posting or they actually believe it. But it's so crazy to me that in 2017, like, protest is a really fundamental part of this country. It's what makes this country great in my mind. And um, I don't necessarily think that blocking highways or roads is the best way to get your point across. But to but to seriously like hop in my mentions and advocate murder, or no, potential it's not murder, murder. But 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 I don't feel any. I don't feel bad when they get when they die because they were blocking a, a highway that that ambulance could have been for me that you're that you're slowing down. Or let's forget people about use an that people maybe use that example. But there's not a single time that anyone sure it died. has. Oh, it totally has. There's been plenty of ambulances stopped. I don't know if people have died, but it's certainly. One, but, but 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 you don't but, need but, someone. But for the most but for the but for the most part the for the most part when there's ambulances they let them through. You don't see that making headlines though. Uh, and, and what about the it, things it, other than ambulances? They slow down. What if they're slowing down some medicine? What if they're slowing down a guy who's driving a, a Ford Taurus with an organ in it? Like it's just not a good idea to shut down our highways and and trap and and our traffic systems because I, you know again, lives I, uh, are dependent on them. Again, I tend to agree with you there, but you, I think you're cherry picking like the most extreme possible hypothetical to make your point. And really, the point should be: it's never okay to fucking murder someone. It's never you know okay. What I mean, to like it's not. Well, it's ne- I don't no, know if it's never I don't know if it's I don't know if it's never okay to murder someone because if someone's trying to come at you, but it's never okay to murder. it's never okay to to advocate running someone over with your fucking car, which is not what, on purpose. Not yeah, on not purpose. On, no. The, the I only mean, time I would do it an like, accident is an I accident. Seen, what are you gonna do? Exactly. Yeah, that's what the lawmaker said. That's what his bill is called. <laughs> yeah, it's well, an accident. But I wish I understood the laws that were there beforehand. Like that's what I want to know. Was there something that needed to be fixed? Like, it, it, for me, there's this parallel to hate crimes. I very much hate hate crime bills because they're already crime bills. Why double down when it's like a black and a white guy or an Asian and a black guy? I don't care what they are. But why are the rules different for your motivations? All crimes are hate crimes. You know, if I beat some guy up and he's also white, I get off scot free as opposed to if he's black. Like, I, I think that changing the law based on why you're so upset is silly and circling back to the um this thing where you can apparently accidentally hit protesters what was it like before because i'm guessing you probably got off scot-free for accidentally hitting people before you know if i stand in the road in the dark at night it's redundant and, and i hit a guy what happened well well they they, they have laws that help help us understand 
I mean, it, it depends on whether or not criminal neg negligence was involved. If it was an accident because there was poor lighting or whatever, obviously that's That's where I'm at. What if the guy's dressed darkly um, and he's standing in an area that's not well lit and I hit him and I'm like, I'm so sorry. I, I never thought someone was going to be standing in I-85. I was going 70 miles an hour and bam. Right? Well, the author, of the, the author of the bill even said it's basically <laughs> like a giant fuck you to protesters. Like if you're going to block the road, then I'm going to make it easier for people to... to no, not I, serve jail time if so they like he's trying what i'm saying it, in a long-winded way is my opinion on the bill is dependent on the change yeah. that it enacts it, honestly it seems like a bill where it's like hey do your protesting not on the road don't protest in the road because we're now making it so that it's going to be harder for you to prove that someone did it maliciously like i would well, never no, run to me someone. like he's saying That's to awful. his voters he's saying to his voters hey look you no longer have to worry about driving home from work after putting a hard day in and hitting a guy without a job who's for some reason decided to shut down the interstate during tonight because he doesn't have to be at work tomorrow and Isn't there's like 30 guys in the interstate shutting it down because of their beliefs rather than like getting a permit going to the public square during the daytime when other yeah. people would see them shutting and maybe their message gets across i mean you can, hit you, him, imagine, can you imagine a bill like this being passed when the civil rights movement was happening when they were watching marching across the selma bridge or when they were um but they uh, got permits they were, for those marches, didn't they? Yeah. Not, not always. I don't think well, they always got people, permits. Those I mean, were illegal it, protesters. And, 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 <laughs> but, but that doesn't justify what, putting their life in jeopardy because you're inconvenienced. I get I, that. It's, not putting, it's, I, I, hold on. I, it's not putting your life in jeopardy. If I go and stand on a road at a protest, and on a public road where I know cars are coming, that's where cars tend to be, like I'm not putting – like I am being, I'm being profoundly irresponsible – and stupid if I'm foisting the entire onus of responsibility onto the people who are supposed to be on the road, the drivers. This is, this is the, well, this, this, this is the situation that we're talking about. You're, you're in a car and you're pulling up to uh, a, a street. You go to make a right turn and there are fucking a thousand people there. Do you turn around or do you start honking on your horn and slowly trying to plow you, through that you, crowd? You can't, you can't turn around. You're on a highway. There's people behind you. What are you going to do? On a highway? I mean, like, that happens. It's not as common, but it, it does happen, and I'm not a big fan of that. But it, it, like, are you telling me that the that that it's that it's okay to to drive your car into a crowd of people? No, no I'm saying I'm saying that what the I'm person saying is I'm that saying that if that happens, the person who we should really start looking at is the person who was in the highway. We should look at them first, not the driver of the car. Because yeah, if, the driver of the car that, that, was doing what case he, by, let's put it in the water. Case. Let's say they were protesting in the water and some boats were chopping people up. Like we wouldn't be like, hey, they're, ex they're exercising their rights. When you're out on the waterways, you be looking for protesters out there, you know, bobbing up and down because that's where they like to do <laughs> the it. They like to judge on the waterways. Keep in mind in this though, it, like I, I feel like we need to remember <laughs> that the driver <laughs> is a non-participant in this whole thing, right? Like it, it, it's almost go. as if we're looking at this and we're like, home. well, there's protesters here and there's anti-protesters, you know, in their cars. No, there's protesters here and people who just want dinner, you know, on the other side. And you know, it's not or like they're a, out there. Or make a plane or whatever. Like, yeah, I get it. But mm -hmm. it's, it's, this it's, is, I mean, prote protest, I think, I don't know about how you guys feel about it. I view protest as something that's sacred. Uh, that's, it's a it's sacred like American pastime. I, 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 it's I a, it's a really big part of, a really you, big part of why we are the way that we are. And, it, and it, <laughs> like the, the rights, the rights that we enjoy today are, are, are rights that people bled and died for before. I mean, you look at like the Kent State Massacre. You had fucking National Guardsmen shooting protesters, peaceful protesters. We don't want to go back to that. We, like, we don't I, yeah. ever want to go yeah, back to that. Definitely not. But I don't think that this is the step towards going back to that. I think this is a step where they realize there's huge numbers of people block, blocking public roadways. And I've watched enough videos online to know that if you try and inch forward respectfully to get past these people, they don't move. They will not move. You're stuck exactly. there. Your right. entire yeah. evening yeah. is ruined. All your plans, anything you had to do, a guy in an ambulance behind you, anything that's happened, it's stuck because they need to throw a tantrum out there for whatever reason. It doesn't matter, but you're not going like, to... I can't a imagine a stupider way to try and get people in the middle to take your side than to cause gross inconvenience to everyone around you. Nobody who's on the fence about that pipeline it's, it's is waiting a protest line thinking, you know what? Actually, they're right. I'm going to switch. I'm, I'm on these people's side. They're correct. The way that they are standing in the middle of the road for hours blocking us, like, it's it's definitely not good. Nobody should be able to just run their car into protesters, but to pretend that there's not some onus of responsibility onto the people clogging a public roadway and treating them as, you know, just 
you know, pat on the head, children, they don't know what they're doing. They're just, you know, they, they, don't, they don't even realize the danger they're putting themselves in the middle of that road. Like, that's silly. Like, they know what they're doing, and you shouldn't be allowed to protest in the middle of a road. Like, it's not just, safe. But, but that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean, okay, we're, we're talking, I'm, it, like I said before, an accidental, if you, if you hit someone on accident, obviously that's an accident. It has to be treated <laughs> totally differently. We're yeah. talking about people that will, like, there was a case, um, I can't remember what city, but there was a guy who was circling around the block, instigating protesters, drove into the crowd slowly, started honking on his horn, and then when people got... They didn't start, like, punching him or anything like that, but he ended up plowing into this crowd of people, and two people got seriously fucking hurt, um, and, and, and that guy went to jail. And um, The incident that I saw was they were, they were protesting on the side of a, a, a highway. One of the guys finally gets fucking hit, of course. They drag him to the side. The car slows down and stops maybe 100 yards away. They were going 50 because that's the speed limit, and they want to check to see if this in, poor individual they just hit in the darkness of the night is hurt. So the crowd starts shooting handguns at the car. At her. You know? Like, yeah. like, like I saw yeah. it. You know? yeah. And, 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 well, yeah, you're going to find really extreme examples like that. You just named one. Yeah. Or, you'll, or, or another example, and, and Reginald Denny. In Hutch's There's case. Reg Reginald Denny. There's I, another one. Yeah, in Hutch's case, I don't think that law helps him. You know, the guy apparently was circling around not looking in, for not, trouble. You know, not, I, I in think his, that, not in his case, though, but it raises some pretty morally dubious uh, you know dilemmas. What? I, when, I don't know when it comes because what if because what if I said because I could just hit someone and say it was an accident. Hold on, what's more? What's <laughs> I, more I don't common? know about other We're people. To really, I, oh, go ahead. I'm somewhat clouded by the fact that there haven't been any protests lately that really caught my fancy. Right? You know, like who's protesting now? The the girls with the pussy cat hats on or whoa, whatever. Whoa, whoa, whoa! But those. Well, let me the, the the Black Lives Matter stuff. Typically, they're protesting on behalf of someone who really didn't deserve it. Um, you know, doesn't deserve your good thoughts and goodwill. Um, I, 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 if there was a movement that I was on that side of, I wonder if I'd be more pro protester. The Maybe. protest, the, the protest that problem. happened the day after the, mar the the inauguration was the biggest protest in our country's history, and I thought it was a testament to. I, I you know, decent, I kind of like that decent, one too, but I hate that it was like Women's be. March Day or something. Like, it, you didn't have to be a woman to go. I mean, that's you just, didn't it, have that's to just, be, but that's what it was. And and well, organi organize a men's a men's protest then. You know, like there the, were, oh, uh, that would be looked on fondly. Oh, mine. <laughs> yeah. We're not allowed to have a men's protest. You know this. Oh. I think it depends. I think it really depends. On if, if you, we identify. If you, if you started, it depends if you started, on if we're identifying or as a man or if we have dicks. That's what it depends on. If, if you started a men's protest tomorrow uh, passionately denouncing circumcision, I would be right there on the picket lines with you blocking traffic. I, want I, I think it's cleaner, man. I really like it traffic, better. Not blocking though, because we, we want people on our side. <laughs> I will thing. block traffic. We, we, to we told you, you no, know, you don't want to block. See, this is the thing I don't get about the protest. It's like, I will block hey, we need to get to more people. Dicks. Yeah, but it's not going to protect dicks. If anything, someone who doesn't give a fuck about circumcision is going to spitefully be against you because they're going to be like, I don't know what these people are talking about, but I don't want to be on the side of someone who is engaging in blocking a road. Like, I, it just surprises you guys, me. Like, you don't you have, like, talking, You guys nose. are talking about the harsh reactions, but there are a lot of people that live in big cities that view protest as something sacred, and they— um. They might feel inconvenienced in the moment, but you heard stories of planes that had to be diverted from JFK Airport in New York because of the airport protests, which mm -hmm. I actually went to one of that uh, the one in San Francisco, and it was. So but but there were people that were cheering it when they when they announced that they had to reroute it because and, and those people, people were traveling for because they were upset. Way more oh. people were upset and not cheering because they're like, huh, I shouldn't berate this big group of people because I'm not on their side. I'm just going to quietly and go to left the left violent and try so. and get on my plane and not make a big scene. Like that's I what thought, most I thought were I doing. thought that what happened in the airports was a really beautiful thing. And I think it, and I think it affected positive change. I think it, it let the administration know that they can't just get away with shit like this. And what happened was wrong. Like we were treating law abiding residents of this country, green, green card holders, things like that, treating them like subhuman, treating them like like terrorists and i think that that's oh, yeah. wrong it'd just be the better if the victims of the protest really... were the people on the other side of the protest right yeah it seems like the victims of the protest are some poor traveling salesman wishing he was home 
Yeah, because no, we like, need to get caught I, up and think that there's a huge side over here and a huge side over here, and that's everyone. Everybody's got a really passionate view on everything. But really, yeah. most people aren't that into it. And so the m overwhelming majority, I fucking guarantee you, of people who come across those airport protests are just like, God damn it, like, what is this about? I got here I get it, but early. I'm still not going to be able to make my flight. Like, this is what, what are they arguing about? What are they, like, it, it turns I, most people off when you inconvenience them, and it's not a good way to, you know, you catch more flies with honey. But this is this is this is what happens when you live in a free and open society. And it wasn't that long ago when we were ruled by uh, by kings and despots and rulers who had to t who told you if you fucking do something like that, I will and they would just kill you. So to 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 go from that to a place where we're at now, not just in the United States but all over the world, where people have enjoyed these popular uh, revolutions and you have governments for the people by the people. This is a byproduct of that. It's an inevitability when people feel like their rights are being infringed, they will take to the streets. And I think that that's something that we should celebrate. When the Tea Partiers were protesting, I never in my mind once thought, I wish they would fucking just go home. I didn't agree with what they were saying, but I was... I, I like living in a country where you can do that. I have no problem with like normal everyday protests. Yeah, I don't not. like seeing the anar the uh, the anarchists out there with masks though, and I don't like seeing the people who stop uh, the flow of traffic illegally because you, you, that's just not the right way to do that. Like like you're never you're never going to turn the wheels in the direction you want them to 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 go doing it out in a highway and, yeah, and, and, uh, because yeah. there are people who will use the arguments that, that, that the three of us use, you know, the, the ambulance thing. And maybe it hasn't specifically happened. Maybe there isn't a poster child for protesters shutting down traffic and, a, and someone dying in an ambulance, but it'll happen because they keep doing it. It'll happen. Okay. Eventually a, a child will die. A grandmother will die. An organ won't get to some beloved celebrity. Something will happen and it'll be the uh, end of that. You know, I, who I, protests agree with, pretty I agree well? with you. PETA protests pretty well. Right? They get girls out there, they're naked, they're wrapped in cellophane, oh. they say, imagine that I'm whatever. It's like three people and they get and I tons do. of attention. Right? <laughs> and, and, you know, but blocking streets, blo ruining airports, stuff like that, like, yeah. it's not my cup of tea. The Occupy oh, Wall yeah, Street stuff, the when they were just chanting and, you know, and all their fingers or whatever, in parks... Like that got a lot of great attention, but it didn't shut down the city, if I recall correctly. It made the park really scary. Occupy got a bad rap in some ways, but in other ways it was sort of It was an accurate bad rap in some ways too. Yeah, they weren't they yeah, were going after yeah, the right yeah. people. They they were they were you know, they were focused they were focusing their attentions in the wrong direction, I always felt like. And and I really felt for anyone who lived in that city and was like, I don't know, it's not my thing, but like if I jogged in that park every morning and suddenly there's like a couple thousand people in it, you know, like shitting in the bushes and now I can't jog in the park. That minor inconvenience would really ruin my day. I, I think about little stuff like that when they tell me there's tent cities and lots of sex and drugs going on in the park now. I, I, yeah, I do think it's important, though, that... that, that like, Selling a good place to go, though, right? Yeah, right. I was I thinking do, I to myself, that. whenever I see... the park! <clears throat> whenever I see public sex, I kind of like that. I've seen it a couple uh, you, times uh, on the uh, beach. Uh, as long as it's um, not in the middle of the road. <laughs> I've seen it on a beach. I've seen it on a dirt road. And every time it That's was like, like well, look at that. I yeah, do think it's a good go thing. Get I some. really I think it's a really not even good doesn't even do it justice. I think it's a wonderful thing. I think all four of us are very lucky to live to have been born in a country that uh, that allows this sort oh, of thing. Sure. I do I do think it's it's something that is um uh I think it's so <laughs> great that people can go into the streets and uh let people in power know that they will not be taken advantage of or they will fight them every step of the way. I think that's great, man. And and like, there's so many places around the world where you wouldn't even think to do that. And uh, the the inconvenience of being late to a doctor's appointment or missing dinner or late to work or whatever, that's frustrating. I don't think they should be blocking um, traffic. I don't think they should be blocking highways. But I think that that's relatively a small price to pay for living in a free and open society. Um, so I'm, I, I do agree with you guys. I, I think. Yeah, and I they, do they you could, too. Well, that sounded. I gay, do you gay, too, man. Gayer than I was going <laughs> for, but thanks, Hutch. Uh, I do you too. No, well, and, I, think, and, I, think we, I think we can all agree on that. That's all. Well. Yeah. And I, yeah, it's just more. I think we, everybody values the right to protest. I do. Unless yeah. you're an evil despot. I don't know. <laughs> it's a wonderful I, thing. I, I, I actually got to go, guys. I got to make some dinner. Um, oh. Blue yeah, I enjoyed blue. having you on. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's this is a great. I never get to talk to people. I work by myself. I have two cats and a dog, and they're my only company throughout the day most of the time. So I never really get to like 
talk about this stuff. So it, it, it's very cathartic for me. So and thank you guys. This is so for, much better than the younger you're, you're version of all of us. You're always fun to have on and talk to about this stuff. <laughs> it's always enjoyable and it never gets shitty. No, never. Yeah, people, people, people hit me up in the ads both times when I said I was going on PK recently, and they were like, "Oh man, sparks are gonna fly." I'm like, I don't think so. No, I, 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 you know, we we might disagree, and we might kind of passionately disagree. I just don't think we're gonna start insulting each if other. If I'm being honest, going up to this show, I thought about politic discussion maybe for six seconds, and other than that, I was like, "Man, I hope he still plays Magic." Like, I wonder what kind of decks he's playing right now. Like, <laughs> yeah. If he's in the Xbox game, we got to get him in on yeah. it. Like. Yeah, if you ever yeah. want to play Magic on Xbox with us, jump in. And now's the time to jump in because you'll just ramrod uh, Kyle hey. and Jizz over there. <laughs> hit me, hit me, hit me up in the in the DMs when you guys hop on next, and I'll see if I can get it installed. But sure. yeah, thanks again, thanks again for the opportunity to come on, guys. I'm gonna yeah, take man. off. Adios. Adios. Catch you later. Man. All right, I'm gonna go and do an ad read. But first, what 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 set is this card from, Taylor? This I'm having a little bit of trouble. Fire reading. Elemental, and it's red. Creature and what is Elemental. The game text? There's a star as the uh, the set pack, I guess, but there's also an emblem there. Creature elemental. Does that help you, Taylor? Well, okay, I mean it's a fire elemental. It's a it's a it's a it's a five mana uh, five four uh, creature. But I was just wondering because of the white borders and that white star that I don't think I've it's seen from before. It's from revised. Set. Okay. Yes, it's from the revised set. Does it say summon elemental or creature? Creature um, elemental. Creature Elemental. So it's a little newer than that. Where okay. is it? Yeah, no, just, no, for no. The, uh, just for the audience's sake, like this, I have four of these. This is full of cards um, <laughs> that I have yet to go through. Um, uh, Kyle, they can't see you just yet. I'm fixing the alignment after um, much left. Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll, sh- I'll, I'll lift I'll it up again in like a second. But it's, seconds. it's a lot of goddamn cards. Um, I'm really yeah. happy with... What set that's from? I have so many old cards in here that look like, um, you okay, know, that, Kyle, that, that look, I finished. Oh yeah, it's um, I have four of these. Um, four of those for twelve thousand cards. Am I right? Um, actually no. Um, uh, well, see, I have six thousand that are mine, and Kitty has her own set. Or I have five thousand of mine, and Kitty has uh, seven thousand. I, I Kitty's came in like a deep box, just put in there, like loose. She got a square box that was like. 14 inches by 14 inches like 14 long 14 wide and then like eight inches deep like a, like just completely smack full of cards it weighed so much i could I, I had a hard time getting everything in in one trip this morning there were so many goddamn cards they were heavy um and she's been going through them all day uh but but i really need to get some binders or something before i start going through just thousands and thousands of cards because like what do i do when i what do i do like separate them by color and then what there's 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 a lot more to do than that, so I need to figure out more about how to play the game before I yeah. really start. You organize them by color. Well, of course, did. that would be my yeah. first step, but but then but then there's a lot more organization that goes into it, and I don't even I, I may not even recognize a, a card that's like key to a, a resurrection strategy, for example. Like I might not recognize. Oh, I need four of these, and if I ever want to make a good this or that deck, that yeah. puts, but this is I won't know that yet, so I need to learn more about the game. But I do like the. Um, what I was gonna say is I do like the older cards because I feel like their artwork is uh, is cooler. Um, I don't know. I don't have any of the really old like cards. Yeah, the thing in with Magic, box. like if if you're for those of you who haven't played Magic, if you've only seen like Pokemon cards and Yu-Gi-Oh cards or whatever other trading card, and this isn't ripping on them, they're different styles. But if you expect that to be the level of art you're getting with Magic, like it's not even close. Like there's a little name in the bottom of every Magic card of the artist they commissioned to draw or paint or do whatever that card like it's incredibly detailed so skillfully done like that's half the fun of these games sometimes is like making like a badass deck like a tree men or demon deck and then just like seeing all the cool images and stuff and even the lands like the common cards the forest they'll paint yeah it's just super super neat artwork I don't know. I uh, but but yeah, I like the old artwork. It's got more of a matte finish to it. All of them do, and 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 sometimes it looks much more like, I don't know, like watercolors than than digital art. So, I'm I'm really digging going through the cards, and uh, I, I I keep I keep picking cards out that I think look cool or sound cool, and then I'll like Google them, hoping yeah. that oh this one's worth three dollars, right, right, and like the most expensive card I have is worth like 30 cents so far, I think, or something like that. That's so. the disappointing thing. Like when you're getting into magic, like I still remember like opening a pack and being like, Ooh, 
you know, whatever the fuck, winter's chill, like, it's a rare, like, this is my good one, and I'll, like, read it and be like, yeah, I can make that work, like, I can make a whole deck around this, this is gonna be, this is my champion, and then I'll, like, look up on a magic forum, like, how to work around with this card, and the comments will be like, oh, complete waste of time, junk rare, worthless, five converted mana costs for that kind of benefit, what an, what kind of idiot would run four of those, and I'm like, yeah, exactly, what kind of idiot would run four of these, you know, like, <laughs> especially not, <laughs> as you tear them in half. Yeah. Crying. Especially not one of these, right? <laughs> Even more foolish. <laughs> but, Glad I didn't uh, get all the foil ones. Yeah, that post was a joke, by the way, guys. Ha <laughs> ha! You know. <laughs> so let me do a. Uh, let me do an ad read here. How, tell everyone how, about. How many have we done? I'm, I'm, can you help me um, catch up? We have uh, two more to go. Thank you. So we'll wrap up ad reads right here and now. We're going to talk a little bit about Wink. Um, yeah, I want to make sure I read the right part here. Finding new. Excuse me, finding great new wine is tough. That's why we've told you all about our uh, our sponsor, Club W, and how it is how how they make it so easy to get wine personalized to your palate and delivered right to your door. And here's a little update for you, uh, in case you missed uh, last time we talked about this. Club W is now called Wink, uh, spelled W-I-N-C, a new uh, a new name and an improved look. Uh, but but here's the important part. It's still the amazing wine company introducing you to new wines that you'll love. Wink works directly with winemakers and growers. Uh, from all over the world to create delicious wine that they deliver right to your door. Wink's 100% satisfaction guarantee means that if you don't like a bottle that they send you, they'll replace it with a bottle you'll love. No questions asked. We don't just send, uh, we don't just get random, we don't get, excuse me, we don't just get sent random bottles. Wink is personalized, is a personalized wine membership that recommends wine specifically for me based on the results of my palate profile quiz. We also rate all the uh, wine that we receive from Wink so they learn about us with every order and constantly personalize the wine they send. You can sign up for Wink right now and gain immediate insider access to the best fine wine from all around the world. Find out for yourself why yours truly and thousands of other uh, satisfied wine lovers are raving about Wink. The best part, of course, is that Wink is offering our listeners here twenty dollars off right now when you try uh, when you go to trywink.com. That's t r y w i n c dot com slash p k a, and uh, they'll even cover the shipping. Think about it; you'll get fine wine personalized to your palate, delivered right to your door. Uh, try Wink and get twenty dollars off plus complimentary shipping right now when you go to trywink.com slash p k a. That's trywink.com slash p k a. Wink with a C. Yeah, if people don't remember, this is the one, if you don't know much about wine, they help you pick what you might like. You know, they ask, hey, do you like your coffee sweet or black? Uh, do you like mushrooms on your steak? And they take the things that they learn about you and recommend appropriate wines. And uh, it was pretty neat because I typically don't like wine, but on drinking night, I was able to kill a whole bottle and then subsequently return it <laughs> yes. after the show. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Better the second time anyway. Um, and so, so here's our second uh, and final ad, actually. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is, uh, this is Creature Quest. We've been talking about this game for a while. From legendary game designer John Van uh, Kanegam, creator of Heroes and Might and the Magic series. Uh, and Magic series comes Creature Quest, an adventurous RPG that brings a new level of depth and strategy to mobile games. Creature Quest is an innovative blend of collectible RPG and strategy. Uh, all roads lead to adventure as players embark on quests to explore new realms while encountering a variety of creatures and obstacles along the way. With over 500 creatures wielding powerful abilities to collect and upgrade and addicting battles with lots of treasure to discover, players will constantly yearn for just one more battle. Creature Quest also boasts a unique PvP mode that allows players to use their creature collections to build their own dungeons and challenge other players for great rewards in addition to guilds, chats, and much more. From fun and collectible uh, stories in each quest to hundreds of adventure-seeking creatures with upgradable abilities to strategic, fast-moving battles, Creature Quest will appeal to anyone who loves role-playing, collectible strategy, or fantasy games. Available on the App Store, Google Play, and Amazon, uh, download Creature Quest for free today and be part of the best turn-based collectible RPG. Your quest uh, for creatures is paved with adventure. Quest on. So yeah, Very go cool. check out that game. Yeah, um, that's, check that's, them out. The, I've read that ad three times. I haven't quite tried this game yet but like the the more i read this ad the more i'm like but i like this game do i really need another addiction in my life right it's now? a deeper game than i would guess you know i, I, I yeah I think 500 creatures and man, yeah, it's cool check out creature quest i yeah. have i feel like i have a holdover topic until taylor gets back okay. i went What's to that? uh cvs has a doctor and it's called uh, i think it's called the minute clinic or something like that have you heard of this no, no, I went to it for the first time today. Uh, my doctor, 
is, is almost too successful. Um, she has a firm. Everybody loves her. We've been taking her to like our kids do her and our, she sees our family. And now I don't see our doctor. I see like another person in the practice because I don't want to wait like six weeks to get scheduled in with my doctor. And um, I've been taking too long to heal from this cold, in my opinion. Yeah, like two weeks ago, my nose started running and maybe four or five days in, I started coughing. And it's like, that's enough right? Two weeks of a cold, 10 days of a cough, like I'm done with this. So I go to the Bennett Clinic and try something I've never tried before. And uh, it wasn't bad. It was actually like you sign up online and this is not sponsored, by the way. You sign up online and uh, like you sort of get in line. I go there 15 minutes later. I'm actually like talking to, I think she was a registered nurse. There's different levels of nurses. I'm not exactly sure what, you know, what she was, but um uh, and it was pretty neat because it was, I guess she was there to treat what I wanted to talk about. She, she asked me some history stuff, surgeries and this and that, but it wasn't like, you know, tell me about your wife and stresses in your life or whatever. It's like, I'm fucking coughing. Let's focus on this. And that's what she was there for too. And, uh, um, you know, she's in the end, I was kind of a borderline case for antibiotics, um, I, I'm not a doctor, but she was pressing like here and here and here and asking if I had pain. And if I had, it'd be obviously bacterial and I need antibiotics. Uh, otherwise, it's viral and they do nothing for me. This is what I just learned today. But the other thing is I'm getting tired by activities that shouldn't get me tired, like driving Colin to parkour or doing dirty dishes, right? Because this is not an exhausting activity. But by the time I finish dirty dishes, I'm like on the couch like, fuck, you know, Time for a break. You're tuckered. Yeah. <clears throat> and that would point to something that was like bacterial. And uh, so she ended up prescribing me, even though I was an edge case, like we talked it over. And, um, and then right there at CVS, like, you know, a few minutes later, my prescription's ready and I'm out the door. Like, it, I feel like it was an hour and a half and the whole like thing, like, an hour and a half and I'm leaving with my prescription, which is like, I really think it would have been like 60 hours had I you gone You have, my... your doctor is far too successful. Uh, yeah. My, my doctor, ha- so there are three people at my doctor's office. Like my fam- it's like a family practice. And there are mm-hmm. three doctors. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I always go to the same one. But if I call like early, early in the morning, I can almost always get in in the afternoon. But I can always get in the next day if I call in the morning. And, uh, you know, the pharmacy's two miles away. So... It's it's that every time for me. That's that's a shame. That it sounds like you you've got a really successful doctor yeah. where you're like walking no. into Gray's Anatomy or something, we and they're like, oh, <laughs> the administrator will be here down <laughs> down in twenty minutes. You're gonna want to talk to him about this. If it's, it's like really, I just need some. If it's bad <laughs> enough, like we've had times, not not the adults, but like a kid, I forget Colin or Hope. It's like they're not feeling well. We can't get them to drink anything. They're just sort of spiraling down. Like they solve it on the spot. We come in there, they give them some anti-nausea or whatever in a popsicle mm-hmm. and instantly they're getting hydrated and things turn around. If it's, you know, if they're in a real decline, but me, my, my sniffles aren't going away or it's actually a cough. Um, yeah, that would probably take a while to see them. And suddenly there's like this new option. Like, oh shit, like CVS Minute Clinic, I think it's called. And well, it's cool like that, that when uh, when my, I went to a CVS Minute Clinic when my like years ago it, no it was the same thing but at Walgreens same shit okay and, this is all new to me uh, they it was only because like my ear was really bad it was when my eardrum burst okay and oh. I like had been ignoring it for so long that my girlfriend at the time this is years ago in high school how old were you was was oh. uh seventeen maybe seventeen about to turn eighteen and I went. And I was like, I really don't want to go. I don't want to go. And my mom and her were both like, you got to go. Like your eye, your ear is disgusting. Like it was like leaking shit. Like it hurt so bad. Like for days I had been like, if I'd roll over in the night to like put weight on my left ear, I'd be like, oh, oh, Jesus. Like that yeah. was, that was when I realized that I don't like painkillers that much. They just make me feel itchy because I was in so much pain that I was like, mom, please, do you have any like old painkillers or something? Like this was days before. She's like, yeah, sure. There's some stuff in there. And I was like, I didn't know how much to take. So I'm like, oh, two, three Percocet. That's probably about the same as Tylenol. I'll throw that down. Then I went downstairs, watched Wizard of Oz twice. Didn't remember any of it. And it just was like, God, I, I don't feel any pain, but I am so itchy. Like <laughs> it was not a good trade off. I there. hate that. I can't understand. Oh. I, I hate to cut you off, but I, I just want to jump in and say, like, I don't understand, understand opio, opioid uh, drug abuse 
because every time I've been prescribed one, the itchiness, or every time I've been like, ah, oh, my back is killing me. Do you have anything I can take? And someone will give you one or two of something. Like, it's awful. The itching outweighs the pain. It's 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 it's, it's so annoying. It's hard to sleep. Yeah. And you like I, I've I've literally taken that like what's that anti like anti itch cream, and I'm like mm-hmm. putting it on thick, like because They're, I've like, had to take this pill. I know that it, yeah, it does that to quite a few people. There's a lot of people that don't get itchy from them, so I'm I sure don't. for them they're just good. But anyway, I went to the the clinic thing, and this is clearly a clinic where like you don't show up with like my leg, ah, like it's just like little things. And so I, I waited, and like you said, it was so quick because nobody else was going to the doctor at Walgreens, <laughs> and so <laughs> I went in and, and it's like, can I see your minute clinic, whatever the fuck? They're like, yeah, come on back, come on back, Taylor, let's have a look. You've been having some ear pain, have you? I'm like, yeah, it's really, really bad. She's like, let's take a look here. And she got her little thing out and wasn't able to fully get it in my ear because it was so bad. But she goes, oh, oh, my. Yes, yes. You should have. How long has it been like this? A week and a half. You should have gone to the doctor a week and a half ago. And I was like, oh, well, that's not good. What's going to happen? She's like, well, at this point, your eardrum is going to burst. It's too late to go in and fix it and anything, but don't worry. It's not like a cartoon where you're deaf forever. It just takes a while to heal. And I was like, what, what is it going to like really hurt a lot or be really terrible or something? Oh, yes. And, and she's like, uh, really? It'll be a very quick kind of sound. And then a lot of fluid is going to drain out. And I was like, oh, oh, Jesus. And so eventually that happened. And I just kind of had shit, shit hearing for a month Wait. or two until it came back. Today, when I went to the Minute Clinic, she took that ear thing, and she looks in my ear, and she goes, oh, gross. Oh, oh. <laughs> what an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. That's good. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. That is I kinda, good. I kind of knew all along there was nothing wrong with my ears. You know so. what I would have done? I, <laughs> if, if my little joke would be, I'd, I'd like look in there, and I'd be like, Mr. Woodworth, do you own any pet spiders? <laughs> that'd be good. That'd be good too. Yeah. You'd be like, no, I don't own any goddamn pet spiders. Why do you fucking ask? Oh, no reason, no reason. Betsy, Betsy, would you grab that can of raid on your way in? <laughs> I was, I was trying to find a link because I was going to ask you what when you were talking about getting tuckered as like if you had mono because I've had mono before and it's the exact same thing where you like do something like carry one bag up the stairs and you don't feel exhausted like physically and then you'll like put it down and your whole body will like have like a minor revolt and just act like you just ran a marathon to the point where you're like wheezy being like i'm not tired i'm not like this isn't tiring at all i just i can't keep going like i feel like i haven't slept in days like oh, that's, was that that's kind of feeling just <laughs> <laughs> mononucleosis apparently hey let's get chiz checked out mono i'm sure that's not it but anyway i was looking at i was trying to find a medical article about mono and i got this this side link thing talking about a oh, Kawasaki tongue syndrome disorder and all they did for this this photo is photoshop a strawberry, a strawberry. into where this tongue is supposed to be for this tongue disorder it's just a strawberry I thought it was a really inflamed tongue. I just don't know if they're shopping. That <laughs> might be a girl with a strawberry in her at mouth. At first, <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> because I see like, like, it looks it. delicious. <laughs> I, I was like, I, I was like, oh, look. It, because in the thumbnail, I could see it, but not as well. And I thought, oh, there's a disease out there that makes it look like, makes your tongue look like a strawberry. But yeah. no, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is just literally a strawberry. Oh, it's she has strawberry. shortcake syndrome. Holy shit. <laughs> it's <laughs> taken hold. It's taken hold. The cream will appear in a day or two if we don't get to this quickly. <laughs> it's a fucking was, strawberry this, in her mouth. the first thing that, they, uh, that God punished Job with. Oh, ah, fruit mouth. It? Oh, <laughs> fruit mouth. Oh, while you were gone, I showed Woody what a real robot, uh, robot was. Um, I don't know if you saw. A real one. Uh, a robot. What, what constitutes a real one? Um, that's a robot. Bedroom joys of... Oh, okay. A robot, yeah. I don't know why I don't check links. Usually. You gotta check the link before you click them. You gotta read like where you're you're about to send your computing machine because you never know. And it's I don't like this. Uh, it, it, this is just a sliced off piece of asshole in vagina. It, it it would be very unsettling to see it's real life. The butt. See 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 that's different. They make like they call them pocket pussies. It's what a crude term, right? Like like but you know it's what they used to call like the uh, the what the um, what's the big 
flash flashlight. Flesh you know, they used to have little ones they called a pocket pussy. And I always just imagined some guy like like an it looked like a vagina with like a box <laughs> in the back. And some guy like dirty guy putting it on the bed and like getting his Vaseline out and like lubing up his pocket pussy. But but this is like a whole woman's like prosthetic ass like in the perfect position with a butthole and a vagina and it vibrates it vibrates you know like, Do you like get to choose i didn't even look that carefully yeah. Yeah, either hole you want they'll even add a third if, if that's your thing um and they, it they is my make, thing there you go. make your own as they say um it's, it's called it's the tear them a new one plan it's, it's 39.99 they don't mind a bit um but, but yeah it vibrates the most the most humiliating thing of all time, though, right, has to be like after you've finished this, like, like just imagine being all sweaty. You just, you just came after fucking your robot, and you're just like, all right, time to carry this thirty-pound jiggly robot. Wait, set the scene. And- Take me there. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine this guy's just doing it right on the coffee table. He's not taking that back to the bedroom. <laughs> I he imagine like and he like back. peels it off the glass top. And- <laughs> I imagine yeah. that it, it's not just a thirty-pound jiggly thing. It's Juliet, his girlfriend, right? And, and Juliet needs to be cared for after each session. This is Anna. Session. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give her an accent. <laughs> I had a funny little uh, pocket pussy story there. So in college, if you, if you join a fraternity, I didn't, but I had a lot of friends who did. You have to carry around with you when you're pledging or rushing basically a little bag full of all these like necessities that at any point an active brother can be like, hey, lighter. And one of the pledges, if they don't have a lighter available or if they don't have a condom available or they don't have a cigarette available or whatever, they'll get in trouble and they'll have to do extra hazing or whatever. And so one of the things that one of my buddies had to do, it was two of them actually because they were both pledging the same fraternity freshman year. And they had to have cigarettes, condoms, a lighter, and they had to have uh, a pocket pussy (laughs) that could be demanded from them from any active brother at any time. And so there was one sex shop that I knew of in Columbia in, at Mizzou. And so a ton of guys had to go there and buy like these. And it was the only rule was like, you know, bring back a pocket pussy. And so all of them were going and being like, all right, where's the cheapest one? Boom. Got it. Like grabbing it and bring it back. And went off without a hitch. Like this isn't like a one day thing. You just have to have these things available. And as a joke, <laughs> apparently I wasn't there. This is at the house. Uh, one of my buddies was asked, hey, give me your pocket pussy because they'll just try and catch you. Because make him be like, oh, I don't have it. And they're like, oh, 50 push-ups or whatever it is. And gave it to him. And the guy goes, this sucks. You're going to take this back. Tell him it was too big. And you're going to get me a nicer one. (laughs) And so this other guy had to go back to the store and return it with his brother there. Making sure he said it. Like in the background, like doing some perusing. (laughs) Because they'd have to say, this was too big. I need a smaller, nicer one. (laughs) <laughs> had to pick one out and give it to that guy. It was just a, a funny little humiliation bonding thing. So how wonderful. So there you go. Yeah. And who said like it's better than like the eighties where like getting initiated was like getting paddled about just or, you were the pocket pussy in the eighties. It's like, all yeah. right, bend over, it's time. <laughs> like, Going like, on elephant walks or, or whatever you gotta do. I, I, I talked to um my friend, now this is the nineties, and you know, I was like Dude, what do they make you do? What do they make you do? Can't talk about it. Can't. Eventually, because he's my high school friend and we were close, he's like, all right, well, pretty much every sorority makes you fuck and every fraternity makes you jerk off. That's what you do. See, that's know. the thing I've heard in the past, and I know they don't do that anymore for the most part because they get in way more trouble. Mm. But, yeah, there used to be a lot more more crazy stuff, like having to wear burlap underwear for a week. Oh, or, no. <laughs> Uh, drive you into the middle of a cornfield because I'm in Missouri. Like drive you in the middle of a cornfield, blindfolded in burlap underwear, and leave you there, and be like, "Best of luck getting back." And then, like, just just stuff like that. Oh fuck hmm. all that. But that was like, yeah, I'm with Kyle. Or shit. There's no. Cl- <laughs> what kind of club do they have? Like, 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 do we just get to fuck like, 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 like girls all day and like, like rolling money? Is that your club? No, <laughs> we just we just eat pizza, drink beer, and sleep in the smallest bed you've ever seen. Fuck your club. Fuck your club. Fuck your fucking. Sometimes club. fraternities have cooler like houses. Like you know, it's like you can say in the dorm that every jackass yeah. stays in, or you could be in the party house. You know, when you go there and there's like two people to a room still, but they're lofts and they're cooler and. Uh, yeah, I, I could see the appeal of living at that place. Uh, suffer through one year and live off campus, right? Uh, <laughs> if that's what you want, but I, me, 
I want to live off, on campus and not be in a frat. That's my college experience I, that, I, that I would want. Um, the downside of being in a frat is I feel like it's, it's high school again. You have this big school where you can be anyone you want, and then you shrink it to just the frat community. And now it's he said, she said, and drama, and you know, whatever. You ever see the pornos where it's like the sorority, uh, uh, where they make the, the, the new sorority girls like eat all their pussies and stuff? Oh, no, no, I have. I'm, I'm just say? trying I'm no. recalling all these other hazing <laughs> stories from my friends. Uh, uh, another good one they had to do <laughs> is like they they would have nights where they'd all just have to get shit faced and it'd be like on a Tuesday. And so it'd be like, mm-hmm. you guys all have class tomorrow morning. <laughs> and you are getting hammered right now. Finish that drink. And so they'd get they got them all hammered, all the pledges like early on in the rush time. And apparently they had to do body shots of tequila off of their fellow pledge brothers which basically <laughs> means a body shot you know you fill your belly button with the tequila yeah. you put a, a lime in their mouth oh. and then salt on the nipple area and oh, so then no. they gotta lick their nipple area you know take the shot out of their belly button and then and then take the lime out of their mouth I, these are all reasons that i'm saying it now that make me happy i didn't choose this path you know what yeah. it's <laughs> stupid and it's lame and we laugh at it and whatever but, but if you did it I bet you would be bonded with those dudes. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Like it's it's not just some silly thing. It really does bond you together and that kind of stuff. Like they and it really depends for fraternities what kind of school you're going to. Like I only have experience with my friends and fraternities at the one school. Right. Which right. it's a big it's a big SEC school. And so Greek like life is gigantic. But if you're going to I don't know, Boston College, you know, a lot of those schools like fraternities more of like and not like I'm this and that. It's I'm, I'm this and I'm I also do that. Yeah, yeah. I would say, I would, you remember I talked about not being in a frat and I don't want that because it shrinks the school, et cetera. Some schools are like 90% Greek. And in a case like that, not being in the system is kind of excluding you. It's Whereas, like the movie The Nerds where, or whatever. Where, yeah, where, where when I went to school, it was like 20% Greek. So you just took this great school and shrunk it down to a stupid ass high school because it, you know, now you're only hanging out with the other Greek people. And even like on those big campuses, like I never, it was hard to find someone who was like the stereotypical frat guy of like, you know, beta house, ah! like just like that. Like it just, I don't know. It just doesn't exist in that way. There were the only one person I talked to is a friend of, is a friend of mine when he was, ple- he was a few years younger and pledging a frat and he was like just about to be initiated and making a big scene about like, yeah, and I'm learning the secret handshake and I'm going to be connected with these guys in business for life, like with this fraternity thing. Like we'd have so much secret stuff, like we can identify people anywhere, like but with like a handshake or something. And I'm like, that's really neat, man. But you realize that it's 2012 or whatever, 2013 or whatever, and I can just find all of your little secret club handshakes online. Right. He's like, no, you can't. No, you can't. It's never been leaked. You know, uh, Zeta Beta Gata House. I don't want to say what it actually was, has never actually been leaked that way. And so I like out of spite, spent like an hour (laughs) really researching until the next time he came over. I was like, oh, yeah, dude, about that uh, secret handshake printed it out. (laughs) <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna do it. I uh, thought you were gonna like, let's go, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I like Kyle's so like, And At the end, you just like, smash. <laughs> like, oh, that wasn't it. I was wrong. Then you were right. <laughs> just consult the manual. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and I don't know about but, what, what Missouri was like. It, where, when I my first school, there were like two cool frats. Um, one was Teak and I forget the other. And then every other frat and sorority or whatever was almost like a ding against you. Like it's better to be nothing than to be like Alpha Zeta Chi or whatever the fuck it is. And I'm like, why do people do that? Like they just, they, you pledged and paid and did all that shit to get in a nerd frat. Like what I found is that, cause I've had friends in those lesser <laughs> fraternity uh-huh. and like, it's one of those things where it's not like Animal House where one of the frats is like, those guys. It's like, really, you go to that one frat. It actually is like Animal House in that way where you go to the frat that's the, quote, loser frat, and it's not even a thought in their mind what the winner frat is doing. They're just like, we're having fun. I'm not putting on airs. I'm doing what I want to do, and I have friends here. Like, it's just, uh-huh. like, I don't know. I, I'll say like less rape in the uh, smaller Dude, frats, too. This I thought was interesting, though. So, um there was a, one of the like, you know, smaller frats that wasn't as popular. They lost a bunch of guys to graduation. So, and people were wondering on campus, like, what's this frat going to do? They've got like seven people left, right? It's, it's not even a frat anymore. Um, 
but somebody was like <laughs> good at marketing and they they uh, what's it called when you go after people you rush them rush yeah so during rush they outrushed everybody they seemed like the coolest frat when when pledges went to check them out there were strippers there and like like, <laughs> like good strippers who were doing funky shit and, and oh, yeah i see yeah yeah and like like all the bathrooms had like a stack of porn mags and i was like do you put those away like when people pledge they're like no we put the good ones on top <laughs> and uh like, <laughs> it was just pretty funny because they had a really successful rush and and they went from seven people to like 25 Five and and refilled their frat and then I bet I don't know any of this I don't even know who's responsible for it but I bet whoever was responsible for it has a knack for this I bet Rush he, chair I bet yeah, he's, that's who does it well I, okay I wouldn't know who that is like I wasn't that close but I bet whoever Rush chaired and was really good at it is growing a business right now or something like he has a knack for yeah he knew what was up yeah. it's such a sneaky thing too because I once again like going through college we have a lot of friends and fraternities like I knew a lot of people who were their Rush chair <laughs> and getting their other perspective because you'd see them around the their like pledges or rushes and they'd just be like yeah fucking like connor over there like the man like have another drink dude like and then you get them like alone and you're, they're gonna be like god i am gonna give these guys hell as soon as they commit to us because they have been annoying as shit or like whatever they say because it's their job of like you got to get x amount of people to to show he'll up quit and, don't yeah, worry that guy's gonna quit you know but uh, i guarantee you yeah. It's not nearly, I don't know, like all the, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, new topic. This one's worn out. Okay. Um, so I, I, I went to the subreddit because I'm stupid and sometimes I do. Lots of positive stuff. Shout out to you guys who were doing the paramotor uh, uh, Photoshop stuff. But um, apparently my favorite Thai restaurant is guilty of um, human trafficking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> No, it's not. No, it is not. It is, Let's dude. So I, so I read this article. This woman that I'm showing right here, I know her. Like, <laughs> not, not like know her name or anything. She knows my order without me saying it. Like I, I, I and and they're gone. Hey, curry fried rice number two. <laughs> they're they're like uh, I, I guess I was there and there was another regular. I didn't recognize her or anything. And she's like, ah, is I'll make up a name, you know. Louise here and uh and she's like no no they all new management like well is so and so here no 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 everybody has changed and I was like that's interesting like a restaurant had a 100% staff turnover and uh and then she's explaining that she has this special deal and they always hook her up with some price and large amount of food which she didn't need but um <clears throat> uh <laughs> so yeah what happened was they had this this woman paid like sixty thousand dollars to come over and work at this restaurant and then i guess over some period of time she was going to own the restaurant take it over from the from the regular owners and the woman's daughter worked there for free which is not okay and um they like never got any documentation saying that she could uh, like own the restaurant later. And I want to check to make sure this is true, but I think it said they took her passport. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, don't you feel yeah. bad for your, for your, for your, you should see they, what do you, should, you should demand that they hand over their way. passports that belong to her and her daughter. Uh, yeah. It's, that's slavery. Yeah. That's, that's it's real indentured. Yeah, well, it's it was ridiculous. like, I guess indentured servitude. Slavery. Yeah. That's definitely the, de the definition. I, I, but, but I mean, for all intents and purposes, you know, especially <laughs> with that lie there where like every night after a hard day of work, she's like, don't worry, we're working toward owning all that one mm -hmm. day we'll own it all. And you know what we're going to do the next day? fire those white people like you know no, they have i don't think there are any white it's people like, it's involved. like diet slavery ah so okay we're gonna fire kim we're gonna fire mm -hmm. kim and, and, you and know, then we're gonna fire people. kim and then we're gonna fire kim yeah and no. you better believe kim's gotta come i've been going to this restaurant <laughs> for a long time like I, I first went to it probably 15 years ago i've never seen a white person work here what do you get i get a red curry uh it comes with the spring roll and mm. if I'm feeling spendy, I get the, I don't know what it's called, but it's like a coconut chicken soup. Oh, it's very good. I like the, 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 the spicy uh, coconut soup. I get it Thai spicy. I like mm -hmm. the Penang curry. Uh, it, it, it's, it's not that spicy, but I usually get it Thai spicy too. So I'm just like crying and sweating and stuff. And I like the Thai tea. I don't know if you've ever had one Ooh. of those, but it's like half, half and half and half Thai tea. Yeah. And it's really smooth and, and delicious. You know what's amazing? Vietnamese tea. And it has like these, it seems like they're blueberry sized. I don't know what they are, but like a fruit you almost suck up while you drink it. The straw 
is big enough to like drink a gumball through. Like a bubble tea. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, maybe you know this. I think bubble tea is what it's called. I've seen that oh. place at the mall, but mm-hmm. let me. Yeah, that's yeah, definitely yeah. it. But anyway, and so I thought it was interesting. I, I think it's all sorted out now, and there's all new owners. I don't know if the new owners and staff are the people who were like indentured servants and got it sorted out. But I thought it was really interesting. Like someone posted this, and I was like, "No way!" That sucks. Like, not right here in River City. And uh, sure enough, like it, it 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 jives with the staff turnover. Like this this article, I think, is from June. Yeah. I need to look more careful. Man, that would suck. Those yeah. human yeah. rights abuses that make it a little saltier. A little right? Like, like imagine yeah. that being being like uh, having this whole thing set up where you think you're working towards something, <laughs> and then finding finding out you've been duped and lied to because there's no paperwork. The the dealings weren't legal. Like your citizenship may even be at at, at risk at this point. Like that. The, in the end, this poor woman who was indentured servituded along with her daughter probably gets deported probably gets deported and like you know goes back to that shitty country with the, even worse off than she was as an indentured you servant you might be perhaps. right in my head the people that were indentured servituded are the people that have it now the new people because they started like how does two that work though after this article came out like two months later there's new staff like in august or something I imagine they. I would imagine that like it was taken away from like whoever owned it before. But you know, there. You know, like like you can't just. It, what's right is what there's right and wrong, and then there's what's legal. And like the ownership of a business doesn't just just get transferred to like the person who was promised it or whatever. I would imagine that she was being taken advantage of, and maybe you're looking at a third party owning it or friends slash family members of the original people who were taking advantage of your poor friend. You might be right. I mean, oral contracts can be contracts though. So yeah, you know it's oh well. Not when you're, uh, you think, you think that, I mean, I had business law. That's what they taught us. It's called parole evidence and it's like spoken. But but would this be evidence of one, like because of the weird nature of her being a, you know, coming from overseas and paying the $60,000 in, et cetera. It just, sometimes it seems murky. Oral contracts is both sides have to admit that they made it. And uh, so um, I don't know how clever everything You're not going to catch them doing that because admitting that they made this would be admission to a much more serious crime than I- anyway, right? You know, they right. admit it. Un- unless there's like an email trail that, you know, started the whole thing before she even that came makes over. Sense. Or, like, I don't, yeah. I'm just making stuff up, but. No, um, that would make sense. They're not communicating via, via Raven or like, right. like snail, snail mail or anything. So yeah, there's, hopefully that I, I would love to see it that, that this poor person who spent this money and time and effort and her daughter worked for free, like got rewarded with her own restaurant because she, be cool. you know, you would imagine that that would, that's what she wants clearly. And by the way, it's fucked. the food is just as good as it's always been. Hey, so, <laughs> so I hate that curry's today. the same. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> From my perspective, everything's cool. Honestly, it's you. just like Chick Fil A. I don't mind what they're doing on their own time. Just keep making the good. <clears throat> I'm gonna do no opinion on Chick Fil A. <laughs> I think it's overrated. I think it's just a national chain with decent chicken. Cookout though, Cookout is actually very good. I have been touting Cookout for a long time. The first time I, I encountered Cookout, I was like, I've if there is cookout. a restaurant chain to like get a franchise in, it's Cookout. And I'll tell you my evidence around this. Every time a Cookout gets put somewhere, they have to like do something about the traffic situation that is caused. So Cookout has like a huge, huge menu. It's like three panels. Uh, you know, the panels fold out with the menu, dozens of milkshakes and frozen drinks, as well as like barbecue and chicken and hamburgers and hot dogs. It's like a cookout. It's just like that pretty high quality stuff. They use peanut oil. It's very tasty. Um, but like I said, every time one is established, they don't take orders like a McDonald's does because that system doesn't hold up under this amount of volume. What they do is they put traffic cones in the parking lot and create a new lane of traffic that begins as soon as you turn into the business. Now you're parked. Like you turn in, oh, I'm in line immediately. You About five minutes of waiting, a person has a piece, uh, asks, walks up your car and says, hey, what do you want? You tell them, they, they, they give you a menu, they tell you what, you tell them what they want. They write it down on a piece of paper and give it to you, and you hold that piece of paper until you get to a second person. You hand that piece of paper to that person, and he, and only he, reads into the microphone that, that's sending the message into the restaurant, and then you wait some more. That's what a brand new cookout line is like. And, and um, so, that's exactly what Chick-fil-A lines are like. Sometimes I've seen that at Chick-fil-A too. You, um, a cookout, I feel like is a potential owner, not that I'm going to do it, but... 
Uh, there's no seating in there. Everything is drive through. I've never seen a cookout where you can eat there. Oh, that's that's where, not where my, is this place located? I've never even seen. heard of it. Oh, really? In South Carolina and Georgia, we have seating. I, I've it. seen only like two or three cookouts in my life, and in each case, it was purely drive through. And I asked my daughter about it, and that's where I got that information. She's never seen one either that that you can eat at. So there's so. one in East Atlanta. There's one in Anderson, South Carolina, and there's one. I don't Just remember to be the clear, town. But you're, you're talking about indoor seating. Yes. Okay. And then there's one because I've I've done it. Like I've sat in a mm-hmm. in the in the, in Anderson, South Carolina. I've went in that one a few times. But um, I stopped at one um on the on my way to like Greensboro, North Carolina once. Um, and I just remembered it was it looked like a real high school hangout on the inside. Yeah. It seemed like there were like so many cars from like and like sixteen, fifteen to seventeen year olds just everywhere inside. And the line is just always so crazy. It's very good food, but I gotta say, Chick Fil A's. Meat quality, French fry quality, their their wait staff, their beverages. I don't know if you know about their sauces that they'll they'll make you like a honey butter sauce for your biscuit. It's top shelf for me uh, as far as like actual traditional fast food. You know things like Five Guys or another. Menu looks good. I've, I've uh, cookout is really good. Closest one to me is two hundred miles away. <laughs> I oh, haven't been it? eating a cookout because I'm trying to lose weight. By the way, I'm down four pounds. I'm sure nice. a whole bunch of that. If you self shaving, it's, I'm, I'm huge on it. Uh, I know a lot of that is probably just daily fluctuations in weight. You can't lose four pounds of fat in a week, but um, still better down than up. Uh, yeah. But have I? If I was eating a cookout, their milkshakes are like insane. There's so, so many thick, flavors. You can't. You, they come with a spoon, and like no human could drink one with a straw. Like I, I don't think so a machine could cream. do it. <laughs> it's pretty much ice cream. Yeah. And. Uh, but you can get like Snickers flavor or something. It's like thirty or forty banana, flavors. Banana cream pie. There's like like you said, thirty something flavors. It's great, yeah. and it's and it's not like they specialize in milkshakes. Their burgers are very good, <laughs> and like their combos are put together in a non traditional format. Like you're probably really accustomed. We all are to getting a fr- a burger, fries, and a soda. But at Chick Fil A, like you might get two hot dogs, a quesadilla, and some jalapeno poppers. Like it's it's weird combos. Like the quesadilla mm. is a side item that just slides its way into is meals you're like really you a quesadilla no to cook out oh. you're like really a, a a quesadilla comes with this fish sandwich and okay all right well sure a quesadilla <laughs> it is all right uh, you know like like it's it's always too much food it's always really tasty i like cookout but chick-fil-a's better huh. i've only been to cookout twice but um i feel like it's good it's underrated and uh definitely also underrated. i like that it's not national i like that it's like a southern treasure yeah it we, sounds uh, better than chick-fil-a but that's just because it seems like a, 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 a different echelon of food. When you it's keep different. Chick-fil-A where it is, which is in the Wendy's, McDonald's, Burger King kind of lineup, I think that it, it beats those its competition so much that it's like it's not even close. I don't think anybody in the Burger King marketing room is like, how do we catch up to Chick-fil-A? Because the answer would be, well, we got to make chicken better. And they're going to be like, fuck, no, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What else can we do? Can we put Doritos on something? You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's Taco Bell. We, we're not allowed. No, fuck. <laughs> we're going to be the, the, the Frito bun or whatever the hell they do. Yeah, I, I like cookout a lot, though. It's very bad for you. You can get a big sack full of food really quickly, like ordering extra items. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan. Yeah, I'd, I'm not, like, good at ordering. I went once... Um, when I was taking Hope to colleges like this summer and once like three weeks ago or something. Yeah. yeah. It's not easy. It, it, that's one thing that I like the, the only downside maybe is it's a little difficult to order. You want to be like, could you give me a few minutes here? And you want to take your time, but there's always people behind you, but you really need to like ponder over this thing. Like I like chili dogs, but oh, I can get three for two dollars. It's 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 just a huge menu with so many different cool. Is it things like having to order really... at the soup Nazis place where you have to like know ahead of time where you're like large lobster bisque? You know? Well, if you don't want to, there's just such a line. You know, you, there's pressure on yeah. you to like keep things moving along. You I don't want to be that jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Forget I, um, about it. Keep moving. I I haven't been to a, a soup place like that, but in, in um, Philadelphia, if you you know the Philadelphia cheesesteaks, they're famous and stuff. There's actually two reason. restaurants, Gino's and Pat Steaks, that yeah. sort of represent those. And uh, I went to Gino's. I say that's my favorite, but I haven't actually been to Pat's. And um, if you don't order right, they throw you out of the line. Like I was warned. You know, they're like, look, you have got to have your order squared away. He's not going to say anything to you, but he'll make eye contact. And when he does, loud and proud, you say your order. 
And he's like, do you know what you want? And I'm like, ah, not exactly. He's like, all right, you want a cheesesteak with onions? Sounds good. All right, that's a cheese wit, no H, a cheese wit. And, uh, and, I, and I actually wanted provolone and stuff, but I felt like that was somehow incorrect, even though it's clearly on the menu. So I was just like, a cheese wit and a Coke? And he's like, all right, I, pa- I passed my test. And he gave me my food. But there were other people, you know, they looking at him. And if you don't, like, immediately and properly say your order, it's like, ugh. You know, like, this guy doesn't know how to buy here. And, mm-hmm. uh, and then he might even tell them to get back in line until they figure out their order. Well, fuck that guy. I don't want your <laughs> cheap steamed beef with cheese whiz on it anyway. Like, like I, I hear where you're coming I, from, but the place is so busy. It's kind of nice that he's doing, like, if you do know what you want... But then see, anyone sure. who doesn't is a dick. If he were slinging delicious burgers, french fries, anything other than what he is slinging, I would be on board. But I just really have a low opinion of the uh, the, the, of the, the real that Philly's cheesesteak. Yeah. Like yeah, the, the cheese whiz immediately says, okay, this is not a high-quality food. Like, like you've immediately stepped into some sort of white trash, like quasi-food thing when you put cheese whiz on a sandwich. I used to. I really um, don't like those sandwiches at all. Like, it, they're, I've never had, like, I've had like the ones where it's like, oh, you know, they try and spice it up by adding real cheese. But if you get a real Philly cheesesteak, you get the the spray on it. That's what actually brings it all together. And it's like, no, it isn't. This is this is horrific. This is awful. This yeah. is like someone like from the Great Depression being like, oh, I wish there was a place that delivered hard rolls with ketchup on the inside, just like mom come- used to make. <laughs> like, yeah. No, of course not. <laughs> and it doesn't even compare to like an Italian beef sandwich with like the sweet peppers and the spicy peppers and like the au jus yeah. soaking into it. Like that's a tasty fucking expensive beef sandwich. Like if I'm going to do a beef sandwich, it's going to be an Italian beef sandwich with from like Portillo's in Chicago. It's making my mouth water now. I, that feel, cheese. I, I have this like hometown pride circling around this food that I know in my heart is really not that good. Right? Yeah. And I'm like, no, no, you're both wrong. It's fantastic. What could be better than shitty beef and cheese whiz on a stale roll? Yeah. <laughs> you know? But that's, that's the Philly Hard cheese taste. Then we have to like defend the regional food. I know exactly what you're saying. There's like, like nobody who's not from or I've, it's hard to find people who didn't grow up in St. Louis who enjoy Emo's, which is a St. Louis style pizza, which is Provel cheese on it, which okay. is like cho- uh, provolone mixed with cheddar or some some shit. And I just really like it because I remember eating it at parties all the time growing up. But like when I try to introduce people who from like, like Boston or whatever the fuck, like oh we gotta get some Emo's, they like take one bite and they're like, what is what's wrong with this cheese? Like is this wrong? Is this off? Is this gone bad? Like this is horrible. What does it but taste like? You- is it like a sharp taste like cheddar? No, no, it's it's more mild. Is it consistency? It's soft and melty, and it's it's very. I, I really enjoy it. Of course, you'll get that. I, it's funny. I, I, I got like the a, exact I'm immediately same interested. thing because yeah. um, when I ate these cheesesteaks, I used to play in a deck hockey league. If people don't know what deck hockey is, it's it's hockey, but you play in sneakers, but you still have boards and everything. Oh. They also play like indoor oh. soccer, or maybe the same facility. Or well, deck hockey football. sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we, and after the games, <laughs> which we almost always lost, we would go and get like cheesesteaks and stuff with the guys. And, and uh, it was just a real neat like guy time that I enjoyed, even if the yeah. food was. And you liked it more, even when you didn't like it, because you're like, oh, this is like, we're, this is a Philly thing. Like, it's, yeah, it's just yeah. something to do. Right, you know. Yeah, I told. I told. No. Uh, I wish there was a surface that allowed this for the speed of sneakers and uh, that you get in basketball, but also the gliding, uh, or, or excuse me, the you know the maneuverability of sneakers on on a surface like basketball, but also the gliding speed of hockey. Is there a way that we could play in sneakers but on like a giant air hockey table so that you could run, but if you ever stopped and slid, you would like glide and maybe you could you could do that. I that seems really something. difficult. Well, it's like, so do you have hard. to decide your entire trajectory where you're like, I'm going to steal the puck from that guy, and you start sliding at him, and then he slides somewhere else, and you're like, oh, well, I don't oh there he goes. I'm still sliding. Uh, I, I don't know. We need to construct a giant air hockey surface first. You I, know I, what I make this easier? Is just use ice and put skates on. I, I, don't, I don't like that idea at I, all. Something or about just play people the sliding version. by. Still... I remember when I was playing hockey a lot, uh, I think Lemieux made his comeback. And, uh, you know, like, if people don't know, Mario Lemieux considered one of the best players to have ever played, right? He's in that conversation. And um, uh, when he came back, he was like, everyone was just shocked at his patience, right? He'd hold the puck, 
defensemen would come flying by like idiots, you know? He instead of just shooting on net, he'd like the goalie would get like out of position and then he'd shoot into an open net. And everyone is like, Oh, his patience, he's so great, he's this net. So I'm like, you know what? This weekend I'm gonna play with more patience, right? <laughs> Everyone just fucking takes the puck from him. <laughs> like, it didn't work at all. It was like, I got to sit here and... Oh, well, fuck that. <laughs> oh, oh, it didn't work. You know, next time, though. Next time, I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah. all right, I got it right here. And, oh, you try and come get... Oh, oh, fuck. Oh, I, mean, <laughs> I was like, what is his trick? What is his trick? That, that, that didn't even the last the whole game. I got stripped like three, four times. I'm like, well... Yeah, do you use a puck or a ball? Well, this would like, be ice hockey I was playing, so it was... I, I, but I mean on the deck hockey. A ball. You'd use uh, either a ball or a roller hockey puck. Yeah, yeah, which is just a regular puck with little nodules on it, so it slides easier. I should just have ball bearings, right? That, yeah, that's yeah, a lot go. like that. Yeah, Basically. that's what we played roller hockey with a ball or a puck, like Taylor describes. That's pretty. Can can does that? Can you get the same speed on that, or or no. or does that perform the same? way? No, it doesn't no, slide you, as well. But to, you, it's not as heavy as you think a the ice hockey puck. Slower? I think. Yeah, I've played roller hockey. Like I, I, yeah, there's no way they're nearly as fast as ice hockey shots. Like it's just not heavy enough. I don't know about your roller hockey experience, but I found so in ice hockey, if you do a hockey stop, right, where you go sideways and do whatever, it's real predictable the slide that you get. In roller hockey, it's zero to a hundred and it's tricky. And and like you gotta lean your skate over really hard to get it to slide. Oh, yeah. And uh, if because if it's vertical at all, you just like high side, like on a motorcycle crash. And I uh God, I I always I and, and the thing is this. I am actually a curiously good roller skater. And uh, there were a couple guys in the league that played with roller skates. They called them quads. I guess that's cooler. Oh, yeah. And, um, dude, they would just they'd, they'd skate backwards. It was time to go forwards. They'd get on their tippy toes on the stoppers and then just start running right. forwards. And they'd take off so fast. And they, they, they skated. I was like, I should totally be doing that. I'm just too self-conscious to play yeah. roller skates in a, in, a roller, in a roller hockey league. And I never did. But if I played with, with roller hockey, with, like, roller skates, I think I would have been – uh, one better. of the better players yeah it is infinitely harder to stop in rollerblades than it is on ice skates and it's something that people don't think as much like if you don't know how to skate <laughs> either way you might think like oh, i don't know it's kind of intimidating with the ice and it's so hard and the blades mm. like do i angle it right like in hockey in ice hockey you can just because the ice is not soft but soft compared to the steel you're wearing on your feet like you don't have to give a little jump before you stop you can just lean into it and stop really hard and cut in roller hockey the way they teach you to stop, at least the way I was taught, is that you almost have to do a little stutter step jump, get your feet in the air, twisted to that angle, and then mm -hmm. land like that. And if you stop correctly in roller blades, it sounds like, you know, you, someone's trying to prevent rear-ending another car. It's like, it's yeah. so fucking loud and obnoxious. But, oh my God, it is hilarious watching people try and stop on roller blades because you don't, you fall so fucking hard because those grippy rubber wheels plant you like you are you know doing the goddamn pole vault and so you just stick there on that sticky rubber and you just full force just mm -hmm. face plant right into that hard ground like it's i, I could never get i i played stopping at roller blades down 100 percent. i played in roller hockey leagues and ice hockey leagues at the same time like you know tuesday roller well, that's hockey, hard. sunday ice. <laughs> yeah because yeah. what happened in ice if your skate is vertical do I have this right? Yeah. If your skate is vertical, you tend to like skip across and, and slide. If you want to cut in yep. ice hockey, you turn your skate and it'll, it'll cut. In roller, it's the opposite. If your skate is vertical, it's like, you like high side and fall over. To get it to slide, you really have to turn it like further than you might guess on its yeah. edge. And then it'll go. And, and so like, yeah, every night during warmups was really skate focused, you know, to like get my feet underneath me because it's hard to play back and forth. But uh, whatever. I don't know. I always liked um, playing instead of exercising because, like, one is games and working out is work and playing well, games is you, playing. You totally fool yourself into not even knowing you're exercising. Like, if you just play, like, two hours of street hockey, like, the thing that'll make you want to stop is the fact that, like, you're so tired. Like, you'll be like, God, I wish I could keep playing. Like, we're, we're doing And you really don't even well. notice while you're doing it that you're getting yeah. that tired. Like, like yeah. in the same way you would be if you were just, like, doing reps of something. Whenever we got done with it, this is not certainly not a sport, but whenever we got done with uh, the go-karts the other day, it, it was a pretty long race. And you'd get done, and, and I don't know about you, I think we, we talked about it, but, like, my forearms and my hands 
were so in so much pain that I, I had to, I was just like, oh, I hope this goes away soon. Hope this goes away soon. Oh, for sure. Because you're just squeezing so hard into those turns and stuff, and it's vibrating and fighting back against you. And it's just a, a 15 minute workout like this of just forearms and hands. Yeah, definitely. Like you, you let go of it at the end, and you're like, oh, my, my hands haven't moved in 20 minutes. Like they've been locked onto this thing and, and I'm, fighting. You're so into the racing that like when you're about to run into something, your whole rear end someone training isn't like, all right, I'm going to remove my hands so I don't get any injuries and then slowly run into them as slow as possible. Like, no, you're like, ah, and, you're, and then you don't realize until <laughs> afterwards. You're like, oh, I think I shattered my forearm. Like, <laughs> Did you have any bruises from the uh, seatbelts catching you? Not visible, but I could feel it for a while right here yeah. on my collarbone where the five yeah. point thing was right above my collarbone whatever that muscle is like above it like it's got bruises Traps. on it yeah, from, yeah if the, where those should be i uh, i have some <laughs> bruises um, <laughs> from, from, from having a pretty serious collision but uh but i mean i and, and my back from like my seat being driven into my back or my back being driven in my seat was was bruised up pretty bad but it, I enjoyed it so much that like on on my way from the Atlanta airport back home, I saw like K1 go-karts and I was like, ooh, I wonder if those are as fast as the ones we did in Colorado because those things were fucking fast. I, I really enjoyed that. Have you blast. ever had whiplash? Did you get whiplash from your accident? Like, I never have any kind of neck stuff like that. Like I, I, I really brace myself well. Like, like, like I'm, I'm used to being in stuff where like we're probably going to get hit or like wreck or something. And so I, I'm just I'm, yeah. I'm crash ready. I'm really hmm. crash ready all the time when I'm in those things. I hit somebody once. I was like 24. I remember this. I was getting out of work and I was about to go on vacation. Like, like I was about to have a week off and go somewhere. And uh, I'm driving home and I'm in a not in a hurry. I'm driving fast because I'm excited. And um, as I crest over the hill, there's a stoplight on the other side and everyone's like stopped. The guy in front of me, Ford Explorer, hit his brakes really hard. I'm in like a Ford Escort or something. I hit my brakes really hard, but I don't stop as well as he does. And I slide and I hit like uh, sort of under, but at his bumper. It's a big enough hit that my airbags go off and it's totally my fault. Like, it just was like I, I was I, I was driving too quickly and not prepared for the red light and I fucked up and I was like 24 and um, like my neck hurt for a while I didn't like complain about it I didn't go to the doctor I was at fault and I didn't want like anyone to know but it was like a month of like hurting and whiplash is a real thing I thought it was yeah. just you know something that people in sitcoms did in court cases or something yeah. but no it'll my uh, sucks one of my friends was in a, uh, <laughs> a sort of a bullshit wreck uh in high school where the collision was not the issue it was the airbag and when the airbag went mm -hmm. off it, it hit him because normally in a collision it's timed perfectly so you're coming forward and it inflates and it catches you but because his impact was such horse shit he wasn't back here going forward. He was kind of in front of the airbag, and it just fucking hit him. And he had the worst burns on his face and his forearms from it, like, coming out, these, like, abrasion burns. You know, like, rug burn, my, my, my most... One of the thing I fear the most... Oh, I'm glad we, <laughs> we like, brought up... The fear the most. Did you <laughs> see the mat burn? Uh, oh, you didn't watch the, the event the other night. I'm trying to remember which fighter had this mat burn. His entire knee, dude, really? was, was exposed. Like, like it, it may have been... Ah, oh, shit. Which fighter was it? Like, I knew the fighter. I even typed it in. Like, I know the guy's name. Um, I, I'm going to I'm gonna look to see Anderson who I was talking Silva. about. It was a white guy, so you could really see it. Um, I'm going to do a search to see. Um, well, he does that. Yeah, I've uh, the airbags went off in my car, and uh, I had to, like, squish him or something. Like, I couldn't see. I didn't realize the airbag would take all the rooms, so you had to, like, get rid of it. Um it's gunpowder that sets that stuff off. And there was like hot black singed gunpowder out of the air holes. Cause you know, you hit it and air can like go out. And uh, yeah, I, I touched it and like, I don't say I burnt myself, but I touched it and found, I was like, Ooh, now I understand how people get burnt and fucked up by these things. I didn't, but, and that was the nineties too. So maybe airbags have changed, but uh, they're hot inside in my experience. Did you figure out the guy's name? I've never had to deal with one. Yeah. They totally, well, a lot of times when an airbag goes off, it's like, all right, now the dash is ruined on both sides. The steering wheel's ruined. Uh, the airbags themselves can be like $1,000 each. Your window's broken and something else is, like, airbags fuck up your car. 
And um, a lot of times they cause a total, because like, back in, I, I would have been driving during the periods where airbags were introduced. And there were some people that were like, ah, one fender bender in your car is ruined because the airbags do like $4,000 worth of damage on their own. But now that seems pretty awesome. Compared I can't to find it. God damn it. I, it was terrible, though. It was hmm. terrible. I, I was, it, was, it was the last event. Like, I, I remember. Last event was two women. Got, um, but there was, you know, there's lots of fights that night. It was one but of the But only other one fights. was the last. Of, oh, oh, the most. I understand. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, but only one was the last event. But you mean, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the whole thing. Yeah. They, uh, but, but I just remember it was this whole knee exposed from just the, you know, it's like rug burn, but it's matte burn because it's it that matte is like sandpaper. Oh, it was so bad. I, I just remember thinking like that. I'd rather get punched. I'd rather take a man punch than a bad mat matte burn. I don't want to get knocked unconscious. I don't want to be concussed. But I definitely take like a serious headache for the Chris rest Stewart. of the day over that terrible matte burn. Ah, it's the worst. That you and like take road a, rash. A bad headache over that. Yeah, man, because it's gonna heal. This is gonna crust over and scab over. You get it. I don't know about you, but I take long hot showers. Scabs melt in that. You hop out not thinking. First thing I do is put like my feet up on a on a on a little uh, uh, thing I've got in my bathroom and like towel down my hairy legs. I'd scrub that goddamn scab. Your right showers off my are knees. so hot. Your scabs are melting. Sure, is your it, scabs yeah. don't melt I, in the I shower. I feel like it's the. Length. I mean, I've never. It's, it's the not length, that. It's too. more like just don't scrub it. Well, I'm telling you, I'd hit it accidentally, scour drying off. Like the the scab would no longer work. I'd have to like dryer. Yeah. Sometimes my drying dryer. off is when I do it. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna work some of the edges in this dry off. You know, ah, it got ten percent smaller. That was my mission. Yeah. Point <laughs> <laughs> of that. Um, but Taylor but yeah, rug has map, burn, rug, r- road rash, all that shit. Taylor, I've been watching this. Oh, yes. Uh, oh my god. So this guy only got six games oh, for it. Shit. Oh, he got Did six you watch games? It, Kyle? Oh, I've seen this already. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah, is bullshit. Gets, did it cut six, him? Mm. It uh it almost took his eye out. So but basically Nyquist. It? Oh, I don't know. I don't I don't know if it cut him or not. But uh Spurgeon would play the next game. And then in the end of the gif, you can see Henrik or not Henrik, whatever his fucking name is. Yeah, maybe Henrik Zetterberg, the captain of Detroit, having to go stand next to the captain of Minnesota and talk to the ref about it. And he's making a total like Jim Halpert face of like, what am I supposed to do here? Defend that? Are you shitting me? Like, <laughs> I don't know. But you can, like, it, it's such shit because you can see Nyquist yeah, yeah. turn towards Spurgeon and be like, I'm going to, I'm going to blind you in one eye. He turns like, he towards him. Right at- <laughs> yeah, he looks at his face and then he hits him in the face with the tip of his stick. Uh, if you look right before he does that, uh, the guy had, um, I guess, cross-checked him, you know. And if people don't know, a th- push. there's a gap in your pads, like sort of in the mm-hmm. back of your rib cage, that hockey players know about and, and aim Ooh, for. Oh, we hit him in the fucking kidney, right? Like right about there. Yeah. Kidney, yep. bottom rib Lower cage. mid-back, yeah. by but the ribs. So there's a hip pad that comes now higher that I than see you might that. guess. Yeah, there's a hip pad that protects you, and then there's a chest protector. And he clearly cross-checked right in that naked spot. And yeah. uh, the guy gets up, hits him with the tip of his of his stick, and all right, so uh, overreacted. Let me, let me let me give my interpretation of this for <laughs> for all the other non hockey fans. It looks like to me that 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 t- a couple of players were fighting over the puck, and this guy comes from behind and deals as much damage as he can legally to so, to an op- opponent who was illegally who was like trying to get the, the yeah. puck. Hits him like in the back lower rib area with his stick. Like he's holding the stick with both hands, and he puts the middle of that stick in there. That would have hurt like a motherfucker. Um, I almost understand the rage that overcame that guy when he hit the guy in the face with his stick. But he should know better as a professional athlete who's playing that game that that's a big no-no. He should have just dropped that stick and fucking like hit him in the face with his fist, right? Like he should have he should have hit him with a with a fist. See that? Yeah, if he had turned around and tried to start a fight, he might have been able to. But like, I think where you're going to go with this, Woody, I bet we're on the same page. Is like, there are acceptable levels of dirtiness where it's like that's not legal, but you're playing fucking ice hockey in the NHL. It's going to happen if they think they could get in on you. And I guarantee that's not the first time that happened that game. That was not the last time. That happened 500 other times where you go in and the ref's not looking 100. You give him a big cross check right in the back. It's expected. What definitely only happened that game was a target. What only happened once that game was a targeted attack with your stick 
on someone's face. Like using yeah. your stick as a weapon is probably arguably the biggest off. faux pas in hockey. Like because yeah. if you if, if it's suddenly acceptable that everybody has a weapon in their hands, you get a lot of dead Canadians. Like because <laughs> <there. Like, laughs> that's not going to work. Trump's talking about a border wall in the north. <laughs> oh, and then of course like uh, Don Cherry. I think it was Don Cherry. Like the he's one of the. Uh, Cocky Night in Canada violence. announcers. Some can- Canadian guy will comment and correct me, but he has like a huge hate hard on for Russian players. You know, anybody who's not Canadian, he doesn't like, you know, he likes good old Ontario boys uh, and that kind mm. of thing. And his like first comment, if I recall, was like, oh, of course, this is the kind of thing you see from European players. Not quite <laughs> as physical, but always down with dirty shit. Or like, <laughs> not just saying dirty, but like, I don't know, it's funny watching like the funniness of an old bigot in big quotes <laughs> Canada where he's like hey we're all enjoying the same game over here but those fucking ruskies over there and all those <laughs> fellas and you're not playing it the same way you know we go dirty but we don't go we don't go too dirty you know That's they a, won't yeah. fight that, lives, but those oh, fucking stick in your face believe me that, that. You know, there's <laughs> there's the rules and then there's like sort of good. almost agreed upon outside <laughs> the rules like the first guy did and then there's yeah. not agreed upon. Like you can it, fight. It, there's what's expected. <clears throat> there's there, there, there's what's expected. There's what's what's not. Like I said, if he turned around and hit that guy so hard he knocked him unconscious, we'd all be talking about ah, you get what you get. Like like look at this guy. He was he was protesting in a highway. What do you expect? <laughs> this is what happens. Oh, you you hit him in the ribs in the back as hard as you could. That big large professional athlete man. Well, you got knocked the fuck out. But when you turn around and you like that stick could have gashed his face from nostril to like cheekbone. It, it easily could have. It could have taken his eyeball clean out. It could yeah, have witnessed. Ma- I feel like he, you know, it, that that's completely uncalled for. Um, although of course, it, and it did. It really did seem like you know you're doing something and something. Somebody hits you in the back, and he just turned around and, and didn't swing wildly. It's not that, so you can't excuse it. You can't say that like you know you see that in the movies where like a woman's like get off it, get off it, and the big guy turns around like ah, and like <laughs> knocks the chick flying, and she hits her head at just the right angle that she dies. Like that's not what happened here. He was like, who hurt me? You. Uh, ah, take that one to the face, cocksucker. Like, that's totally, or that in Russian. You know, that's yeah. totally what just happened. He, I think so he that's his, hit that oh, guy. He's, uh, Gustav Knight, he's from Holmstead, Sweden. <laughs> ah, oh, he hit him exactly like, like he meant to. I, it, to me, like, it, to he me, sure did. The, yeah. What he did with that stick is exactly what he was intending to Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, he may have hoped for more damage in that moment, though, because, <laughs> like, because like I, I I'm shocked that there wasn't a big nasty gash like UFC style, but it's like fl- laid open and they're like, like st- bottom of the nose. Like I wonder what the damage is. I didn't notice. I didn't think it was there. I thought it was like right it, here like, on the almost cheek. in like the orbital bone, like cheek yeah. area. Do you think? And the fact that hurt. he did it, you, like Jared game. Spurgeon. Like that doesn't mean anything if you don't know anything about hockey. But the guy he hit is not a bruiser or a brawler. He's one of the smallest guys in the NHL. He's five nine. That's. Oh, that is not big. It's shocking if you're a that some hockey player. It's shocking nobody comes in and like beats this guy up immediately, right? Like, why is nobody sticking up for their their five foot nine teammate? It hit I don't his know if, nose and kind of slid up, to his cheek. Like it, I don't know if he uh, actually got in a fight later. If they did it to Nyquist, or because they didn't kick him out of the game, the hmm. guy who did the spearing. But if they didn't get in a fight, I wager it's because Minnesota was winning. And if I you're hate winning. that officiating. That ruins a sport and a game and, and my whole respect for it and makes it all like count for naught. It would be like if you had played like an entire night of magic and you had a lot of respect for someone and then you found out that they, they were they, they were cheating. You know, you'd be like, ah, oh, well, all of that was for nothing. Like, like it didn't even count yeah. for anything. Like, like, like that's I, I hate bad officiating. It, it really turned me off that at that last UFC event when I when I felt like. They just weren't doing their goddamn job, and he was. I didn't talk about it on PKN as much, but but he was also stopping. Um, you know, they they, they they'll stand you up if you're mm-hmm. if you're not working, as they call it, or effective or actively doing damage. You know, and in, in the same damage, right advanced they, position. Yeah, they tell the guy on the bottom, hey, you've got to intelligently protect yourself. They tell the guy on the top, you've got to be like aggressively working and doing damage to this guy. You can't just put your body weight on him and hug him. But they were standing the fighters up constantly. Like these are high level jujitsu guys. Like they're working. They they got a goal in mind. Now in the Holly home fight, you could say that like, 
that she couldn't grapple with that girl. That girl was too much, too much bigger for her to grapple with. Like she, she bad, she was bad in the clinch. She didn't get anything done in the clinch. And that, like I keep saying, that that high crotch thing. She, she, Hollywood like squat down real low and 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 like with all of her might try to like lift Durandamy. And Durandamy like one foot would come off the ground this much, and then she'd like sit back down, and then it would go on for a while. But they they broke up Anderson Silva once, and they broke up another fight once that was on the ground. I, I didn't care for that New York officiating. I guess maybe it's easy to go after that because they are brand new to it, but it really does seem like they're doing stuff that we don't see normally, um, and, and it's frustrating for for someone who's watching two people fucking fight it out. That 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 cheap shot really still pisses me off, and more than the cheap, shot cheap was the reaction. That well, the first one in, was the one that mattered the most to me. The second one, it was it, is the second one should have been called and the point deducted, but not because it was impactful or even quite as intended. It was more at the end of a combo. I still think it was intentional. I still think she meant to throw those, but they look more... If you, 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 if you saw those uh, on their own, you wouldn't be screaming, take a point away. It's that first one, the one that hit her cleanly, staggered her, and then Durandamy, like sticks her tongue out and goes, whoops! <laughs> like, no, no, you're in a championship fight. Like, there are millions of us watching you right now. We all saw you make that face while you punched the, the like, crowd favorite illegally b- between the bell. It, like, like, like you. of course, it's going to be a shitty day for you to wear that bell because we're all going to treat you like a piece of shit who doesn't deserve it because that's what you are. She wants to like, fight Holly again, and she wants to avoid Cyborg. And it's weird because like, Bisping wants to fight GSP. Uh, for people that don't know, GSP was the champion at 170 for a long time. Maybe one of the best fighters uh, ever to fight. Um, but at 185, you, I, I think he's smaller than Bisping. But that would be the, the fight. Um, and then there's this guy, Yol Romero, who is an absolute... I was going to call him a gorilla. It's somehow racist. But he's, 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 a, he's a perfect specimen of a human being, clearly yeah. on steroids. Mm. Or a very weak gorilla, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, he has the strength of a sickly gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> He, he, if you watch this guy, he, and he's also like 38 now, I think, and uh, he looks like he's 21 or something. Like he's just perfect as a human. And uh, Bisping would have a tough fight with him, and he's like, "I'll fight the guy weight class down. That's the money fight." And I give him a pass for it. On the other hand, this 145 chick who I don't like wants to fight Holly again and avoid Cyborg. And it's like, "You pussy, put it up." You know, Cyborg wants to wants a piece of your ass. You're the champ. Deal with it. I I didn't like the result of the Bisping uh, Anderson Silva fight. You know that was enough horse shit on Bisping to to be to to like not give him any uh like like anthology fights or, or anything I did like, like the that. Fight. I like, thought that was a. Fair... What about that knee? That 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 knee? He was unconscious. He was I... laying there unconscious. Anderson's like up on the ring on, on the side of the cage. Like yeah, I won. He, I, I knocked he got out saved by Bisping. the bell. But he was unconscious when the bell went off that that's not how it works like I, I, that should, it should be though right like, like, so, so, so how does it how does it work like, <laughs> let me ask you this if you knock the guy unconscious and then the bell rings after that 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 that, that doesn't work I, I, no i think the, if the doctor can stop it but he didn't basically i think the rule is he needs to answer the next bell and he did and he won the next it just, round it just seemed like anderson silva scored a knockout knockouts don't me. win like a fight, you can get knockouts and still lose, right? Like, like you know, if I they call it a flash knockout, and they happen all the time, right? They knock the guy out, he's on Queer Street, he lays on his back, and then sometime while the guy's following up, he sort of comes to defends himself. Knockouts don't win fights. Like you got, you need you a look stoppage. At the video. Oh, I've it seen just, it like it just, thirty times. Oh, I believe that you yeah, have, yeah. but but I disagree with you, and I'm so I'm t- so I'm telling anyone who might be hearing you I'm right now that like, on. all right, folks, go watch this shit real quick. Um, <laughs> there's these two guys fighting, and one of them knocked the other one the fuck out, and then some little guy in a suit rang a bell, and because <laughs> of that, he said that the other guy didn't get knocked out. It, that's what it feels like to to me anyway, because Anderson runs to the and jumps up on the cage, and he's like, yeah, I knocked out Michael Bisbing, but in his terrible English, and they're running over to him, please, Anderson, like literally like this, please, Anderson, get down. The fight has to keep going. They're trying to like say this to him in like broken English and whatever Portuguese this guy knows. He's like, please come down. You have to continue fighting. The British man is recovering we have to speed this up like he's getting better by every second that we delay this and 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 then he comes back and he and he fucking loses to bisping and i don't care for bisping it, i don't either bisping um is sharp-tongued 
he uh, he says a lot of shit. <laughs> Kyle's doing his big impression. He's got uh, eyes that don't match. Um, <laughs> and he, he says a lot of shit that, uh, mm-hmm. that, that like, would make you hate anyone else. But anyone who's played Call of Duty knows British people talk great shit. Like, if, if a British person would talk shit to me, I would just submit. You know, like, I, I don't operate on that level. They're witty cunts. And you, I, I, I just fucking British people out shit talk me and and bisping is no different you know he he just he does his chitter chatter he says the things that get under your skin and you can either hate him for it or kind of realize what a cheeky cut he is bisping is an analyst or a commentator (laughs) who's going to find that out real soon like as soon as they make him fight the best in his weight class because he is not the best in his weight class he is just really good he did beat the best in his weight class Right? I'm with you. Like, I, I think one time out of ten, he beats Luke Rockhold. But he this knocked guy, him out. Like, he like knocked Taylor, him out. This, the thing is that there's this guy who's a champion of a pretty prestigious weight class, and mm-hmm. he just shouldn't be for some reason. And I we know. can't really... You can't, like, you can't Somehow. be like, oh, well, well, he shot that guy before the guy could even get in the fight. Cheating. It's not quite that. But it's just that, like every step of the way, you don't like how he gets it done. Yeah. It, it, it so, feels like things are going Can wrong. I lay it out a little bit? Sure. Yeah. So Luke Rockhold is scheduled to fight. Uh, is it Weidman? Do you remember? He's scheduled to fight somebody. And uh, that other person pulls out. On two weeks notice, they say, Bisping, do you want to fight the champion? Bisping's on like a movie set. He's keeping in shape, but he's, he's literally, and he's like, yeah, I'll do it. Anybody, anywhere. Give me a shot at Luke Rockhold. Luke Rockhold, they had fought before. Luke Rockhold knocked him out in the second round, right? It's as if they're different levels of fighter. And Bisping coming up to it is like, hey, this is a different fight. You know, we're starting even again. I don't really care what happened last time. So Luke Rockhold has a full camp. He's completely in shape. He's all ready. He was preparing to fight for the last couple of months. Bisping, on the other hand, is like, yeah, I should be able to make weight on two weeks' notice. Does. And he knocks out Luke Rockhold in the second, I think. I'm not positive about that. But he knocks him out with a left hook. And uh, so undeniably he won. It wasn't a controversial decision. It wasn't cheap. There was nothing against the rules. Everyone who knows uh, MMA kind of thinks Bisping would win that fight one time out of 10, but it happened. And yeah. Bisping didn't even earn a title shot. You know, how did Bisping get a title shot? Well, it was in England, so they kind of like him for that. And I think it was. I'm not positive about that. And, it was um, awake. And, and he, <laughs> that was it. And he, he said yes. You know, a lot of people, you offer him a title shot on two weeks' notice, and they say no. Right? Oh, no. Nick Diaz just turned to fight. Yeah. The, uh, Dana, I love that Dana calls these like braggadocious mm-hmm. fighters out. You know, of course, every fighter, like professional fight, fighter wants to, they're like rappers in a way. You know, the rapper wants to, to come out and be a businessman at, at one time, but he also wants you, his, his constituents, the people buying these albums, to think, I'm still a fucking drug dealer. Mm-hmm. I do criminal shit. It, it was almost like that. Um, it, uh, how have I lost my train of thought? I, uh, people well, who turn down fights. Um, yeah, yeah. So you got someone like Nick Diaz, who's like, of course, he's one of these guys, the Diaz brothers are. He's like, anybody, anywhere, like, like bare knuckle brawling, as soon as it starts paying well, bear, fighting bears with like curved like mm. hand blades, Katanas. if that paid $100,000 a night, I would be your bear fighter, man. Like, but then, you know. And then they offer like, him oh. fights, and he turns him down one after he turned down Dana's, Lawler, Dana's, and he turned down Woodley, I think. I don't know. It, it was 209. It was, this, it was this last event. He was supposed to go in there and fight someone. That would, that would be Woodley. And I think he also oh. turned down Lawler. Oh, he, I wouldn't want to fight Tyrone Woodley either. Then, well, then I, if I would, there's a belt on the line, it'd be a big money fight, and he turned it down. Are you I, badass or not, Nick Diaz? You know, don't be scared, I, homie. So Woodley's a scary fucking guy. Like, like whenever I... Like, like I, I, Ty, Conor McGregor has a better chance... Conor McGregor can't deal with Tyrone Woodley. I remember when he was calling him out after the the last Nate Diaz. That's just not going to work. That's just not going to work. I got a lot of confidence in Conor, and I really like him. I don't think he can beat up Tyrone Woodley. I don't think it'll be even be close. I think there's about 15 extra pounds of muscle on Tyrone Woodley that says it won't. I hear you, but there's just not a lot of money to be made betting against Conor McGregor. You know, so, not so far, not so far. But, yeah. but you know. We'll see if he if this whole Mayweather thing yeah, happens. Yeah. I'd love to see so, if it so, does. So anyway, uh, Bisping doesn't yeah. earn a title shot, but takes it because he said yes. Beats the champ. Now, like the seventh best fighter in the division is somehow the champ. 
all the six guys above him are like, this is so embarrassing. I can't believe Weidman's you know, the champ and not me. It would give me my shot. Everybody wants him. But then he fights Dan Henderson, which is kind of a, you know, the, it was a, uh, Dan Henderson was not the number one contender by far. Beats the guy. Dan Henderson had previously knocked out Bisping. He's what fucked his eye up, I think. And, um, uh, but, you know, gets his defense. It's cool. Now it looks like he might get another easier Bullshit than fight. number one contender fight. Yeah, if he yeah, fights GSP it's... from a weight class below and doesn't have to fight Yul Romero, who's a killer, then that's really interesting. Yeah, it's it's it, there's a, if I were a champ, <laughs> I tell you what, I would be doing my best to not fight the number two, right, or the number one contender. I guess you would say I don't want to fight the Khabibs of the world, Habibs of the world. I don't I don't want I don't want the uh, the Tyrone. I don't I don't want someone like Woodley, a killer, like some. That I want to fight the number six or seven guy, or maybe like like what he's suggesting, like oh, we could make a lot of money. Bisping versus GSP, all those old fans who haven't maybe bought a paper pay per view in, in, in you know ten or twelve years, they're gonna buy a GSP fight. Oh, this will be great. And he's got a good point. It will be great. It will make I, a lot of money. You bring a good point, and especially with the GSP thing, I think you take that fight. Yeah. But if you're a champ who wants if you're a fighter who wants the toughest fighter available all the time, that's why McGregor's the man. McGregor's the man for two reasons. One, he speaks pretty well. Two He's like anybody, fucking anybody. Like, you know, he's on his run up the 145. He just give me the toughest guy who doesn't have a fight booked. He, every time he fights it, Chad Mendez comes along, right? Because uh, Aldo pulled out. He says, he doesn't say, no, no, no. I don't want to risk my title shot. And he's an American wrestler who was supposed to be like the, the, the antidote for Connor's poison. And yeah. no, he takes on an American wrestler, knocks him out, takes on Aldo, knocks him out. Then who does he want next? RDA. RDA pulls out, he gets Diaz, uh, Diaz doesn't want to fight at 155, um, so he, McGregor says, fuck it, I'll fight him at 170, I don't give a fuck, we'll fight him at any weight, they fight at 170, he loses, so what does he want again? The thing that he just lost, right, that he wants Nick Diaz at 170 pounds, wins that, who's he take on next? The champion at 145, Conor McGregor would say yes to Woodley, like, it, it, Conor McGregor, it, it like, Dude, he says yes. He'll say yes to Mayweather in boxing rules. That, it, that's why he's awesome. That's why people don't like Woodley. Woodley is always looking for some easier fight. Yeah, I, that's, that, that's the kind of champion I would be too because you want to you wear that crown as long as you can and get those endorsement deals and make some money. Um, it, it's a it, mix because you can either be a stupid champion for a long time who dodges fights or you could be Conor McGregor who everyone just adores because they say yes. Chuck Liddell was another guy, right? Chuck Liddell is what, like two or three defenses? Like, it, I, I'm probably low on that. But um, people still remember him as you know the ice man. He was the champ. Why? Dude, he took the hardest fight he could find all the way on his run up to the title and while he had the title. He didn't dodge Randy Couture, Tito Ortiz. Like, he went after these guys. Yeah, you don't want to be seen as, as like dodging fights and taking <clears throat> shitty fights but 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 if you can do something that's in the middle like picking a marquee name to go after mm. or or a freak fight a, you know like like a, a weird kind of like i mean i feel like connor's doing that a little bit with this uh this whole mayweather thing i feel like he should be in there getting ready for whoever's about to win between um uh habib and um ferguson um ferguson who's a real killer himself mm -hmm. um you know he that should be his focus like a laser beam but it's it's certainly not it's it's making a hundred million dollars in one night that's his focus right now um and, and hey maybe maybe i'm uh, an idiot maybe may, because one of the, one of us is about to make a hundred million dollars and it's probably conor mcgregor yeah i i find him fascinating man like interesting, I, I think I think we're gonna see him lose, and we're gonna see it, it, it soon enough. Like, like I don't think he can beat Mayweather, and I think when he comes back, Habib is gonna beat him. And uh, I, I don't know who he fights after that, but I, they probably find someone he that that that'll be an easy one. And I, I don't see his career going higher than it is right now. I think he's peaked. I think he's peaked, and and now we're gonna see either a plateau or a slow decline, or it may be some 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 bumps and waves where like he loses one, wins two, loses one. I just don't see him coming. He's not going to beat Mayweather. Uh, and when he comes back, he's not going to beat Habib. So I think you might be right. But um, he's 29, so he shouldn't peak for another two, two and a half years, something like that. I don't mean his body. I mean his star. I, 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 think, I think that I, things are changing. Right. So the, the problem is, is he going to go 
Rocky four on this Rocky five, where he just you know, buys robots and, uh, you know, does rich people stuff and stops caring yeah. about fights. Hard to get up and run when you're sleeping in silk sheets. Right. So, so that's, I think happening to him. Um, uh, but the thing is, he's Conor McGregor, and he does shit you don't expect. I thought he was going to lose to Alvarez. I thought he was going to lose to somebody else, too. Mendes. I thought Cole Miller might have beat him. Did I say Mendez? I don't know. Yeah. But um, Conor wins. I, I, here's what I hope happens. Here's what I hope happens. I hope he goes in with Mayweather, right? He's not taking a ton of damage, but he's losing, you know, like because Mayweather's so defensive, and he just makes people look bad. And then he starts cheating. You know, a good old kick to the thigh, a uh, uh, roundhouse spinning May- shit. If, if Mayweather got kicked in the fucking <coughs> thigh, he would react in a way we've never seen a fighter. Because fighters just fucking, that didn't hurt. And sometimes a fighter will then immediately plant that leg that just got hit and, and like move to like show like not only does it does it not hurt. I think you loosened it up a bit. Thanks a lot. <laughs> like, 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 but, but, but Mayweather would be like, oh, oh, oh. He'd be like calling, like, 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 get my doctor over here. My doctor, Steven, Steven, come here, look. <laughs> like, 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 like Dude, he would, he the, would react. Most people think Conor McGregor will lose a, a boxing match to um, Mayweather, and that's fair. But nobody thinks Mayweather can beat up McGregor. Like, you no. just take away the rules, no put them in an alley, allow eye gouges. I don't give a fuck. May, Mayweather gets crushed. First of all, McGregor's bigger. He's a good bit bigger than, um, than yeah. uh, Mayweather. That, McGregor is bigger than Mayweather. I hope I said it right. Um, but, you know, like, you just make it a fight where you can take a guy down, where you can kick, where you can, like, do fight shit. Conor McGregor just, it's his easiest fight in his whole he career. He's a superior combatant in all ways. Yeah, for he, sure. he, he'll have it's, never had an easier fight career long than he would against yeah, Mayweather. And, and it's because of that that I think that even if Conor loses, that won't diminish his star in any way. It would be like if he went out and lost at softball or baseball. It's, 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 not, it's, it's almost comparable, almost. I hear you. you. Know? Yeah, yeah. Because, because it's, it's, it's a fighting sport, but it's certainly not. What Conor does as a fighting sport is, is virtually just combat because there are a so better few example would be what if connor went out and lost a brazilian jiu-jitsu tournament would that i wouldn't ruin his star to me it was brazilian jiu-jitsu like i yeah. get that they're both kind of fighting it depends who he loses to if he loses to yeah. like the the champion from ohio state then you're like oh god damn he can't even beat that collegiate guy who's you, you know like that that's <laughs> a shame but if he goes up against like we always see there's there's one guy I can't think of his name but they uh, Joe Rogan's always like this guy is a world champion jiu-jitsu master like he makes black belts tap he makes black belts look like fools he does things that people other people don't do he's been doing it to, you know if that guy wh- beats you in jits you're like oh well what did you expect I'm I'm Conor McGregor I, I'm I'm, a, I'm the two belt champ not the jiu-jitsu champ Dude, if you want me to be start start making it pay more you I, know, like, <laughs> i've entered one brazilian jiu-jitsu competition and i entered in two events for the same day i got a gold and a bronze and the one guy that beat me was an ohio state wrestler <laughs> it. <laughs> it was like oh gotta bring that shit up thanks kyle <laughs> you, you can't <laughs> no. even beat this ohio state i want a punk punk <laughs> <laughs> I, but I'm just saying, you know, it looks bad if you're Conor McGregor. Just in yeah, the yeah, same yeah. way. Like, he like, cheated, by the way. I want to put this out there. He um, Checked I, your oil, didn't he? <clears throat> no. He didn't I, my neck was already sore. and um, uh, Because what people would do neck cranks, but I was like, this is just a pain move. Fuck it. You know, I'll, I'll wait it out and then continue on. And I would get injured too much. I'd probably be smarter today. So I went in there with this neck injury, and the fucker just, like, he neck cranked me all match long and like he didn't do much he couldn't advance position or anything he just sort of held me down in this neck crank and i think healthy me would have been able to like resist more but wounded neck me was like are you seeing this shit like you can't do this and the ref never called it and he just let it sort of continue all match long and i lost on points yeah well that's a shame but yeah if you're conor mcgregor and you lose the guy from ohio state (coughs) he's supposed to win Um, i guess He's supposed to win, I think. I think he is. Um, but, 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 but I don't know. Combat sports are great. I, I love that you get a winner and a loser. That's why I was so upset after the Holly Holm fight. It's like, hey, I don't get what I came here for. Because while I think that Durandamy tonight was the better fighter, I don't think she deserves the win. Because we punish like people who cheat in, in the world of good and evil. And we don't let them walk away with the belt and the money and the endorsements and, and leaving our, you know, kind hero over here beaten and bloody and crying like like it just feels wrong it didn't mm. feel like we got the, the correct resolution at the end of that fight 
Um, not not correct as far as right and wrong. It just feels like the judges did the wrong thing. It, I wanted another round or something. I don't know what I wanted. I, I, I wanted them to do it all over again. Which So I'm glad there's going to be a rematch of that. I certainly hope there is. And I hope Holly wins the next time. I like the way and, you said there's a winner and a loser. Like, I, Because I know Joe... I feel like I have uh, like I'm more in touch with behind the scenes than I otherwise would be, and uh, like a guy loses and the camera points at the winner, right? That guy might still be on the ground, not moving or something. He could be knocked out. He could be on a stool, having a difficult time staying on that stool. He's so you know suffering, but the camera doesn't show that. And now. I am always looking at the loser. I'm always very interested in like the damage done and the life and the career of, of both guys. And it, it's in, it's such a win lose business. The loser. Did you see when Conor McGregor was doing his like live stream event and they, or no, it was a different thing. He was being interviewed and they showed tape of him like knocking some guy. I don't remember if it was, maybe it was Chad Mendez or, or whoever mm-hmm. that was. That was the good wrestler that he, t- that he took out. And we felt like the guy didn't, put his game plan into, into, into effect or whatever. And he's watching the guy like knocked out on the ground. They're playing that part. And he's like, I don't like to look at this stuff. You know, it's, was it Eddie you know, Alvarez? May, it may have been, but he was looking at his opponent at that. He was watching video of him knocking mm-hmm. out another guy. He's like, I don't like to look at these things. You know, he's like, we, we, we are all professionals and we come here to fight and, you know, we promote a fight, but I, I don't, I don't really like this. I don't, I don't, I don't like this. Cause it's showing, you know, his opponent beaten and bloody and like, hurt emotionally and physically. Yeah. And it was nice to kind of see that from him, you know? You know like, 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 interesting. So um, coming up is Khabib versus Ferguson. And Khabib yeah. said he was going to break his arm. And Ferguson is like, break my arm? Like, I've got a little kid that I hold with that arm. We just had a baby. And I was like, you're not supposed to be scared of that. You're supposed to be like, oh, bring it. I got more arms. You know, like, like, <laughs> you're, like you're supposed to. I think he did I'll say something. I'll grow a new arm and punch it with that. But it was like, you know, don't break my arm. Like, that, that, that's just not nice, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, like, like I don't know. I, He's like, it wasn't nice when Soviets bombed my country in the 80s. We do not care. I lose little brother. Like, like, like that's, that's his kind of lifestyle in fucking Dagestan over there. I'm telling you, Habib is, I, I, Coco Diaz kept saying Khabib, and it's gotten into my head, and I'm saying it, and now you're saying it, but you don't pronounce the K. Habib is, a, is just... He seems like a Spartan warrior from the outside looking in. That at least that's his hype tape, right? That's mm-hmm. that's what we're led to believe from this twenty victory and twenty is it twenty and zero or twenty three and zero? It's one or the other. Like Must this crazy yeah. undefeated like Russian from Dagestan who trains at altitude and under military uh, conditions with a father who's a champion in three martial arts like sambo and jits and uh, another thing and you know he's. He, he's just a killer who who's like so motivated. And you look at that Michael Johnson fight, I think it was, where he's he's punishing a guy who who is a is a contender, a great fighter. And he's just he's he's telling him, he's telling the fighter he's beating up, he's like, You gotta quit. You gotta quit. You know I deserve this title shot. You know what? Quit. And Michael Johnson gets out this little bullshit like slap. And he's like, oh, you should. All right, then. I see how it is. And he's just like, forearm, forearm, forearm. And it's just like, that's the guy who's kind of coming for Conor McGregor. The guy who, while he's beating up a world champion level contender, he's looking at the boss of the UFC going, give me Conor. Give me fucking Conor. And he's like, you finish that guy first. And he's like, oh, I am. <laughs> when I'm done playing with him. Like, like, like that, Huge that's what build that up. fight was. Very interesting. Um, Ferguson might be a, like. Ferguson's a bad mother. Habib, Ferguson's a bad motherfucker yeah, too. They Habib both are. That's why it's great. All these wins, but not many of them are over people I know. Exactly. That's why I say the hype machine of Habib, mm-hmm. because because he could be a, a like a, a, a you know he, he could have this tasty shell on the outside, but we don't know that like Habib's had eighty five concussions since he was thirteen because of his father's regimen, and now if he gets tapped by that left of Connor or Ferguson's hook. He's going to go to sleep like that. We don't know. We haven't seen him take a championship level blow to the fucking head. We haven't seen if he can duck a kick. We just don't know. We haven't seen him against the best of the best, but we will. And I'm afraid for Connor because I think he is good. I hope um, we will. I hope we will. Because I watched him wrestle that bear and I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I pretended like that wasn't just like horse shit for the camera. Like, <laughs> like, I was like, he just found that bear that day, too. <laughs> He's just playing with the little one. He killed the mama. <laughs> I always say this, but. You know, when the Patriots played the Falcons, you knew you'd get that game, right? Even if Tom Brady got hurt, they'd still play. 
uh, with yeah. Habib versus Ferguson. I hope it happens. I think it's going to happen. They so they both seem like the type who are like both of them are thinking in there. I think both of them want Connor. No, no one more than Habib, I don't think. But 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 I, I think they're going to fight e- even with some nagging injury or something. They'll have to get hurt. Hurt. Habib's I missed think a lot me. of fights. You know that guy's yeah? made of glass. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. I hope it happens as well. Uh, I'm looking forward to it uh, a lot. It's probably the biggest one on my radar right now. I guess. Um, of course, Cyborg. Do you know? They should. W- Woodley Wonderboy is a neat one. Yeah, yeah, that is a one. I, I think Wonderboy will win that, and I and I and I can't wait. Um, uh, Woodley, I I think Wonderboy will win that, and I can't wait. Uh, that'll be a good fight. That's um, a close one. I don't know. I don't like Cyborg at all. Like like man, she's hard to look at, and and I know that like it's it's the first instinct of like an MMA fan. This scenario it seems to be like ah, Cyborg will redeem us. She will make this right. Mm-hmm. She will settle the. The, the black this. and white in the world, you know, she'll make it she'll make it all correct again. But will she like I think you're just seeing like one villain riding riding in and taking the mantle from another villain, if you yes. will. And meanwhile, Holly is still over there, you know, three and oh and three. Um, it, so so I think what what you really want, if you're if you think about it hard, is for Holly to come back better than she was before this time with some better clinch games some better grappling work and hopefully better takedowns. Because like she she seemed to have nothing but that high crotch. There was never a double leg attempt. There was there wasn't I, I, there weren't attempts to. I, I would have liked to have seen her combine like some high kicks with then some takedown attempts. Like 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 to sort of mix it up so that mm. she could get something going. Because she, her kickboxing versus Durandaby's Muay Thai, it seemed like or it, it was Muay Thai, right? That she's a champion of. I think so. I think uh, maybe I said Taekwondo at one point, but I think it was Muay Thai. Um, I, I think that the Muay Thai's. Her Muay Thai was better than the, the, than her than kickboxing. kickboxing. It seemed, than her American kickboxing. It just seemed that way. I didn't um, watch like that did, fight. That question mark kick was sick, though. Like, <laughs> like, like I love that. I love that. That would have been such a great highlight, real moment. Like they'd have put that clip right in there with the one of her KOing Ronda, and uh, it would have been beautiful. Uh, it's it's a damn shame she didn't win that I fight. I think what you want is for Holly to somehow <sighs> win, and then Cyborg to test positive again. And now yeah. we have now we've got what we want. That's exactly what I want because I don't think cyborgs should be allowed to fight other women. Um, I, I think Holly probably cheats. When you too. say other women, are you implying cyborgs a girl? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I think if you, t- I think that there are certain tests that that like a doctor would be like, oh, this isn't a man. Oh, but 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 you know, she was born a woman. She's she's got the the genetics of a woman, regardless of her horm- hormone levels. Um, I, I think that Holly probably has done a, a bit of doping herself, but she hasn't done so much that she has turned into a, 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 a superhuman or anything like Cyborg has. Women deadlifting 300 pounds is so fucking unnatural, and, and, and you have to be insane to think anything different. That is crazy unnatural for a woman to be deadlifting 300 pounds. That's outrageous, especially, interesting especially is- a, not a woman shaped like that. She's it's using this big it. hoss of a woman who does that. The whole world wants her to make 135, and she's still packing on more muscle. It's yeah, like, yeah. what are you doing? She's like, yeah. I'm going to be the first lightweight women's champion. That's what's coming. <laughs> like, like she, needs to be, she needs to be fighting at 155. She really does. She really does. There's no um, 140, Because 145 is what she was fighting in Pride, right? Like, like, and, and that was... In that Invicta. was a real serious cut for her. Invicta, is that what it was? Okay. Yeah. I, I watched a, a few of those fights because with the, the UFC fight pass thing, you got all those fights. It's really cool to go back and like, mm-hmm. you know, see, see, see what's going on. But <sighs> I, I got no love for Cyborg. I don't want to see her win anything. I'd be fine if she was out of the sport. She's just, she's, she's on the same level as a Brock Lesnar. She is the female Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, the they're thing bad is, for the sport. Bad I feel for like there MMA. are males who can fight Brock Lesnar. I just don't see a woman in the world who can fight Cyborg. Like, she's cheated too much. It's too far. That's true. That, that, that she has the... She has... Uh... Yeah, that's absolutely true. You know, yeah, Shane I agree. Carlin, she's, she's gone who's too also and big she on vitamins, you know, is, uh, you know was, was Brock Lesnar's size. Uh, Overeem, also huge on vitamins, I guess, uh, beat Brock Lesnar. Um, was it Mark Hunt? Whenever I see Mark Hunt roll out, I'm like, is that the hot dog man? <laughs> <laughs> Did the hot dog man stumble on, into the octagon? And oh, 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 the hot dog man has hit him hard. Mm. Oh, the hot dog man hits hard. <laughs> That's every time I, I watch think, a Mark Hunt fight. <laughs> I want to say Kane beat Lesnar, but Hunt lost to Lesnar. 
at, at UFC 200, I think. Mark and, Hunt just has this physique yeah, that's not that of a dude, pres- but he hits so goddamn I, Another hard. guy you like, Roy Nelson. Same thing. Well, Roy Nelson's got like a big belly, and yes. when he wins, he gets up on like the uh, the ring of the edge of the octagon, like sits on it, and he rubs that belly like a Mortal Kombat character. Yeah. Like, remember, like you'd win in Mortal Kombat, and that one guy like does some like drunken kung fu, and then tips up his big like um 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 like gourd of liquor or whatever. Like We're that's not Roy Nelson. E Honda in Street Fighter, are we? Yeah, I am. Yeah, are yeah. We? He gets up there and like he's like rubbing that big Buddha <laughs> belly. Like, like like rubbing it for luck. It's it's yeah. just silly. He's too overweight. But Mark Hunt, he comes in kind of looking like dog shit himself. But he's he's on a higher level than, or at least he was, or it kind of still is, I guess maybe than yeah. than than, than uh, big country. I wonder how his lawsuit's going. He sued the UFC about because Mark, Mark Hunt had a string of guys who were positive for steroids, and, and he's not using any. R- yes, it would seem that way, and um. And now he's suing the UFC for, according to him, knowingly put him in there against cheaters. And I hope he wins. It would set a wonderful I, precedent. That should be the precedent. It should be that like, if this organization knowingly pits one human being against another in a combat sport, wow, when one of them clearly is, is doing illegal substances and that are giving him not only an illegal advantage and an unfair advantage, but the potential to create bodily harm to this other guy, then, then they should be liable for for that, and they should pay through the through the teeth. I don't like that they did that to him and to a lot of other people. And it's they even did it to Jones too. John it's Jones. It's twofold. It's twofold if they make someone fight cyborg. It's it's just as bad. You shouldn't, regardless of what a fighter says, because what they're supposed to say is, "I'll fight anybody." They're, it's their it's their job to say that. It, it's the it's the it's the responsibility of the UFC not to put someone in there with someone who is fucking superhuman like cyborg is it, it she's not like the rest of us she has done huge amounts of chemical alteration to her physique and anatomy and she's not like us anymore she and it's not like you could just take the drugs away from her 100 percent and put her on like you know beans and and beef and to do the same to holly home and put them out in the desert like no because cyborg can't survive anymore as a regular human being without drug therapy to make up for what she's done to herself because of the chemical alteration. This is some sci-fi shit. This is what Bane's problem was in Batman. <laughs> he'd, been, he'd been pumping that shit into his <laughs> fucking juggler for so long that he just had a, a, a constant supply of it. That's what cyborg is. You take her fucking, you pull the hose out, wait six weeks, and then let's fight. It's, I don't like Cyborg. She's a cheater. I don't like Brock Lesnar. He's a cheater that, that probably brain damaged Mark Hunt. Um, I, I, don't, I don't like that stuff. I don't Difficult like the cheating. Difficult to detect on Mark Hunt. The guide is not on fucking... Like, those things <laughs> cut your... And I know you know it, but, but you know they, they really lower your fat content. It's hard to be a chubby bastard while also being a professional fighter and being on steroids. You've got to pick one or the other. Mm-hmm. Like, like you just you can't be, have a Mark Hunt physique while being on, not steroids, not testosterone, certainly. Mark Hunt is Samoan, I think. And, he uh, is. He's got a genetic uh, uh, predilection to being a little chunky, I think. But tell that to The Rock. Good point. Well, The Rock is on uh, good. plenty of He's pets. also on the vitamins. Yeah. Also on the vitamins. That's yeah. a good point. You've seen Channing Tatum lately? No. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, wait. Is Channing the one who's in the new Baywatch with The Rock? Who's the guy that's in there with him? It's, uh, it's the other, like... Uh, Pretty boy, like muscle man. What's his name? Um, yeah, Channing the, Tatum the, fits this. It's not who you think. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I know he does. But um, it's the the new Baywatch guy. His his Rogan was discussing whether he was on. Let's see, Baywatch. Is it Channing? No. I don't know. It's I know Alexandria Daddario is in there. Who has got to be my favorite? Uh, watch it for the plot moment. Of mm-hmm. this decade, ah, just just getting super naked in that show. Ah, what so what many show gifts. are we talking about? Um, True Detective season one. Alexandra Daddario is oh. the aired huge boob. Say no more. Woman <laughs> who gets, gets naked. Oh my god, it's just you it's already just, pulled that from a file. Oh yeah, that one. That, you know what? Like Zac Efron. You've got the ones uh, in favorites. <laughs> exactly that. I was trying to put it right. You know, you've got the book on the top of the shelf, and you've got the folder on the desk. That's folder on the desk. Yep, the, the book doesn't get touched much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That one's There's too much good stuff in that long-term folder. Long-term memory, the, 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 the hot files are right here. 
Man, I'm a huge fan of Alexandria Daddario. <coughs> She's borderline perfection. Just, just, just very, very beautiful, beautiful woman. But yeah, here's oh. Zac Efron for for Baywatch. Um, I think he's been hanging out with The Rock and The Rock's doctor. Dude, this guy is insanely fit. He's always been insanely fit. Yeah, he has. That's what, that's what Joe Rogan said when they asked if he was on steroids. Joe's like, I don't know. He's always been in great shape. If he did X, Y, and Z, he could do this without steroids, sure. I, I, I just have to believe. I don't know. He's like an action figure. Why would he guy. is the answer. Why would he do this without help when The Rock is clearly doing crazy things with help? Like, I... I, you know, I'm, I, it, there's nothing to be ashamed of if he used some drugs to achieve this because it's not like he shot up and then became this. He shot up and then worked out every single day for five to seven hours a day for years. That's what he did. And I'm just right. saying. With, if people don't know, and I'm not an expert expert, but what the drugs allow you to do is recover. They make working out fun because you could just blitz your body, get a great feeling of satisfaction, and then blitz it again tomorrow. You're ma- and you're maximizing potential. It's the recovery. It's that yeah. the, maybe each rep gives you a little – you get a little more out of each rep. Uh, but, but then that's just the testosterone stuff that has to do with, you know, well, lots of stuff. But, but you know, the building of muscle and, and the forming of muscle proteins and stuff. But then there's HGH and all the blood doping stuff. Uh, there's so much you can do to make your body just work better. Uh, yeah. He's got to be on, and he's, he's certainly got a dietitian gotta and 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 personal trainers. Like that's incredible, though. He's achieved an action figure level of physical perfection. Yeah, yeah. It it, it it's ridiculous, ridiculous. Yeah. I, I well, he's gonna I, make a folder of him now. How did he get in here? <laughs> what the hell happened? <laughs> but, yeah, no. He he. Like, I I can hardly think of many people as fitness. You know who's he's not as big. But um, the dude from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the brother, he's a uh, the... he's blonde. Oh, that guy. Um, yeah, you, you mean think? the vampire? The vampire from Buffy? Mm, the blonde Spike. Wait, did I say Buffy? You said no, Buffy. I made a mistake. I'm going for what's the Late? one with like Snoozy or something? Uh, True Blood. True, True Blood. Blood. Snooky. Right. Snooky. So I'm Snooky. Snooky's brother. Snooky's brother. Snooky's brother. What's his Snooky. name? Snooky. Snooky. Oh. What's, What's oh, her brother, um, Jason, Jason Stackhouse. Yes. Jason Stackhouse yes. is, uh, I don't know why we're talking about hot guys, but here we are. Um, that guy is, is in my mind, like, I don't know if he quite keeps up with um, uh, Zach Efron. Well, El Seed from the show, the guy who transformed into a werewolf who was dating Sookie for a while, he had a lot. He really, He could really pack on the mass. He seemed... To have all of the very low fat content, but also much bigger and bulkier uh, and a larger frame than a Jason Stackhouse. What impressed me about Jason Stackhouse is this show had like an eight year run. Yeah. And he was like this for all eight years. The whole eight years. Yeah. And his character was was like that. His character was vain, always working out. So they like worked it in. Like he's always cranking out push ups. And like (laughs) if you watch Psych, um, the main character in Psych, I I don't recall his name clearly gets chubby over the course of that show. You know, six years later, it looks like he entered his 30s and, and likes food. Um, and I feel like that happens to a lot of actors, you know. The, the thing goes on, and it's like, wow, I almost forgot how hot Monica was when the show started. Val or, Kilmer. Poor Val Kilmer. Oh, I wish poor the best. Val Kilmer. Come yeah. on, Val. You need... I- you need the FPS boot cam. That's what you need, Val. <laughs> you got to get back in that Batman suit. They should mm. send the Batman suit to his house and let's put it up as a constant reminder of, of where he should be. How like, big like, is he, he now? Is he that big? Last time I saw him, he looked like two, 245, 250. Like, like he, he, he's a taller guy, I think, and he looked big and chubby. He's, but he's he used to be. Feet. He got big, big at one point. He's, it that, sounds I'm like... talking about that. I'm talking about that image where he's like, mm, like smiling like a goober at the camera, and like, but what else do you do, right? Like he's trying to do the best he can. I don't know. Poor Val. That's all I'm saying. I'm looking up Val Kilmer. <laughs> Val Kilmer fat is what you want to look at. Look up. Poor Val. Val Kilmer. They call- See, in 2010, he was really big. Yeah. Oh man, his face is so wide. How did he get so wide? Oh, he's so oh, poor guy. But he's oh. look at his look at look at the definition in his face when you go back to that Top Gun mode. 
He looked like Steven Seagal. He looks like Steven Seagal now. Fat Steven Seagal. Not now. That's 2017 here. Oh. Oh, is he trimmed down? Let's see what you got. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to say it's 2010. So here's 2014, four years later. Half the man he used to be. You have to scroll God. down and look at his like window reflection and stuff. Like that's... It's it's not where you want to be as oh. a movie star, but it's, you know, dramatically better. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, he's good. He can act now. Okay, yeah, we put a little CGI on him. He needs, little, he needs to work out a little. You know, that's not Batman physique, but it's not Fat Man physique either. So, so <laughs> Oh! <laughs> yeah. Roll that one out. All right, let me do my uh, post roll. You want to wrap? I want to go five minutes. Four, oh. four minutes, actually. That would hit five hours if we went four okay. more minutes. I do have a post roll ad, so... Uh, so, so. So read slowly. <laughs> <laughs> Give them four minutes. Should we find one more? Oh, wait, I have a topic, actually. Check out um, here. the sponsor. <clears throat> now, I'm a little uh, dubious with this uh, source here. I'm not familiar with Heat Street. Maybe, maybe you know all about Heat Street. And um, when they say this Black Lives Matter person, like the leader, Black Lives Matter leader, I don't know that Black Lives Matter has like an officially elected leader, so I'm suspicious on that. Co-founder. Co-founder seems like leader-ish. But um, uh, she says that white people are subhuman and that we have genetic defects. And she almost makes a valid scientific point, or, or maybe <laughs> does. <coughs> He says, whiteness is not humuxness. I don't know what that means. Uh, white skin is subhumixin. All phenotypes exist within the black family, and white people are a genetic defect of blackness. She continues to explain her theory, claiming white people are lesser because, quote, they have a higher concentration of enzyme inhibitors that suppress melanin production, and they are genetically deficient because melanin is present at the inception of life. Melanin enables black skin to capture light, hold it in its memory mode, and reveal that blackness converts light into knowledge. That part seems oh. not so scientific. Melanin no, 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 this, this whole ah, she's so making tons scientific. of sense. Keep going. Keep Melanin going. Yeah, communicates awesome. with cosmic energy. White people are recessive genetic defects. That is factual. Um, it's it's incredible. We've done so much with, <coughs> with so little to work with, isn't it? I it's agree. incredible. It wouldn't it be ever, humiliating if you got totally, uh, if you were just living in a world that you think is totally dominated by people that you see as genetically inferior. <laughs> would that uh, make, do you would ever that wonder how black people you? continue like after Jews? centuries of colonial violence, genocide, and destruction? No matter what systems created to make us extinct, how we keep coming back, it's because we are super humuxins. I don't know this word. I, I, it's not a word. It's uh, it's a made up thing. This is what people really do when they don't have an argument. They change <laughs> the meaning of words so that they can <sighs> fall back on that. This uh, uh -huh. I would I would think that this is an, as an individual is a person who realizes they're kind of fucked in the head, and so they have to project it onto other people. I'm not totally strange and she's weird pretty, for though. thinking. Not at all. I disagree. You don't think she's pretty with the microphone? Not after hearing that personality, Jesus. Oh, well, can't you get past her personality and judge her skin deep? She's pretty. Judge your skin. No. <laughs> no thanks. Well, the way she judges you. <laughs> I, that's just that's hilarious. She wouldn't. She wouldn't fuck a white devil, would he? Don't, don't but, even. But like, thinks? there's no point. No, you know what? I bet. I bet she really likes white dudes, and she resents herself for it. Oh, I bet that's her kink, right? That like like, mm. like that totally is like like like. Yeah. Like a Republican who hates gay people, right? You know, they just turn uh, out they've got that wide stance in the bathroom. Like uh like the uh <laughs> the wide whatever stance. that so fucking I use that all the time. So, so it was some preacher who came, who realized they were he was visiting gay prostitutes. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember the name either, but I do remember the drama. Yeah. Uh oh, that's funny though. Well, you got that read? Yeah, let me tell everyone a little bit about, uh, uh, a little more, that is, about uh, Creature Quest. Uh, from legendary game designer John Van uh, Kanegam, creator of Heroes of Might and Magic series, comes Creature Quest, an adventurous RPG that brings a new level of depth and strategy to mobile games. Available in the App Store, Google Play, and Amazon. Download Creature Quest for free today and be a part of the best turn-based collectible RPG. Your quest for creatures is paved with adventure. Quest on. Check them out, as well as all of our other sponsors down in the script and the uh, link below. Uh, there's links below for Wink, Blue Apron, Movement Watches, uh, Texture, and Squarespace, uh, in addition to Creature Quest. Uh, really appreciate it. If you do that, check out, uh, there's probably going to be a link down there for Hutch's channel and, and where mm -hmm. you find all of his liberal nonsense. I enjoyed having Hutch on the show. Do you yeah, remember Hutch when we great. couldn't have Hutch, yeah, Hutch on without, fun. like, 
it, interruptions and all the I, I have a thing. I things I get interrupt. fiery sometimes. Sure. I, what has helped me avoid interrupting is nonverbal reactions. You say something I like, and instead of being like, yeah, I say, <laughs> you know, <Hey! laughs> yeah, I, good yeah, one. I have or, tons of those. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or, or if you say something I think is totally wrong, rather than be like, no, no, that's not it. I'm just like. You give it you up. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that doesn't seem right. And, uh, and that way I can like register my thoughts uh, with the people, the video version anyway, but let you finish yours. Yeah, you and, should be uh, watching the video version. Uh, check out our Patreon. You get access to that video version of the PKN early. Speaking of that, I think this week's PKN was an excellent PKN. I was thinking about how good PKN this week was yesterday. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it was so good. Um, I thought it was very funny. I had a lot of t uh, fun uh, doing with you guys. So, yeah, check out Patreon be down below. It's Definitely. like a couple dollars a month, and you get access to the, the video version of PKN and all those antics uh, just as they come out. But, yeah, I think that's the show. PK episode 322. Quietly agreeing.